to the Red Bull stuff in the test matches. Do you have any new faces coming in to the starting 11 today? Uh, human Doc will come in from the test side, so looking forward to them getting their first run out in the UAE. Paul? Very best of luck. Appreciate it. Okay, Paul Sterling winning the choss, choosing to have a ball first. Hashmatullah, what would you have done? Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Being honest, uh, we wanted to bid first, so <laughs> it doesn't matter now. <laughs> Obviously disappointed to lose that test match. Are you coming back to a, a format here in the white ball stuff now you're, you're happy with, you're comfortable with? You had a brilliant World Cup uh, in India last year. Uh, yeah, happy with the team. Uh, I know we lost the first test, but uh, it gives us a lot, a lot of lessons as a team. So uh, now it's time for ODIs. We're playing good cricket from a couple of years in ODI. So looking forward for today's game, inshallah, we will try our best. You had four potential debutants in your squad. Have any of them made the starting eleven? Uh, yeah, have we? Uh, yeah, we have one, uh, Allah Muhammad Ghaznafar, who had a um, great Under-19 World Cup mm. recently. So he is part of the eleven, and uh, I wish him best of luck, and I hope that he uh, uh, do well for the team. Looking forward to seeing his mystery spin, Hashmat. All the best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that's the news from down here at the toss. Ireland's captain Paul Sterling. He's won the toss, and he's chosen a ball first.
Uh, no, but no. Mm. Okay. I can hear you. I can hear you. It's a little muffled, but I can hear you. Chats is very clear. I'm just worried about the levels once we get going out. Won't you both speak? Just speak, Ahmed. Hi, can you hear me? Hazy, can you hear me? Hazy, through those lovely ears, ears. Lovely, gorgeous. <laughs> Alan, just speak while Niall's speaking to me. Just count now. One, two, three, four, five, six. Great to be back in Sharjah. Al yeah, Alan. Thank Alan, you. just chat to me while Niall's counting or something, just so I'm checking his levels. One, yeah. two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Craig Young, red hair, okay. very fast. Should be all right. Lovely <laughs> human being. <laughs> And had a great test outing. So do you have an earpiece? No. Yeah, I do. I do now. One, two, one, two. Hope I've got an echo. Echo, 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 echo. And... Um, Chats, the tour schedule graphic has the test as well, right? Thank you.
Melbourne made history at the Tolerance Oval. Their players rose to the occasion with some superb performances to register a famous win. There it is! Historic landmark for Irish cricket and everyone. Fresh from their first test win at Abu Dhabi, they will be on a high. But the shorter format will be an altogether new challenge for the Irish. Afghanistan are a force to be reckoned with in limited overs cricket. Their better record against the Irish and ODIs will give them confidence. The battle lines are drawn. It promises to be a close contest. We are all set to go for the White Ball series. What a series this is going to be. It's one day as to start with, coming to you live from Sharjah Cricket Stadium, Afghanistan versus Ireland. Now, let's just have a look at uh, what has happened and what's to come before we do go any further. Of course, we did it with that uh, only test match, which Ireland won in historic fashion, their first test match win, beating uh, Afghanistan by six wickets in Abu Dhabi. We're in Sharjah now, and we've got three one days. The first one, of course, today, the second on the ninth, and the third and final one on the 12th. And then we go to three T20 games, that first one on the 15th, 17th, and also the 18th, the very next day. So all the six games coming up in the White Ball series are going to be in Sharjah. Hello everybody and thanks for joining us. Plenty of sunshine in Sharjah. We're looking forward to this. It's going to be a wonderful series and I'm sure Afghanistan are hurting a little bit after going down on that test match. Now I've got uh, a gentleman alongside me, Ahmed Fadai, who has uh, joined us in the comm team. Welcome. Thank you, Hazzy. Just tell me a bit about that. What about the response back home in Afghanistan? I guess the team and the public are hurting about losing that uh, test match. Absolutely. Uh, good afternoon. It's a beautiful day out here in Sharjah and hopefully Afghanistan will start with the win. Uh, they're certainly hurting. Uh, Afghanistan have not been able to win any ODI since the start of the 2024. And then on the back of that, losing to Ireland, that should really hurt absolutely. But and, and another thing is that it's even Stevens when you look at both teams, Ireland and Afghanistan. Afghanistan winning 16, Ireland winning 13. So it's kind of going to be a very tough competition. But I think Afghanistan has got uh, things properly tuned up for the one day. It's a different format. So hopefully a better game. We'll get more into that uh, shortly. Um, what about Ireland? Cock the hoop, of course. Celebrate galore and well done on for winning that test match but uh, they'll be buoyant going into this. This is the Hazer they played so well. The fact that they outplayed Afghanistan from start to finish in Abu Dhabi, that was the most pleasing thing for me. You know, watching Ireland go about the business over three days, session in, session out, ball in, ball out. To dominate Afghanistan was massive. They'll take a huge amount of confidence. This is their strongest format. So Ireland should be very, very confident going into this series. They've played some wonderful cricket over the last, I would say, 18 months, 24 months, since missing out on qualification for that World Cup in India. So it's a building box. It's a stepping stone. Paul Sterling in charge. He's taking the team in the right direction. Right, we are all set for this. It's going to be fascinating. Before we go any further, let's have a look at a bit of a preview. There it is! Historic landmark! for Irish cricket and everyone. To win a test match away from home is, is a phenomenal achievement for any team. 110 runs seemed a, a long way away in that innings. You know, 13 for three, there was a, it was a couple of tense moments, but to chase that three down on that wicket was, was an exceptional effort. The added benefit we have of, of playing against Afghanistan is we, we've played them quite a lot. You know, we've seen a a fair bit of their bowlers. Um, we've played here against them as well. I'm sure the batters have prepared exceptionally hard and, and well against what's to come. I believe the wickets have been relayed since the last time we were here, but you know we've had a, a little bit of a trundle and a hit out there today. Um, and I think it's probably what we, we had expected. It looks a little bit less grass on the wicket. The test game, uh, it was disappointing uh, for us as a team. Now it's a history and we can't do anything about that. Only we can learn from it. We played a lot of cricket in Sharjah. They have made new pitches over there and still I can feel that the condition will suit us and uh, our spinners will be uh, good in this kind of condition. We are preparing ourselves and we are trying our best to make ourselves 100% 100, 100 uh, prepare for the ODIs. As a team, I believe that we have a good team in ODI cricket and we will try our best to win the series, inshallah.
Righto, so both these teams are fired up and ready to go. Ahmad, let's go to you because uh, once again, Rashid Khan, that we talked about the spin, of course, now how important that is. Rashid Khan not here, might be here for the T20s, one or two of those, but what a blow and how can they cover that loss? Uh, Rashid Khan's been an impact player, we know that. His economy is under five, which means that he doesn't give away a lot of runs. He takes wicket, he's an attacking bowler, so... And all this has certainly left an impact on the Afghanistan team. We see from the results, Afghanistan not able to win any games. But I hope that Afghanistan will be able to bring into play uh, youngsters and, and, and hopefully alongside Noor, who's now been improving his game. He's been bowling proper line in length. We saw in the Sri Lanka series. So hopefully they, they will find ways uh, how they can tackle the challenge of the lack of Rashid Khan. And it's amazing how opportunities present themselves in that sort of situation. What about Ireland? What's their strength in your mind? Seeing bowling, Hazy, they've got some quality seamers. Same in the test, right? Yeah, Terrific. very similar, Hazy, test match. It's just going to be disciplined. Mark Adair in the power play is an exceptional power play bowler. We saw him with that wonderful wrist position. Swings the ball away, can swing the ball back in. So power play, wickets is a definite opportunity for Ireland. And they've got a long batting lineup. A lot of all-rounders, like Curtis Camper, etc. So a long batting lineup, excellent seam bowling throughout. And obviously Paul Sterling is going to be a key player. Yeah, and he loves playing against Afghanistan. He's yep. one player that's actually dominated Afghanistan for most of his career, averaging over 40 in ODI cricket against Afghanistan. And he loves batting here at Sharjah, Paul Sterling. OK, we'll look forward to that as well. You may be not, but anyway, we'll see what happens. Maybe those spinners, the young boys, get involved. Oh, yeah. We need to find out more about the pitch. Let's go and check out what Tino's got to say. An hour and a half ago, the word I would have used to describe the weather in Sharjah today was rather pleasant. There was a breeze then, there isn't a breeze now, and it's about 25 degrees. It definitely feels a lot warmer than that, and it could be quite an uncomfortable afternoon for the players on the field. Right, today's pitch, which we'll come to in a moment, is number four, and it's right bang in the middle. The boundaries all the way around are 70, so nice and even for the batsmen when they are batting out here this afternoon. The other thing that I'd like to mention is how good and pristine the outfield's looking now. Chargers hosted a lot of matches over the last two or three months and it's a kudos to the ground staff for the work they've done to make sure conditions are as good as they are today. Now the pitches that were used in the ILT20 here in Charger, which ended about a month ago were very green, had grass and they assisted the faster bowlers a lot. Today we're looking at a surface that is the typical Charger surface from yesteryear. Very dry, it's got a sheen on it and a few cracks underneath so that confirms that a lack of moisture in the surface, I don't think we can expect too much for the seamers in the surface but if we take a closer look what I would like you to see is the fact that it's not blades of grass that have been rolled into the surface it's almost like dry roots and I think that might just slow the ball up to the seamers I think it might help as well to the spinners when they are bowling out here this evening we might get some turn a few things to consider here in Sharjah over the years historically it's a place that you want to be batting first and putting runs on the board a lot more teams used to win then but in the last 15 or so fixtures that have played here it's been the reverse teams that have uh, not been batting first are the teams that have been winning here so something for the captains consider do you want to bat first on a surface that looks really good to bat do you want to bat second in a pitch that looks like we're probably in the outfield later going to get some dew we don't have much of wind here today that's what the captains will have to think about Tino conclusive thanks very much quick one to you Ahmed uh, dew factor that be an issue yeah there was dew yesterday OK, right. -o. so the players are going to have to look out for that a little bit later. The ball then skids on a little bit more, and therefore it's going to be harder to bowl, of course, and easy to bat, batting second. right -o. let's go and find out what happened with the toss with Andrew Leonard. Well, after a fantastic test match up the road in Abu Dhabi, it's time for the ODI series here in Sharjah. It's Afghanistan against Ireland again, of course. Hashmatullah Shahidi, joined by Paul Sterling, and David Boone, the ICC match referee. Hashmatullah. Heads. Heads is cold takes a bit of a turn and it is ahead we're gonna have a ball Paul you've won the toss what are you gonna do and explain why to me uh, we're gonna have a ball today um, we're slightly uncertain conditions from the recent relay here so we're gonna get out there and have a ball first and see what happens and hopefully get a, a better idea do you see this as the first steps on the journey to the 2027 50 over World Cup. Ireland hasn't been at one for 12 years. Is this all part of the process to get to that? I think it is, yeah. I think we started in Zimbabwe. We had three ODIs there and then this is just continuing on from that. We had a couple of good results there and I think the challenges just get tougher as, as time goes on. So another tough challenge against Afghanistan again. You've got a similar squad to the Red Bull stuff in the test matches. Do you have any new faces coming in to the starting 11 today? Uh, Hume and Doc will come in from the test side. So looking forward to them getting their first run out in the UAE. Paul? 
Very best of luck. Appreciate it. Okay, Paul Sterling winning the shots, choosing to have a bowl first. Hashmatullah, what would you have done? Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Being honest, uh, we wanted to bet first, so <laughs> it doesn't matter now. <laughs> Obviously disappointed to lose that test match. Are you coming back to a, a format here in the white ball stuff now you're, you're happy with, you're comfortable with? You had a brilliant World Cup uh, in India last year. Uh, yeah, happy with the team. Uh, I know we lost the first test, but uh, it gives us a, a, a lot of lessons as a team. So uh, now it's time for ODIs. We're playing good cricket from a couple of years in ODI. So looking forward for today's game, inshallah, we will try our best. You had four potential debutants in your squad. Have any of them made the starting eleven? Uh, yeah, have we, uh, yeah, we have one, uh, Allah Mohammed Ghaznafar, who had a um, great under-19 World Cup mm. recently. So he is part of the eleven, and uh, I wish him best of luck, and I hope that he uh, uh, do well for the team. Looking forward to seeing his mystery spin, Hashmat. All the best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that's the news from down here at the toss. Ireland's captain Paul Sterling. He's won the toss, and he's chosen a ball first. Andrew, thanks very much. Nice to hear from the skippers. Afghanistan, Ahmed, where you go? Well, not a bad side. Uh, uh, I, I like the inclusion of uh, Allah Muhammad Ghazanfar, who's uh, uh, filling in for Mujib Zadran. We know he's been out because of the injury. Rashid Khan still missing. Noor Ahmed, hopefully, he'll fill in for it. Quite a decent uh, uh, batting lineup. Especially, I like for them batting first because Rahmanullah Gurbaz and Ibrahim Zadran, every time they bat first, they put together a strong, solid partnership. There's offer in 16 years of age. That's exciting. What about Ireland, uh, Niall? Yeah, very much tried and tested. Paul Sterling and Bal Burnley, two very close friends, top of the order. That middle order is so powerful. Camphor, Tector, Lorca Tucker playing his 50th ODI today. Then you've got some real all-rounders, George Dockerell and Mark Adair. Theo Van Workham, the left-arm finger spinner, gets an opportunity here. He'll enjoy conditions. That's a very strong side. Well balanced, Hazy. Right, eh? So there you go. There's the uh, the lineups have been picked. Just a reminder again, it's three one-day internationals. Then we got uh, three T20s after that. Just behind us, you can see the uh, players uh, organised for the national anthems, and we're about to go and join them. Right, eh? Let's go to the national anthems.
Hello and welcome to the Sharjah Stadium, where we're getting ready for the first of three One Day Internationals. Here are the teams. Afghanistan, three players coming in from their previous One Day International, Gorbadeen uh, Naib, Noor Ahmed and Ala Mohamed Ghazanfar, 16-year-old mystery spinner who's making his One Day International debut. Ireland, they're unchanged from their last One Day International. That was against Zimbabwe in mid-December. Out from the side that won the Test match last week, DJ Moore and Barry McCarthy, and in come Graham Hume and also George Dockle. After the Afghanistan players arrived at the ground, the players and officials, ahead of today's match. We'll be hoping their prayers are answered today with a win. Toss then going to Ireland. They've opted to bowl first. There's a little bit of uncertainty in their minds, at least, about the surface. It was relayed in the middle of last year. Tina Mawoyo alongside me. Tino, you've been out to the middle and had a look at the pitch. What are your impressions? Hello, Brian, and welcome to everybody who's joining us on this live telecast. Yeah, definitely, when you take a look at it from here, you can tell not a blade of grass. And when you get there, it's got that sheen on the surface, and I said that at the pitch report. So it gives you the impression that the ball will definitely come onto the bat. However, there is some dry grass and roots that's rolled into it. And I think uh, that might just slow the ball up a little bit, take pace out of it. Ramanello Gerbas, who made his test debut in Abu Dhabi, such an exciting young player. Actually made his one-day international debut against Ireland in Abu Dhabi three years ago. And at the other end from him, another real talent with the bat, Ibrahim Zadran, he was so impressive in that test match. These two at the top of the order really have the potential to be dynamite. Talking of dynamite, Mark Adair, player of the match in the test match, eight wickets for him, so he'll be absolutely chock full of confidence. Change of format, hopefully from his perspective, not a change of fortune. Two slips in position. Paul Rifle, the umpire at the bowler's end. Gives us the signal. Play, he says. Here we go in this one-day international series. Or perhaps we don't. Gurbaz just pulling away. There is Paul Rifle, his 89th one-day international. An ICC Cricket World Cup winner with Australia as a player back in 1999. And at square leg, Ahmed Shah Durrani. Leg by to get us underway. So Ibrahim Zadran now getting ready to face his first delivery. Two batters that are in good form for Afghanistan. Ahmed Shah Bakhtin, the television umpire for today. David Boone, the match referee. 
also looked over the test match in Abu Dhabi last week. Just getting his line wrong early on here, Mark Adair. What a performance from him, though, in Abu Dhabi in the test match. Five for 39 in the first innings, followed up with three wickets in the second. One of the key aspects to his performance in that test match was his ability to swing the ball and keep it swinging. Now, the other thing was his disciplines. The consistency that he had throughout the test match, both with the new and an old ball. And I think that's something that was outstanding about that surface. Even if the ball was older, if he carried on getting it in good areas, then there was an opportunity for wickets and opportunity for chances to be created. It's a lovely shot up on his toes off the back foot from Ibrahim Zadran. He's off the mark in confident fashion. Andy McBride, the fielder, in the covers. Half century from Zadran in the first innings of the test match. And we saw a lot of similar strokes. Not very flamboyant, very technically correct plays textbook style strokes extra man to fortify that cover ring now from the slip cordon there is that extra man Andrew Balburnie Mark Adair incidentally one of 11 Ireland men's bowlers two top 51 day international wickets leading wicket taker for Ireland in this form of the game Kevin O'Brien one of only two bowlers, O'Brien, to top 100 wickets in ODIs for Ireland. The other on the ground today, George Dockrell. Well, there's a shout for LBW. I think it was probably just outside the off stump, the point of contact. And it doesn't look as though they're going to review it. It's the end of the over, the first of this one-day international series, Afghanistan, four without loss. Afghanistan, just four players in this side today who were part of the test team. That's Gurbaz, Zadran, Ramat Shah and Hashmatullah Shahidi. And Graham Hume's going to open the bowling from the pavilion end. Should make the point as well. After that LBW appeal in the last uh, over, there are no reviews. There's no DRS in this one day international series. Graham Hume, we've started to see him a lot more often in Ireland colors, white ball cricket. Steady grew up playing his cricket in South Africa and represented South Africa at under 19 youth level in the World Cup. Yes, that was back in 2010 in New Zealand. Graham Hume was actually South Africa's leading wicket taker in that tournament 13 wickets. Made his senior island debut in a one-day international against New Zealand in Malahide in July of 2022. Oh, no. 
put his best bowling, actually, Graham Hume, a match uh, I think you were at, Tino, back in December, 4 for 34 in Harare. He was tidy all throughout the series, actually. Didn't see a lot of them in the T20s. But he found the right lengths to bowl at Harare Sports Club. And he got just reward for it. Gubaz off the mark. Gathering that throw, Lorcan Tucker making his 50th One Day International appearance today. You can see on his cap there, he's been presented with a, a nice new Ireland cap. The 16th Ireland player to achieve that mark, 51 Day International caps. Well, Tino, you can see straight away Ireland have made up their mind about this surface. They started off with two slips. The second slip's come out very quickly, hasn't it? I was just about to come to that point, Brian Murgatroyd. And they did it in the first over as well. Four balls in, the slip's gone out. But I like the position that they've put that slip fielder into in the cover ring at a catching position. You can see Andy Balburnie's there. Because, especially to Graham Hume, not much pace coming onto the bat. So you could very easily just pop one in the air. There is Andy Balburney, and that's the end of the over. Two gone, Afghanistan, five without loss. It's a wonderful venue, isn't it? Sharjah Cricket Stadium. Got a wonderful history to go with it as well. Gazanfa, 16 year old debutante today. Afghanistan's youngest ever one day international player. Incredible, though, isn't it, Tino? The churn, the turnover from red ball to white ball for Afghanistan. Ten players have come into their squad and ten players departed from the different formats. Well, that tells you one thing, especially for one of the latest entrants into Test Match Cricket. They've got a big pool to pick from. And that's kudos to the ACB itself for being able to get themselves in a position where they can do that. How many international teams around the world at the moment, Murgatroyd, including the top brass, have the luxury to change 10 players from one format to the other? Squirted away backward a point. That'll be the first boundary. Full in length. And Ibrahim Zadran just opening the face of the bat and finding the gap between backward point and cover. Yeah, a bit more pace on the ball from Mark Adair. It makes the shot a lot easier. You can see he's really waited for the ball, almost hit it behind him and opened the face to get it just square of that cover fielder. Remember, there's an extra one in there. Successive boundaries. Adair correcting his line, going straighter. And Zadran whipping that one aerially through the onside, but he found the gap. Yeah, he found the gap and he did it with confidence as well. You could see there was no concern for him, the fact that he's hit the ball in the air. well over the fielder at mid-wicket had it been at him nonetheless so the other slip goes out deep back with square leg now in place 45 in the circle the call is two 
We're not going to get two though. Yeah, he received his test match debut in that test match last week and looked all at sea in the first innings but very different in the second fell short just short of a half century end of the over afghanistan put into bat 15 without loss Here's the island squad for this series. Neil Rock, the reserve wicketkeeper. And also Gareth Delaney coming into the lineup from the side that was victorious in the test in Abu Dhabi. Close to a wide, but not given. <laughs> no, Ali Zadran retiring from cricket. He played in the test match last week. It was his second test match. 23-2020 internationals, 51 one-day internationals. And he walks away from the game now. What a servant for Afghanistan cricket. One of the true pioneers for cricket in Afghanistan. He was part of the squad that played in ICC World Cricket League Division 5 against the likes of Germany and Japan back in uh, 2008. And, do you know, Ireland's first ever game against Afghanistan, he faced the very first delivery. That was in the World Cup qualifier in South Africa in 2009. And on top of that, he's got one international hundred, and it was on this ground. It was against Canada in 2010. Mergers, you keep rolling it off your tongue. You could probably tell me what colour socks he was wearing in that first game as well. Grey Marl. <laughs> Most of them are. Yeah, wonderful servant of the game for sure. I think extra special that you talk about where he came from, 2008 and Cricket League 5, to be able to go through all those years and go and play the pinnacle of the game, test match cricket as well for your country. Well, Gobaz, he likes to play his shots. He's been tied down a little bit, hasn't found his timing as yet, and that was an indication of the frustration he's feeling. This ball also kept a little low too. Yeah, it did. It was your normal seam-up delivery, going through to Lork and Tucker on the second bounce. Four gone, Afghanistan 16 without loss. Yeah, sir, it's a man, I know it's a 
Here's the Afghanistan lineup for this first One Day International. From an Afghanistan perspective, they really need to find some confidence again in this format because after a really fantastic Cricket World Cup where they were just one win away from uh, having a shot at uh, getting into the top four, since then, things haven't been quite as good. They were whitewashed in Sri Lanka last month. Last ball of the last over, that's one that's kept a little bit low. And I think what's happened is Ibrahim Zadron has just said to his partner, take it easy on there, and a bit of a word between Hume and Gurbaz as well. Right. Field's changed. Fine leg goes back to his conventional position on the boundary. Deep mid-wicket. George Dockerell into the circle and slip back in Paul Sterling. Well, I mentioned that uh, Afghanistan have been struggling in this format of late. Ireland, by contrast, an excellent series win in Zimbabwe in December, so they're chock full of confidence. And as was mentioned at the toss, for these two sides, it's all about building towards 2027. There's Nur Ali Zadran. That's well bowled. Nice. I like that. More so because after the change of field, he's bowled the line outside the off stump. The ball before he thought about playing and let go. This one he's played at and it's just snipped away. If he does get that outside edge, he does have the catcher in place at slip. Good disciplines, good plans by the Irish. Again, past that outside off stump. Just concerned at where Paul Sterling's standing. He's not at your regular first lip position he's quite uh, wide almost at two and a half slips there's Nurali wonderful career it's in the rear view mirror now again really good bowling this from Adair He'll know he's up against one of the most uh, prolific opening pairs in One Day Internationals over the last couple of years. Ibrahim Zadran and Ramanullah Gurbas. Four stands of 100 or more since 2022. Only one pairing has been better than that. And that's uh, Rohit Sharma and Shubman Gill with 500 stands. End of the over, that's a maiden from Mark Adair. Afghanistan 16 without loss. The Ireland lineup for today. George Dockrell and Graham Hume in. They're the two changes from the test side. Players missing out. PJ Moore. And also Barry McCarthy. Hot work out there. Any breeze that we did have a little earlier has died away completely now. Yeah, earlier on, temperatures didn't seem so warm because there was a bit of a breeze. That's gone. It would be tough work out there for them. And you were talking about this partnership and how good they've been over a period. 
We'll go a step further and talk about Gurbaz in this format since a couple of years ago. He's had 18 innings. Batting first, 17 innings, batting second. 830 runs, batting first, 285, batting second. 46.1 average, batting first, 17.8, batting second. 300s and 350s. Setting totals, one and one, chasing them. So a stark difference for Ramanola Gurbaz and the way he goes about his innings and his successes in one day international cricket and the one thing that would stick out for me is the fact that he's got a lot more freedom no scoreboard pressure when he's batting first so plays a lot more free doesn't feel he has to keep up to a certain rate but wow huge difference in those numbers That's Gurbaz at his best. Slashing that ball away, backward a point. It's his first boundary, and he's got himself moving. I think he's realised that Graham Hume's not quite coming onto the bat as quickly as he would expect. You can see how backward the point is, but he's had to wait and wait to get it even finer. That's well played. Outfield's quick. Good cricket, you get the boundary, then you get off strike. Of course, Ramanala Gurbas will have very happy memories of playing against Ireland. Made his one day international debut against them in January 2021 at the Zayed Cricket Stadium in Abu Dhabi. And what a day that was for him 127 at a runner ball, eight fours, and nine sixes. Goodness me, it was brutal batting. Barry McCarthy, in particular. He really took to him first up. Craig Young too. Skews off the outside edge. It's the first time we really see him try and play a full-blooded drive through the offside. And the other strokes he's played up until now have just been your check drive. That, I'm sure, will be as a result of that extra cover field the way he's realised he can't just punch the ball as easily through the gap. He's got to try and be a little bit more forceful. Here is that short fielder, Andrew Balburnie. The end of another over, six gone. Afghanistan put into bat, 22 without loss. First of three one-day internationals, this one, with three 2020 internationals to follow, all in the space of 11 days here at the Sharjah Cricket Stadium. That's bad luck, that really is. It was a beautiful straight drive, too straight from Ibrahim Zadran. Well, the coach would have been very happy when the ball came off the bat, but I won't be happy with the result. You don't have to hit it that straight. This is beautiful. Slightly overpitched. You can see the reaction.
gone back to the field with a deep back with square leg and the fine leg in the circle. Taking away the slip as well. Six. What a shot that was by Ibrahim Zadran. A little bit of width from Mark Adair. And Zadran deliberately hitting the ball up and clearing the boundary by quite some distance. That was almost into the road. Now, there hasn't been too many deliveries that have had width on them this afternoon from the Island Bowlers. As soon as Zadran's seen a little bit of that, he's jumped onto it. Purposefully playing the ball up and over clears the boundary comfortably first six of the innings for Afghanistan not quite sure what the issue is uh, no problem with Zadran not seeing the ball very well on the evidence of the last ball The uh, black covering over the side screen just rippling a little bit. But also just uh, riding away, revealing a little bit of white underneath. That's being tied down now. It's making a lovely sound off uh, Ibrahim Zadran's bat, this ball. Yeah, definitely ball going onto the bat a little bit quicker when it's pitched up on the surface. Leg by. Good running. Ibrahim Zadran played all nine matches for Afghanistan in the recent ICC Cricket World Cup in India. He's the team's top scorer, 376 runs at 47, with 100 and a 50. That's the end of the over, seven gone. Afghanistan put into bat, 29 without loss. And a very solid start for Afghanistan, having been asked to have a bat first. Maybe a bit of a surprise decision at the toss. Paul Sterling didn't seem to know what to do as he's going to make his first bowling change. Ireland's white ball captain now, having taken the reins permanently from Andrew Balburnie, who we saw still captaining in the test match format for Ireland. Craig Young introduced, who was outstanding on Test Match debut alongside Mark Adair and Barry McCarthy. Ireland seamers, really the heroes at the Tolerance Oval. But for Afghanistan, a very pleasing start. Having been inserted, let's have a bat first. Got to vendor joining me. Firstly, very good afternoon to you. Great to uh, switch formats and great to be at this historic venue. Very special, Charger. 
Good afternoon, Andrew. Good afternoon to everyone tuning into this broadcast. It's a lovely day here at Sharjah. Thrilling cricket, that's what they expect when uh, Afghanistan play against uh, Ireland, particularly at this venue. So far, discipline from bowlers and batters as well. Yeah, one of the things you might naturally expect with the Gerbaz at the top is ball striking quality, is fireworks right from the off. Seen a little bit of a drift away from that in recent times, though, with the two white balls in operation in the 50 over game. A lot of openers now are evolving their game in the 50 over format compared to what we'll see in a T20 power play. In fact, the six overs of a T20i power play are very contrasting to the 10 overs of an ODI power play. Inside edge and fortune, good glove work too from Lorcan and Tucker. So we may not see those fireworks yet, but there's every chance that Gerbaz and particularly Ibrahim Zadram may still go on for big scores. Almost chopping that one onto the stumps, just coming back off the seam. On that occasion from Gurbaz. Also not bouncing to the expectation of the batsman as well. It hasn't been that bouncy surface. Low bounce. Coming back to that question of adoptability or trying to play differently, Gurbaz. Also, the pressure of expectation after delivering excellent performance in the World Cup. It's about living up to the expectation in order to attain consistency in his batting. A lot more expectation from the people back home, from the team as well. The kind of talent that he possesses as a batsman. You think of the real stars of, of Afghan cricket over their last 15 years. It's been such a, a story journey. You tend to think of spinners and all-rounders, the likes of Nabi, and even those that have done a bit, you get to the end of the eighth over, 30 for none. You think about guys who not necessarily out-and-out -out batters, guys who will contribute with the bat. The two men opening the batting here maybe have a real chance to change that, don't they? Still, they will be thinking about having more all-rounders in the side. Given the dimension and requirement, plus the kind of surfaces that they get these days. Two new balls as well. So the one-day cricket had changed in the last decade or so. It was quite different in the 90s at this particular venue as well. Getting to 240 it used to be a big task. But things have changed. The role of all-rounders has become more vital these days and Afghanistan will continue with more all-rounders in the side. I think the really exciting thing for me though for Afghanistan is I suspect they've unearthed a few superstars here in these two opening the batting. Gonna see spin for the first time. Theo Van Werken, we did pick up one wicket in the test match but it was generally played quite easily by the Afghan batters he's got C. McBrien as the other primary spin option don't rule out Harry Tech your bowling today Devender bowled a lot at the BPL and we saw him bowl extensively during the warm-ups too the approach from the Afghan batters will be very crucial here will they be thinking about attacking the spinners because they think that they need a score given the fact that there is possibility of a bit of dew in the evening so we'll have to think about how they go about against the spinner. Quite comfortable playing the spin bowling Afghan batters. They've taken the time, both batsmen in. Gurbaz in particular would like to attack the spinners. The last delivery looks a better pace to me than we saw Van Werkham bowl at in Abu Dhabi in the test match. He was very, very slow through the air, wasn't he? He's got some revs on that too. No immediate purchase of, of significant note, but that looks a much better pace and one that will challenge the two right-handers. Slip in place, Sterling on the attack. He wants the first wicket. Definitely better revs. More action on the ball from Van Werkham. Looks a different bowler, doesn't he? A few days on. He's bowling beautiful length at the moment, attacking the stumps as well. 
trying to get something to work with with his uh, ball revolution. Down the track, not quite connecting it. Fieldsman settling underneath, and the catch has gone down. Reprieve for the batsman, and it's going to touch the boundary ropes for four. Well, of all people, you wouldn't believe it, Curtis Camphor. I don't remember him dropping many catches. He's put this down, gets us to the end of the ninth, 35 for none. Well, a massive moment in the match. I'm not sure Ireland can believe what's happened. Theo van Werkum, a byproduct of five very good deliveries, forced an error from Ramanullah Gerbaz, who played a very expansive stroke. Got nowhere near the pitch, just a little bit of purchase off the surface. We'll take a look in a moment. Curtis Camphor, who's usually just such a good fielder and brilliant across all three disciplines, has not just grasped it, but somehow dropped it for four. Really nicely bowled. He's out thought Gerbaz there, deserves the wicket. And Andy McBride might have just gotten his eyes a little bit, got into a strange position. The catch goes down. Dangerous batsman. Gerbaz with the repetition to change the course of the action. Works through the onside, more runs here. He's gone with the Australian style, the reverse hands, and almost as though he lost his footing just as he was about to take it. I think anyone who knows Irish cricket will have looked at that as soon as it went up, seen Camphor underneath it, and said, there's the first breakthrough. I reckon you could hit that to him a hundred times, you'll take it probably 99 I think this has come off the pad not the bat that's the initial indication Tucker's glove work a little tardy down the leg side though Gerbaz living a touch dangerously he's taken 25 deliveries for his 11 looking to attack the Shanks Young that's off the thigh pad down the leg side just drifting in his line 11 of 25. 5-4 five, field. 5 on the offside. There have been a few Irish fans wondering what the response will be from Ireland to the success, maybe the unexpected success of the Tets match in terms of Five days between because the test match only lasted three. But after all the emotions, the exultation, we heard Paul Sterling at the pre series press conference yesterday said, Yes, we did celebrate and we deserve to celebrate. They've actually been pretty good for the first 10 overs. They should have had the first wicket there. Can scarcely believe that catch went down, Devender. There too, on a historic occasion, 200 ODI for Ireland. The lines and length, lengths have been phenomenal from Irish bowlers attacking distance, given the fact that there isn't much of bounce on this particular surface, attacking distance, and they've been able to hit the right lengths as well. A very good start from Craig Young. That rounds out the first power play. Afghanistan, 37 without loss. So going back to that discussion about the two new balls and the evolution of the white ball game, 37 for none, having lost the toss of position, Afghanistan would be happy with. They will be more than happy where they are currently at the moment, given the nature of the surface. But with the spinners in operation, I think they will be thinking about, about playing attacking cricket.
So, Paul Rifle, one of our two standing umpires today, will indicate the end of the first power play. Here's the best of the first 10 overs. A couple of very stylish strokes, particularly from Ibrahim Zidran, who's just going from strength to strength across all three formats, isn't he? I think Afghanistan. Maybe Gerbaz is the one who's hit the headlines of late. He's the one who had the life, but he brings a dran so impressive. Just the drop, the moment of fortune, but the four runs that added to it. Really good start from Van Werkham, though. Still very early days for Theo Van Werkham in the international game. Has a pedigree from first-class cricket in New Zealand. There's always going to be a step up, a jump. And also, he's really learning about Irish cricket, learning about his teammates, learning about the support staff. Certainly Heinrich Milan, the Irish head coach, has shown a lot of faith in him. He wants a left-arm spinner, a full-time left-arm spinner to be able to call upon. Not George Dockrell's part-time stuff now. And that's why he's in the team ahead of Dockrell for his bowling. Dockrell's with him, but Dockrell's there for his batting. Also possibility of playing a lot more test match cricket as well different formats test match cricket so the focus would be on on getting specialist in the side very well bowled by Walker once again into his second over he's been quite good another option George Dockrell was successful in the last time they played here at Sharjah taking plenty of wickets came to the fore after trapping Sachin Tendulkar out LBW in the ICC ODI World Cup 2011. Yeah, all the way back in 2011. There's a great photo of that pleading with the umpire as the umpire's finger is going up. And that was commemorated just last year, the Sachin Tendulkar stand. Impressed with the way Van Werkham has started here. I think he received a little bit of criticism, primarily for the pace at which he bowled up in Abu Dhabi. He did get the one wicket, which was a big wicket. It broke a, an eighth wicket partnership that was just threatening to extend Afghanistan's lead. Really started nicely here. There's a lovely curve coming out of the hand. Always a good sign for a spinner. Things are going right. 39 for none. Special ground, isn't it? Now the 248th ODI, the third ODI will see number 250. First ground ever to do it to Vendor. I've seen cricket from 90s, late 90s and 2000. Sachin Tendulkar smashing the Australian bowlers at this particular venue. Shane Wan, legendary Shane Wan, Sachin Tendulkar. That brought about the change when it comes to popularity of the sport as well. I really do love this venue. You can almost feel the history seeping out of the walls. You're not too happy right now. It'll become the first and only venue to host 250 ODIs at the end of this series, the third game of the series. And I'm sure there'll be somebody handy with a new sign to get that Guinness World Record updated. Nice tussle over the years, uh, India versus Pakistan, Wakar Yunus, Vasim Akram bowling to Tendulkar. Chetan Sharma going for his six of the last ball. Plenty of superstars from various parts of the world participating in ODI cricket and popularizing the game. Historic venue, iconic venue. They used to play with just one white ball, not two balls, which changed the way you perceive the one-day cricket. And also, the contest, the level of uh, betting and bowling efficacies as well. Yes, the call. And Adair, the fielder won't be able to prevent the single. Yeah, great credit to the ACB, too, in terms of the way they always have to host their cricket obviously outside of Afghanistan but they, they do it here it's very much their spiritual second home isn't it the UAE and this venue in particular we're expecting really good crowds for the T20s that will follow this to return the rumored return that is of a certain man Rashid Khan 
love to see the passion from the Afghan fans always. We love you, Afghanistan team, and we miss you. That man I was just talking about, Rashid Khan. We saw a landmark a few days ago for Afghanistan with their 300th international across all formats. Ireland today, their 200th ODI. And these rivals, they certainly know each other very well. We'll see more crowd as the day progresses. A lot of Afghans live in this region. Sweetly timed. They will take a run. The fumble will prompt them to take a single. I think a pretty good hand from Andy Valberni there. For me, that's probably maybe three runs saved as opposed to one given away. I'm not sure there was a more elated man anywhere in the United Arab Emirates on Friday. He was out there for the winning runs. He didn't get to hit them. I don't think he minded that. His mum and his dad were there. And the outpouring of joy, really, from the Irish community at winning that first ever test match. Very evident to see, it really was. Something that I think Balberni did really well in the moment was, was explain that it's not just about the 11 that were there on the pitch for Ireland, but those who came before them. Gave plenty of messages to the likes of Ed Joyce and John Mooney, Trent Johnston, the former captain, William Porterfield, all of those who played a huge role. And even looking back to the team in the 80s and 90s before Ireland really played any kind of regular international cricket, they used to play kind of guest fixtures against touring teams and the like. It's just guided away very fine and he's going to get four. He's played for this. Good skills from Ibrahim, a boundary to round out the 12th. 46 for none. That journey for Irish cricket, it's really shadowed Afghanistan's one, isn't it? There's a much longer standing history in terms of length of time for Irish cricket. It dates back several centuries, but the recent progress they've made and that historic test match victory in Abu Dhabi it'll never be forgotten it'll be in the books for eternity so in the test match Afghanistan winning the choice and batting first uh, in conditions where Seamus had a lot to, lot to practice with and they bowled exceedingly well. Adair in particular taking five for 39, utilizing the seam movement and swing in the air as well. And that's where they set the first step forward about winning the test match. Goes for the big shot. Great connection, a flat six from Gurbaz and it's 50 up for Afghanistan as well. Well, right now, Curtis Camfer is wondering where to look. And put down the simplest of chances off this man, we all know challenging, how challenging and how threatening he can be with the bat in hand. A power sweep for six. Great levers and a little surge for Afghanistan. Four from the last ball of the previous over. And now the first ball, Van Werkham's third. Well, he's hit it that well, it flies all the way. Look at how flat this goes, Devender. Smash for six. As a consequence, the length has to be dragged back. How costly could that drop be? A match when Gurbaz has been for Afghanistan, opening the batting, setting the tone in the innings, also taking apart the opposition bowling attack as well. They've featured in many partnerships, just waiting for that ball to come at the last moment, an educated age. Spent a lot of time, plays the ball late, made a fine connection to get it fine to third man for a four. Yeah, that was the last ball of the previous over off Craig Young. There's no way that was an edge. That was intentionally played for expertly guided. That's been the 50 partnership thus far. Ibrahim, probably the more comfortable of the two. They want the quick single. Harry Tector comes in quickly but can't prevent it. Two very special right-handers, these two. They're great to watch the way they go about their business, and they've got a good understanding of each other as well yeah. they've been playing together from under 16 days 
come from the same province as well, coast in Afghanistan. Different nature though. Gurbaz is an attacking batsman. Ibrahim is methodical when it comes to his approach towards playing the game. Plays it defensively, a boundary, a six coming from this over. 13 gone, 54 without loss. They love batting together, don't they? Particularly in this format. Seventh time now. These two put on 50 or more for the opening wicket. And ominously for Ireland of the previous six occasions, four of those have doubled up to 100 or more. When they get in, they tend to go very, very well. I like the way they complement each other. Just a few keeping a touch slow that will maybe encourage Ireland. A lot of talk about the surfaces always in, in charge, and obviously we have had so many of them relayed here, but always the ground staff, the creation team here do an outstanding job. Yeah, maintaining pitches uh, in atmos atmospheric conditions where moisture content hard to keep for a longer period of time. They've been doing a fantastic job. Over to the onside. Also, two 200 plus partnerships in one day cricket in uh, recent years. 256 versus Bangladesh and 228 against Pakistan at Hamman Tota. Yeah, a remarkable job done by Mohammed Jamil, the head curator and all his team. He's been here since 1981, the head curator, so nobody knows these surfaces better. One more look at this, this drop chance. Where, where did this go wrong, Devender? Camfrey, you'd have expected to take this. Look, Gerbaz thought he was gone. Took it easy, eventually, just losing the sight of the ball at the last moment. Then he was about to grasp the ball. Kemper. And you could see the reaction. You could expect that reaction from the bowler as well. Attacking this time, continuing to bowl well. The, the Pacers have been able to hit the right areas. And they've been able to keep the Afghan batters calm so far. We've all been there in the field when you've dropped a catch and you're just praying, hoping against hope that someone gets that batter out that you've dropped quickly. And then you come into the huddle, you apologize to your teammates and you thank the person who got the wicket or who took the catch. But for now, Gurbaz has that life and he'll be determined to make use of it. Marginal call, not given as a wide this time. Just losing his, his patience at the moment, Ibrahim. A couple of false strokes in this over. Is this going to be midden? Three men on the boundary, men at the point on the boundary, third man on the boundary, fine leg and four rather, one at the square leg as well. Good delivery coming back into the right hand batsman, a midden. 14 gone, 54 without loss, Afghanistan. Let's look at the uh, bowling numbers at the moment. Young has done a very fine job. Four overs, none for ten. Afghanistan will be quite happy with this scenario. Going at a shade under four to the over. And they should have lost that wicket. The boys have uh, talked enough about that. Should have been swallowed. End of story. Unfortunately uh, for Ireland, it wasn't. 
54 for none, 14 overs, Guy, and you don't want to give Gavaz an extra opportunity, that's for sure. He can be so aggressive, picks up anything very short in particular off the spinners, and he's nailed that beautifully for six runs. That's a great way to start the over. Terrific stuff. Fadai, welcome. Well, I am getting the greetings both from you at the Combox and from Rahmanullah Gurbaz, who smashed one another six. That sat nicely for Rahmanullah Gurbaz. Too short on the back foot in quick time and smashing this down for another maximum. I mean, it's a good example of his skill level because it wasn't all that short. It was just a marginally short and he just smacked it for six. And well, that one's flighted. That's a half volley. Hard into the ground. He'll be eyeing up going straight, I'm sure. There's not too much uh, turn at the moment from Van Furkham. The long off is very wide. Oh, I just slid in that time. Yeah, that's the second Rahmanullah Gurbaz. In both the occasions, he's charged against the spinner who created that opportunity. He was dropped at seven, you mentioned. How often it is that you get a life and then you can cash it out and spend time out in the middle and go big. Important is that these two out in the middle have converted their 50-run partnership four times out of six to 100 and more. This time around, also looking really good. Afghanistan need a strong partnership. Yeah, they're fine players, and they've done this so often. That's the nice thing about uh, this start for Afghanistan. It's not a flash in the pan by any means. Average opening together has been 45 before this game, and there are 62 at the moment. They're both flowing beautifully. They're just uh, both perfectly in rhythm with this game right now track which is offering very little to the bowling that's all the spinners can look to do is look to vary things a little bit from delivery wide of the crease that time from Van Verkom just the single 63 for none Astonishing. This is the 248th one international at this venue. The most by far. On the planet. When it comes to cricket, it's an uh, extraordinary number of games. They played so much cricket here back in the early days. Still going. As the boys before us were talking about, uh, Andrew was talking about the tracks have been relayed. And there was certainly some grass during the recent T20 tournament that was played here, but not today. It's going to be hard work for the Seamers. There's a little surprise that Ireland won the toss. And elected to bowl first. Strong shot, no run. Well, I think they look at the stats and thinking that maybe they'll be due factor. We talked about it earlier. And they might just come into play and help the batters play with ease. And you also, if you look at the stats, uh, the team batting second have won six matches out of four out of ten matches so it just kind of gives you the motivation and then if you talk about ireland how often do you see them winning the toss and they always want to prefer bowling first i think i mean paul sterling in the toss and i hear what you're saying and, and the stats do say that batting second is the is the way to go but paul sterling not once of the toss mentions you factor he didn't discuss that at all. So had he done that, I, I agree with you. I don't think and that's beautifully played. It's a lovely shot all on the cup of the four. It's a nice shot of drive. I mean, the good thing for Afghanistan is that Rahmanullah Gurbaz is finding his rhythm. He was struggling. He was dropped at seven. He was not able to middle it nicely. But how well he is cashed out that on. Look at this. It was full and beautifully driven. It's always very important that you play it away from the fielders and score quick boundaries. 
That's nice to see. They've stepped up this right two nicely. Gabaz is calling for two. Going to come back for the second. This might be tight if it's a good throw. Big dive. Good desperate dive for Gabaz. I like seeing batsmen do that when they know it's tight. Sometimes you don't, and they're out by uh, a matter of centimetres, but uh, Gabaz is taking no chances. Well, I like the intent. I like the energy. Afghanistan have certainly started slow, and that should be on the back of a defeat in the test match against Ireland. But it's important that they didn't lose wicket, and this quick run between the wicket will tell you that now they are getting into the rhythm, they are getting into the momentum. When we started, you and I, that run rate was uh, at 3.85. Now it's suddenly gone up to 4.4. .4. So they've stepped on the gas pretty well the last literally two overs. 69 for none. Interesting position. It's an interesting change as well because before him, Young was bowling pretty nicely. You would think that you might just want to give him another over. Quick single, good running, out of the blocks very quickly. Trusting each other, 70 for none. Temperature today in uh, Sharjah is mid-20s. Plenty of sunshine. It's uh, forecast a bit of rain in a few days' time. Let's hope that doesn't uh, interfere with anything. They could do with a bit of rain around the place, providing it doesn't interfere with anything that's uh, scheduled, of course. Quite pleasant too, bottom uh, left, humidity 51%, just a little bit of a breeze. No rain expected today, mid-20s, just ideal. We talk about 247 ODIs played at this iconic venue. And this is the 248. If you look at the stats all the way from 1997, He'll tell you batting first have won 130 matches compared to batting second 115. So do you see Afghanistan having a chance and losing the toss be a blessing in disguise? Sometimes you're confused as to what you want to do. Captain Hashmatullah Shahidi was very clear. He said, if we had won the toss, we will have certainly batted first. But how it will come into play? I think the first game of a three-game series, if you bat well, if you've got a, a good batting lineup and you bat really well, suddenly it's going to put pressure on the opposition. Obviously, you're going to have one or two inexperienced spinners involved. The fact that Rashid Khan is not involved in this one-day international, nor the next two, that's going to be a little bit of a, a test. But if you bat well, as these guys are doing at the moment, you can get yourself a, a nice big score. They're on path that at this stage. It's been really good work. Yeah, absolutely, and this is not a bad... Banning lineup for Afghanistan, Gurbaz and Ibrahim Zadran, and then to follow Rahmat Shah, Hashmatullah Shahidi, Asmatullah Omar Zai has been playing really well at number five. No more Najibullah Zadran in place. They have brought in Gulbadi Naib. So, quite a strong batting lineup for Afghanistan. They need to keep wickets and can target the last overs. McBride doesn't give the ball much uh, air. Since the start of uh, 2022, Ireland have batted first after winning the toss only once. And they've chosen to chase on 15 occasions. There's the lovely trophy, by the way. That's a beauty. Three-match ODI series. The Test trophy was outstanding. I'm sure we're going to have a beauty also for the T20 series. So that's interesting. They've certainly gone with... Uh, a plan which they normally use, Ireland. Go, boys. Come on. Well, certainly on a very flat wicket in Zimbabwe, they chose to bowl first, winning the toss. That tells you about the kind of a game plan they have. They have won five of their last six, only losing to England. Under Paul Sterling, they played nine, won five, and only lost one. So I guess we could say that uh, what they've been deciding to do is, when they have won the toss, that is, they haven't won the toss every time, what they've been deciding to do has been successful. I guess that's also part of the plan. It's a pretty tidy over, just four from it, 74 for none.
Mark Adair was the star of the test match. He was absolutely magnificent picking up those uh, eight wickets. Started the proceedings again today with four overs. Short, camper. Just the single. Yeah, and I still don't understand why Craig Young was not given just yet another over because he'd already put pressure onto the batters. Remember, the previous over he bowled, I believe, was a maiden. And he's only given away 2.5 runs in each over. Four overs he's bowled. Seems to be a bit of a pattern that Paul Sterling works with. Four overs from the seamers and then a bit of a breather. Sometimes you've got to make sure you change that a little bit. I'm with you. Fadaya also would have uh, kept him going for a little bit longer because he was doing a fine job keeping these guys nice and quiet. Well, I absolutely understand. Four overs kind of seem to be enough for the pace bowlers. They want a breather, I absolutely understand. But sometimes you just might go an extra mile. It's those small moments that can bring about a big impact into the game. Remember, if Afghanistan continue to bat like this, they haven't scored a lot of runs. The economy is under 4.5. 4 but the wickets can do the damage towards the end. They can certainly take on the Irish bowlers. Talk about small moments. Here's one building here. Camphers only gone for two and he's halfway through his second over. And runs that. Down two in this over are meant. He runs that down, so three now off the four balls. Six bowlers have been used by the Irish captain Paul Sterling. So desperate for a wicket, they want to break this partnership. I tell you, Afghanistan has got such a strong opening pair. When they bat first, they're only the second best after Shubman Gill and Rohit Sharma to have put together four times 100 at Parshnip. I witnessed them putting together 256 and 219 against Bangladesh and Pakistan. So these two are quite a threat for any opposition. I guess the other way you can look at that, the way that Sterling's using the seamers, is that uh, this pace attack since uh, 2022 for Ireland has been terrific. When it comes to uh, average per wicket taken in one international, it's third on the list between behind India and Pakistan. So he's got guys he can spread it around with. 18 overs gone, 79 for none it is, and also time for a drink.
some shots of uh, Kabul City. We showed you some nice shots of Afghanistan during the Test Series as well. Continue doing that during the One Day Series and also the T20s. There's a look at the story so far. 79 for none it is. Gabal's not out 40. Abraham not out 35. They really have played nicely. In a, uh, a percentage of boundaries, they uh, took a little bit of uh, time to get used to the slowness, I think, of the surface, the lack of movement off the surface. That was good from Gabaz. He's played that shot many times throughout his career in white ball cricket and that one as well. I've seen him uh, play superbly in many formats, even the very shortest one. That wasn't that short, by the way, and he just hammered that for half a dozen. So he's going nicely. Three fours and two sixes so far in his 40 or 50 balls. And the island bowling, none of the wickets, but there should have been one because Gabaz was dropped on seven and has made the most of that life. Absolutely. Talk about the margins. Crowd cheering in, and there would be more people coming in to watch this game between Afghanistan and Ireland. There are a lot of Afghans living in the United Arab Emirates. Sharjah has been such an iconic, iconic ground. And the love of cricket here, especially among the Afghans, the love for the national team, for the players, how much it means back home. 247 ODIs before this game played here at this iconic venue. It's been a steady, a good start for Afghanistan. 79 runs, no wicket down. They'll take it any day. Yeah, the uh, the chats between both camps would be quite interesting. I think Afghanistan would have said, right, uh, we've uh, got a good start here. We can play aggressively. We continue to do this. We can step it up a little bit. And they'll try and do that, I think, a, a fraction. And quite simply, Ireland would have said, right, uh, well, let's just make sure we break this partnership. A couple of tight overs before the drinks break. McBrien continues. This is actually the longest Ireland have had to wait for their first wicket since the start of 2022. The average opening stand against them in that period has just been 33. So Afghanistan are uh, well ahead of the game right now at 80 for none. Yeah, absolutely. It's really nice that you do not give away wickets to the opposition inside the power play. Yeah, they did not score a lot of runs. It was only 37 inside the power play. But they've come strong. And now, the economy being under four and a half, they'll still take it. Important is they can just continue with this partnership together. Make it big. They would have had confidence in the fact they didn't need to hurry up in that power play because they can play aggressive shots. They get this partnership going. It's likely to go pretty big, as it has done in the past. So far, as far as Afghanistan, so good. Apart from that one... Uh, Opportunity they provided, which should have been snaffled by Kampfer. Saw him coming, I think. It just dropped it a fraction short. He's always pretty quick to get out of the crease and get down the track. Well, I like that. I like the intent from the batter because you cannot allow the spinners in particular to keep bowling into their channels. So it's very important that you disturb the channel that they're bowling at. So coming down the track, making him bowl shorter. That's actually good. McBride's first over went for only four. There's only two off this over so far. One ball to go, so here's a little mini period in this game. Got to make sure they don't do anything extravagant. Afghanistan. It's a top over. Two from it. 81 for none. Also got to remember it's not just about these two guys at the top. Ahmad Sharp, Ashmatala, Amazai, Mavi. Still some batting to come for Afghanistan. If these guys uh, continue like this, it's going to set it up nicely for the rest uh, of the game of this innings. For the three or four behind. They need a wicket. Hume now. He's done well so far. Interestingly, his ball is skipped a little low. On one occasion, Rahmanullah Gurbas came down. The track and the ball kept low. 
Hope you're enjoying this uh, telecast, a Firebird production for Afghanistan Cricket Board. Great pleasure, Firebird, and uh, bringing this production to us and you guys during the test series. And Firebird productions will be throughout the T20s as well, so enjoy the production. Driving on the up, as you should be doing at this stage. So, this will be a little interesting how Hume bowls, because yes, he's not very pacey, but interestingly, his ball is kept a little low for me. So, watch out for the one that might just not come onto the bat nicely. He's got a bit of a bustling action. Bottom of the bat that time. Talk about his action. Devinder was talking about him being like Scott Styrus. What do you make of it, Hazy? Ten yards quicker than Scott Styrus. My apologies, Scott, if you're watching this. Looks a bit like Scott Styrus. Action's very different. Running off the face. <laughs> Thank you. In one way or another, as long as he looks like him. Be that how he looks or be that how he bowls. Important it is for Ireland that he and the bowlers find wickets because they have still been looking for wickets. It's a nice action. Again, it's another tight over, so they're stringing a couple of overs together. Remember, the two before drinks were really good. After drinks, the first one was top. Sterling will be happy with this, just two off this over so far. Dot ball. Yeah, absolutely. It's been 26 deliveries since they have hit the boundaries. So is that a little bit of a pressure building up on the Afghanistan batters? I think Ireland got to be congratulated the way they're at, at actually doing this. There's definitely a bit of a build-up. There's lots of chat from the Irish players in the outfield as well. Captain will be pleased. Is there an opportunity for them here? Great stuff. Just two from that over. That's two overs in a row where two have come. 83 for none. After that over, quite a long discussion between the two batsmen. And that's because of those numbers. McBride, Hume, and also Young. Both going at two and a half and over at the moment. So that's how good they've been. In fact, three, I should say. McBride. It's been an interesting field change as well. Whenever McBrien comes into ball, the fielder at the mid on comes more fine towards the wickets. Yeah, that's good work. And he's a very good fielder in that position. He comes a little bit straighter and he's got quite a bit of uh, ground. He's got to cover, patrol. Well, what it does is you have to play a more unorthodox, so you just have to try and play differently and then try and score singles and change strike rotations. Abraham wants to go over the top. Hanging back that time. Nicely bowled by but Brian. Somebody's going to snap here. Quite simple. It's a build-up that's really good from Ireland. Well, absolutely, there is some pressure that you can feel out in the middle between the two batters. The long chats between them will tell you that there's some pressure building up. It's been already 30 deliveries since the last boundary's been hit. Mid on has gone uh, wider now. Pad around the corner, it's just going to be one.
It brings Rahmanullah Gurbaz on strike. How about coming down the track and hitting one and miscuing another? It's interesting. Well, he's got a chance because uh, long on is quite wide. He can go straight if it's flighted. Coming back here, coming back here. This is our standing work, really is. Pop back here, Tip. Pop back here. Just one from this over so far. another two run over that's all that's three in a row 85 for none Afghanistan going nicely, 85 without loss. This game, this innings taking a typical Sharjah trend. Batters getting set and setting up for their middle and latter overs. Off the thigh pad, I'm sure. Just flick the thigh pad. No, not flick anything. Wide given. There was definite sound through the stump mic. I thought maybe just flicking thigh pad. Ireland wanted an edge. Umpire having none of it. End results are wide. Tina Moeo, great to see you. What do you reckon of this one? Hello, Nilo. Yeah, it's just brushed the thigh pad, I think. Interesting decision. Morgan Tucker thought it's come off the bat. And wicket keepers always think it's come off the bat. It's been a nice little squeezing period by Ireland at the moment. But I think what Afghanistan needs to do is understand that uh, it's a good batting surface and there's plenty of time out here in the middle. 87 for none, one ball into the 22nd over. There's still lots of time to bat. What you don't want to do is when you've spent a bit of time out in the middle and you've seen that it's probably not the easiest to score off, it'll be tougher for somebody coming on coming in so spend time out there keep pushing along yeah you can see what Ireland are trying to do with the seam bowling options they're trying to bowl as straight as possible looking for any slight and different bounce I always feel when you bat a charger you've got to give your stumps to the bowl look at that look at the batter setting up here he's almost giving Graham Hume his three stumps that was Ibrahim Zadran so giving your stumps so not getting not falling into the trap of getting a pad in front of the line of the ball, allowing access and the blade to come through. Now, not for the first time today. Nearly a chop on from Afghanistan. Games of Sharjah, you have to accept, you have to take your medicine as a batter that you're not going to be able to go out and just blaze the ball to all parts. It's not that kind of surface. But if you bat time and bat deep, you can really cash in at the back end. It's not a kind of ground you come to and see scores in the 300s. 260, 270 is the kind of ODI score. If you get there, you're well within the game at the mid innings break. Nicely worked. You've had a few days off. How have you been? You've been busy. Yeah, the last couple of days, uh, I was wishing that we could get to today, actually, Niall. It's been quite a long while off. Of course, the test match, just the three days, and then... Uh, the three days that were scheduled in between that test match and this first ODI. But happy to be in Sharjah. Haven't been here for a while. It's looking uh, fantastic. Great work that's been done to make sure that it's in good order. Yeah, smashing venue. Well, good work at backward point. Excellent. Sharp from Ireland. Curtis Kampfer, who's... Had a mixed day in the field, truth be told. Put down a goober. Absolute dolly dropped early in the innings. Curtis Kampfer. Give Gerbaz a life, but this was better. Sharp. In that position where you generally put your best fielders. Often see Harry Tector in there. 
Count for a sharp. Four off the over. 22 done, 89 with that loss. Six bowlers used, lots of seam in there. I'm not calling them seam, I'm not calling them pace. Workman like attack. No express pace and no mystery spin, but it's something that's worked pretty well for Ireland in recent times. In the last couple of years, they've been exceptional with ball in hand. The seam bowlers done a fine job. This is Curtis Camfer, who's electric in the field. New pair of gloves, please, Chief. The sponsors. Good advertising. Happy with that. Evidence of how abrasive the surfaces and lack of grass. But just talking about that bowling attack, you said very workmanlike over the years and has worked well for Ireland. Just reflecting back to the test match, are you surprised at the omission of Barry McCarthy from today's 11? I am, Tino. I must. Uh, I just. I like Barry McCarthy on my side, and that's not a slight on Graham Hume, who would be the one for me that would miss out. McCarthy's riding a crest of a wave. Confidence is high. Genuine wicket taker. He's someone who makes the ball talk. Can make something happen. He can bat down the back end. We've seen him score a T20 half century against India just the season gone by. So he can contribute, Barry McCarthy, and. After such a good performance, as you mentioned, in Abu Dhabi. Slightly surprised not to see the Pembroke bowler in the side. Coach Heinrich Milan is sticking to what he knows and giving Hume the opportunity. I don't mind that. I like the coach. Continuity is something you crave for as a player. So I'm certainly not suggesting a chop and change mentality. And Heinrich Milan is pretty much set a stall out he does give players the opportunity so i do like that about a coach i just felt mccarthy's confidence was so high after that test match just to give him an initial crack the first game of the series yes, 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 yes. quick single good running you know, i like the word that you use confidence because you can see that in him even uh, with just that Test match debut a few days ago. His performance in that was very impressive. And he is a great team player, as we've seen over the years. And when he does get his opportunity, he'll always be giving off his best. Very tidy from McBride. Gerbaz misses out. Just two off it. 91 for three. Great venue, Sharjah. Love coming to this ground, love playing here, love the history that you got. It was steeped in history. Some of the greats of the game have plied their trade here. You see good crowds coming in at the weekend, no doubt about that. And a surface that gives the bowlers a little bit, gives spinners a little bit. And as a batter, you can score and score freely, but you've got to go about your business in a specific way. Nice warm afternoon. It was, I must say, it was quite warm when we were out there this afternoon. Doing, you were doing the pitch, and we had our pre-match show. It was I'm not going to say it was roasting, but it was certainly warm enough. Evenings here can get a little bit nippy, so I wouldn't be surprised if Arnold will feel nicely at home second time round. 46 balls, Tino, since the last bounty, Ireland albeit not taking wickets, they're doing a very, very useful job here. They are, and this is what you want from your bowlers in the middle part of the innings. I think what they've done, 
is they've read the pitch well. They've seen the lengths that they need to bowl. They've seen the lengths that are difficult for the batsman to get the ball away. And they've set the right fields. Last six overs, they've realized just 11 runs. Yeah, and it's just working with what you've got. What, what have you got at your disposal? Paul Sterling and Heinrich Milan and Ryan Needleson, the bowling coach, and Gary Wilson, who's part of the coaching staff. What have we got as an Ireland collective to work with? Have we got someone who can bowl 90 mile an hour? No, not here. Do we have somebody who can bowl ripping leg spin or a Nur Ahmed with a left arm wrist spin? We haven't got that as an Ireland setup, so we have to be right on the money. Line, length, prey on the vulnerability or a potential mistake from a opponent batter. Paul Sterling would love to have some of those resources that I mentioned, the pace of the wrist spin, because he's an attacking captain, Paul Sterling. He would love to have that. He hasn't. When, they, when Ireland bat, you'll see a very expansive Ireland, ultra-aggressive, but with ball in hand, discipline. Yeah, you talk about Heinrich Milan and his role as the coach. Well, down the ground, chipped. What a beautiful shot. Mid on and mid off was inside the ring. Just lofts it all the way for six. Easy pickings for such a talent like Ibrahim Zadran. Well, this is pure class. We've talked all the way through the series, going back to the test match, about how technically correct this man is. It's cleared the boundary by a good 20 to 30 meters, but it's just a punch. He's realized he's overpitched it for the first time in a while. Wants to, won't get to. 100 comes up for Afghanistan. It's taken a fair while to get there, but another excellent opening partnership for these two extremely talented right hander batters. As I mentioned, not express, very valuable in the context of this first ODI. Twenty four bowls, hundred without loss. Excellent from Garbaz and Ibrahim. Feels like Ramanul Garbaz has been playing this side for 10 years. He's, you know, he's been ever present since making that scintillating century on debut in Abu Dhabi, which was a pleasure to watch firsthand. 124 overs. Kind of position now, Tino. That many teams around the world, and I'm thinking some like England, one of the, the better white ball sides. India to a lesser extent in this okay, middle it, phase with 10 wickets in hand they would be ultra aggressive how do you see Afghanistan going about this little phase well now that they've got 200 just taking a look at that six in the previous over and with both of these batsmen approaching 50 thought about two won't come back for it I think one of these two has to kick on. One of these two has got to say to himself, listen, I've just got to try and pick up that scoring rate. And I think that should be Ramanullah Gurbaz for obvious reasons. Ibrahim Zadran has played a wonderful anchor role, even in white ball cricket for Afghanistan, and batted through the innings. That's the role that he plays. We haven't seen him as explosive as we, as we know him to be, Ramanullah, but he can pick up the pace. Strikes the ball beautifully, clears the boundaries with a minimum of fuss. So from a team perspective, he really needs to kick on now. Two, two. All good. 
Once two, there's protection. Ireland have got a quite an unusual field with that mid off, mid on, I beg your pardon, very straight, and then a long on, much wider. So you want to see Gerbas go really hard. You mentioned two batters approach of 50. Why does that come into the equation? Because you'll find that most batters, when they approach a milestone, they start to have that in the back of their mind as much as they don't want to admit it. And sometimes they just play for that milestone, but when they get past it, then there's a breath of relief. That's another one in the bag, and we can start to move on a little bit here. Well, offside field inside the ring. 50. Beautiful. Really, really well cultured half century from Ibrahim Zadran. It's his seventh in ODI cricket. And the alarm bells will start ringing if you're an Ireland fan because he generally turns them into hundreds. Probably one of the half centuries he's taken a little bit more time in terms of balls out in the middle. And it's still a very well constructed inning so far. An interesting point to get into 50 and maybe the, uh, the little man on your shoulder. You got a smirk on your face. Did you have that man a lot, Nyla? I, did, uh, I used to get out after getting 50 a lot. The concentration, the relief to finally get a 50 and then give it away to the opposition. 25 done, Afghanistan going nicely, 104 of that loss. Yeah, milestones as, as a batter, you're always looking for. Well, ideally hundreds, truth be told, as an opening batter, but 50s and hundreds in a winning cause. That's the key, though. Getting those scores in a winning cause, that is what's pivotal. When you look back at innings in an evening or you get back to the hotel at 11 or 12 o'clock and you get 80 or 90 or 100, but you've lost, it doesn't quite feel the same. Played with... Ramlaresh Sarwan, the superb cricketer from Guyana, he was my captain in England, and he had a philosophy, Tino, that when you get into the 90s, it shouldn't take you more than 10 balls to get your 100 in all forms. So first-class cricket, he didn't want that little man on your shoulder stopping your flow. There were some outrageous shot pl shots played by batters in the 90s. <laughs> I'll bet not by you. 50. Ramadan Gurbaz joins Ibrahim Zadran past the milestone. It's his fourth to go with five hundreds in one day international cricket. These two are outstanding together. It's actually his fifth. I beg your pardon, not his fourth. What a wonderful partnership these two have forged. Well, the first to get to the half century, Ibrahim Zadran, sweet timer. We saw that in Abu Dhabi. Everyone was very impressed with his fluency in the test match just nip back just nip back towards that leg stump and hit above the knee roll there's a hint of an inside edge as well I think this confirmation from our trusty stats man that is his slowest Ibrahim Zadran 50 in one day cricket He's had to grind a little bit more than he normally does. A surface where you just need to be a little bit more responsible, and that's exactly how he's played. You just see how straight Ireland are trying to bowl. Stump to stump, trying to... I want to keep a little bit low. Interesting to see how Gerbaz and Zadran are playing, Tino. They're getting quite low in the crease, trying to get into the ball. 
in Sharjah, you have to really make sure you're making a concerted effort to get your body weight down the ground. Not try and go back, even though sometimes you'll see the ball and you'll want to go back. That's a lovely touch. That is a gorgeous cricket shot. It was slower ball, it was into the surface, and Ibrahim initially thought about tonking it over the offside, then just tapped it on his head past Lorca Tucker for four. Well, that's really well watched and played. Finesse. Pace off the ball, which we haven't seen a lot of, but in the end, he's played it very nicely. And there'll be no field to find enough in one-day cricket to save that. Really good over for Afghanistan. Nine off it. 26 done, 113 for that loss. Plenty of power on that middle order. Omar Zai, what a player. Mohamed Nabi, the resurgence of Mohamed Nabi. What a cricketer. Well, Ibrahim Zadran and Ramanullah Gervaz playing nicely. Gervaz, who had a quiet start, must say. Took a little bit of time to get going. Got a life early, put down. Fairly routine catch of Theo van Werkram, but good footwork, efficient, swift. And another. Milestone for the talented Afghanistan batter. What a lovely hard sweep that is now, Tino. Now we're seeing the expansive nature. He's past 50. He's past 50, Nile. This doesn't surprise me at all. I'll just expect to see slightly more attacking strokes from Gurbaz. Right right this one across. well thought of. Outside the line of the off-stump plays the sweep shot. Very square of the fielder who's deep on the onside outside the line and that's why he's getting outside there well just listening through the stump mic on the boundary that Gerbaz hit Lorcan Tucker the keeper says right in front well actually it wasn't right in front so Lorcan Tucker the boundary that Gerbaz hit was a similar line of length so Tucker was trying to get into the mind of Gerbaz but didn't do so it's a good shot because he picks the line length early. It's a very safe shot. Prompts Paul Sterling just to move Harry Tector at deep backward square a little bit square. Well, 118 without loss. Current a lot more than that. Six and over, two, five, nine. I think eight from here is, is asking a lot, although you have 10 wickets in hand. I think somewhere between that 259 and 306. Pitch doctor, what do you reckon? Putting me on the spot there, Niall. I, I think with just less than half the overs to go, 120 on the board, 10 wickets in hand is a crucial part Gulbadin Naib to come in I reckon they must be looking at at least at least 270 yeah that'll be a runner ball from here would you would you be happy as a batting unit with 10 wickets in hand two players on 50 plus to go with a runner ball from here to the end I think with the way we've seen the surface play and how difficult the Irish bowlers have made it for them to score. You've got to give them credit there as well. We've seen how they've squeezed in this middle part of the innings. Another one that's just kept low. So if you can get yourself, that's why I said at least 270, they can get more, then I think you're in a good position. 122 for none.
That's Hamad Zai. Hamad Zai. Is it? Hundred percent. Marker there. Graham Hume opening up. Wickedless. That's the area of concern for the men in green. The economies are pretty good from Craig Young and Andrew McBride. Right, Craig Young, I thought he was good this afternoon. Bowled with decent pace and good aggression. Deep back with square, long leg, deep third and a deep point. The boundary riders. Oh, Tino, now we're just we're just opening the shoulders a little bit. All of a sudden, that 50 landmark, you were spot on. Two different batters since going past 50. I've seen Ramon Gurbaz get fa past 50 a few times in one-day cricket. Nile, but I think this is the right way to go about it. He expresses himself a lot more. And you can see he's looking to go over Sterling at mid-wicket. Get the boundary leg side. Well, that's known as a, a hack. That's all that is. That is not nice. That is not a aesthetically pleasing stroke. It's the highest opening partnership for Afghanistan versus Ireland in ODIs. That's a, an ugly shot from Gurbaz. Previous best was 120. Gurbaz and Javed Amadabi at Abu Dhabi in 2021. Pretty sure I was on comms then, watching Ireland get flayed all around Abu Dhabi. <laughs> Lovely, beautiful shot. Well, six runs drop the dugout, but well, that's a really good shot from Gerbaz, and now Arla will fear the worst. Yeah, this is a little bit more controlled. The first two shots in the over, he's looking to heave the ball away, really. This time, just advances down, gets closer to the pitch of the ball, and then just picks it up. Look at that. Much better position to finish off, and he's kept his eye on the ball. Cleared the boundary with ease. Yeah, that was a beautiful six. It really was. Because it wasn't quite out of the middle of the bat, but he got himself, as you mentioned, Tino, into the a really good position to hit through the line and just trust. He trusted his ability and trusted his hands to get him out of a potentially difficult position. It really was a lovely fluent shot. You know, talking about this new partnership record between these two, they've been outstanding. 165 matches, there's been 800 partnerships for the openers. Three of those by other pairs. Five between these two in 30 matches. Is there a chance? No, there isn't. So these two have been uh, magnificent with their partnership. Understand each other well. Decent footwork from Craig Young, top corner, top net. Batter just making his ground in the presence, the awareness, just to pinch a single. When we came on commentary, Tina, there have been 46 balls since the last boundary, and since the last two or three overs, boundaries are plenty. 40 runs in the last 30 balls alone. Change of pace, beats Ibrahim. 28 done, 131 with that loss. Really good acceleration this by these two batters. You can see the skyscrapers building there. Very impressive stuff and power to add. Theo van Woerkom coming back from the Sharjah club end. A little bit unlucky early on to say the least. 
Having Ramanilla Gerbas dropped when he was on seven. And goodness me, Aunt Ireland paying the price for that miss. One bounce four. That really is impressive. No chance for Van Wilkom to settle into this new spell straight away. Gerbas is on his case. Afghans in their favorite territory now. Against the turn. A meaty connection taking it to the boundary. To drag down and he's got away with that. Van Wokom slapped straight to extra cover. There was the opportunity. It was on seven. Well, that's been a feature of these two batters today. Not only had they been yeah. powerful in dispatching the ball to the boundary, they also okay. run beautifully between the wickets. Down. Really good understanding. They pinch singles here and there. Kept the strike ticking over. Terrific cricket. I think that's been the change that we've been witnessing since the World Cup. We take it on good communication between the two batters. The running between the wicket has improved for Afghanistan. And that was quite evident in the World Cup as well. The way they were successful in constructing a chase against Pakistan. There's four wins in the World Cup against England, Pakistan, Sri Lanka and the Netherlands. Mid-wicket now going out. Mid-on coming up into the circle. Down the ground. Terrific shot from Gurbaz. Four runs. Goodness me, the power here such a full-length ball and somehow he used his bottom hand and clubbed it over the fielder inside the circle Vidal is still inside the 30-yard circle end of the over a good over for Afghanistan once again nine off it 141 without loss Six bowlers used then by Paul Sterling. Just wonder if there's scope for him to use Harry Tector's off spin or even his own off spin. He's a reluctant bowler. But things just not happening at the moment for Ireland. Definition of insanity is uh, to keep doing the same thing over and over again and hoping for a different result. Maybe it just needs some sort of change, any change here. Club down the ground. You take a single. That's where they've been so good. The understanding, strike rotation. Now with all ten wickets standing. We haven't seen George Dockrell bowl either. So long on, men at deep square on the boundary. Powerfully struck. Got a ground to cover for the fieldsmen. Two more runs. Sense of urgency. And so there should be, as Niall O'Brien mentioned on commentary a short while ago, with ten wickets in hand. So much power in that Afghanistan middle order. 
these two players really do have a license to play their shots. That's exactly what they're starting to do. Fine leg is up in the circle. Chase for Hume. We'll come back for two. Was dancing down the track, forcing the bowler to change the length and making good adjustment as well, taking the pace of the ball. It's very much aware about where the gaps are available. 81, approaching his century, 81 of 89, has picked up the scoring rate nicely. Tector at mid-off. He feels that was quite close. So how close was that? Sweetly timed. Batsman was well home. Two men on the boundary, on the onside square, a man at the long arm. Cam for a backward point. It was Zadran who was the aggressor early on. Gerbaz just couldn't find his timing at all. But after that let off, and Camfer dropped him. It was almost like the uh, the starting pistol. He really has timed the ball beautifully thereafter. Zadran has been happy to play second fiddle. And that's the beauty of the format as well. It allows the batsman to claw back, to come back. 30 overs have been bowled. It's 147 for no wicket, Afghanistan. Very measured start by Gurbas and Zadran. They were 37 after 10 overs. So in the 20 overs that have followed, they've added 110. It's interesting hearing Niall O'Brien and Tina Mawoyo on commentary previously talking about what a decent final total might be eight and over from here gets them to 302 Afghanistan I think they'd want at least that with this platform it can be harder to bat later on in an innings here at Sharjah as the ball gets softer now there are two fielders in catching positions on the offside here Sterling and Balburnie in the air We'll take a single. And I don't know whether you heard uh, the moan then from Lork and Tucker and possibly Sterling as well at extra cover because that ball went in the air just where Sterling had moved from. Slicing it rather than finding the connection on that occasion from the sweetest part of the bat. So on 83, Chen of Fieldsman behind the square on the offside. Brilliantly bowled. Bit of turn. That'll get uh, the spinners in the Afghanistan dressing room looking up at that one. On, 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 on. 150 up for Afghanistan with that single. The platform has been laid here. Given the fact that they got Ella Mohamed Gajanfar, who's making his debut today, I remember Mujibur Rahman making his debut at this particular ground against Ireland in 2017 and taking four wickets on his debut. Similar kind of bowling style that he possesses should be interesting. Him bowling on this pitch.
direct hit from mid on that uh, piece of fielding just uh, disturbing the furniture Paul Rifle doing the running repairs three men in catching positions The trajectory has changed. Quick through the air as well. Yeah! Knocks him over. Fantastic piece of bowling. And absolutely essential as far as Ireland were concerned. Van Vorkum has got the wicket. Ibrahim Zadran, the man to go. Well bold. He started well, the over was getting the ball to turn, this time around turn as well. Skidding up the surface, trying to give a bit of room to himself, too close to the body to carve out the shot through the offside. Ibrahim goes for 60. First wicket down for Afghanistan for 150. Afghanistan looking to take advantage of this wonderful platform that's been given to them. They've pushed Asmatullah Omazai up to number three in the order. The man who got 149 against Sri Lanka in Palakele last month in just 115 balls. Omazai was Afghanistan's second highest run scorer for Afghanistan in the Cricket World Cup and he got those runs 353 of them in nine matches at a strike rate of 98 runs per hundred balls it's not going to be facing now though he's at the non-strikers end Gurbaz is the man in the firing line and Craig Young is operating from the pavilion end shout for LBW Not out, and remember, there's no reviews. Brilliant piece of bowling from Yang. Just found the wicket in the previous over. Gurbaz approaching his century. Ball cutting back to the right hand batsman. Might have gone to clip the leg stump. Oh, he's come a long way down, Gerbaz. Good fielding by Balburni. One of the old wickets there. He wanted the single. Omazai. His view was quite the opposite. Well, well, well. One set, set batsman perishing, another one. On the words of getting run out, you cannot afford to throw your wicket away in this fashion. As Mutla Omazai has been promoted up in the betting order today. Got to be careful, they need to shut out this communication between the two batsmen. We see in Afghanistan collapsing. It's a new batsman at the crease at the moment. It's important that they focus on just sorting out the issues, take a bit more time, maybe. Down the track, over the top of mid off six. Glorious stroke from Gurbaz. 50th six for Gurbaz in one day internationals. That was just brutal. There's no other word to describe that. He has butchered that over 
mid off. Lovely swing of the bat. He really hits the ball hard, this young man. Five one day international centuries, first of which was against Ireland three years ago. He's on the cusp now of a sixth. Deep square, long on. Midoff is up in the circle still. Man at the square on the boundary because he's compulsive puller. Short pull and pulled. He gets into the gap on the onside. Another boundary. Gurbaz into the 90s. There's no nervous 90s for him at the moment. Young pulling his length back. And with fine leg up in the circle, all Gurbaz had to do there is get the ball past that fielder, Graham Hume. And it was a guaranteed boundary. And he just hit his 50th sixth in one day internationals. Is he going to hit his 51st here to reach three figures? Not on that occasion. End of the over, 160 for one. Ramanella Gurbas and Ibrahim Zadran, their fifth partnership of 100 or more in one-day international cricket. And this is how that partnership ended. Really good ball, that, by Van Voorkom. Turned appreciably. Pierre had added 256 against Bangladesh, 227 against Pakistan, 114 against England, and 130 against Pakistan prior to today. Oh, it was uppish from Omar Zai, not a million miles away from McBride at backward point. Omar Zai off the mark, perhaps a little fortuitously. It's not going to be that easy. For a new batsman coming in and starting his innings, just holding into the pitch. Went through the vacant space. Slip in position. Good, 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 good. Key here, you would say, for Omazai, is just to rotate the strike. Just get off strike, get the man who's got his eye in, facing as many balls as possible. Well, he gets accustomed to conditions. Just like that. Has obviously been given the, the clear instruction as Gurbaz is approaching his century to play aggressively. That's why he's been promoted. Looking at the conditions, he can be circumspect when Gurbaz is stroking the ball delightfully well. Just one stroke away from a potential century here, Gurbaz. 94 of 99. Happy to take the single. Excellent betting performance from Gurbaz. Took his time to get himself in. Struggling to get his timing going on this uh, slightly challenging pitch. But, but once he got into the groove, he started playing shots. Focus has been on playing straight or well, in the V, most of the shots. Well fielded by Balberni. An extra cover. He's in a hot spot there. Very good. With the focus of using the straight bat, vertical bat, to get runs. Straight to the finger again. 
a good over from Van Voorkamp. Just four runs from it, 164 for one. Here's the six bowlers used so far by Ireland. Two spinners, four seamers. And Mark Adair back into the attack. A change of ends for him as well. He started off bowling from the Sharjah club end. That's the far end of the screen as you're looking there. Now operating from the pavilion end. straight away starts off by taking pace off the ball I just felt you know right at the beginning of proceedings today I know the ball was hard but I just felt that Afghan uh, Ireland could have perhaps taken pace off a little bit earlier than they did it's going to be a stock in trade for them now particularly the seam bowlers at the back end of the innings little cutter there off cutter rolling his fingers down the side of the ball just think you know Devender it's one of those surfaces here at Sharjah we've seen it so many times in the past where the slower you bowl it the harder it is to get after the ball yeah in the T20 World Cup as well in 2021 also before so in the 90s the similar kind of surfaces were there at Sharjah then in 2000 early 2000 to 2015 good surfaces for batting that's where Afghanistan enjoyed getting runs Full delivery, he's knocking it down the ground for a single, and that's where they thrived as well. Shahzad at the top of the order for Afghanistan. Yes, Mohammed Shahzad, remember on this ground in a one day international against Pakistan, he reverse swept side Ajmal for six over towards the scoreboard look on Syed Ajmal's face is still etched in my brain nicely driven the focus is on strike rotation he will be in action hopefully in the month of April playing the Shpagiza back in Afghanistan the domestic T20 tournament just before the World Cup the focus has been on preparing the players by providing the competition on 97 Gurbaz All leading edge, not far away from Mark Adair. Gubaz just revealing the odd little bit of nerves, perhaps, just realising he's within touching distance of that hundred. Just taking the pace off of Qatar, looking to attack this chance. Luckily, fell away from the fieldsman, the bowler himself. Mid off up in the circle. Maybe drive through the extra cover. The better way to get to a century here. Pulled away. There's a fielder out there at deep square leg. Good, good, good. Just the single. It's the end of the over. Gubaz will keep strike. 169 for one. Plenty of batters to come. Nabi, Gulbuddin, and Noor can strike big. 
Gazinfar on his debut can hit sixes as well. As we could see in the World Cup. Under 19 World Cup in South Africa recently. Yes, that's a deep batting lineup, that isn't it? Even more reason for Afghanistan to look to go hard, at least one of these two batters. Licensed to do so because they've got that depth to come. Gobaz then on 98. Take that 99. Excellent inning so far. Made a conscious effort to play in the V. Not many shots through the square of the wicket. That's where he's been faltering of late, trying to play through the onside against the tide. Was given life when he was in seven, trying to take. They attack to the opposition by coming down the pitch. Single brings Gerbaz back on strike. Conscious effort from Ireland here to try and save the single. One is the call, and the call is no from Omar Zai. They need to bring people up into the circle here, Ireland, just to turn the screw, you rather fancy. Especially when the focus is on taking single. Conscious decision to take a single rather than go for the big booming shot. Now Bernie at extra cover. And again. Deep breath from Gobaz. <laughs> Delicate late cut. The single that brings the hundred, a leap in the air from Ramanullah Gobaz. It's his sixth one day international hundred for Afghanistan that equals the record for his country in this form of the game. He's level now with Mohamed Shazad. A fine innings appreciated by the crowd here in Sharjah. And what a platform he's given his side. A magnificent hundred. Played some pretty shots. Just waiting till the last moment, just guiding the ball into gap. Jubilation. Punching the air in delight. A delightful news for fans back in Afghanistan. He has transformed himself as a consistent batsman now. A reliable batsman just like Ramesh Shah. Half a hand from Balburni. Omazai will keep the strike, 35 overs have gone. Time for a drink here at the Sharjah Cricket Stadium with Afghanistan 173 for one.
Beautiful shots of Bamiyan there in Afghanistan, and it's a beautiful looking scorecard right now for Afghanistan. Yes, he's had a life, but hasn't he cashed in at Ramanullah Gurbaz? A sixth one day international 100, ball striking of the highest quality. Shots all around the ground, equally proficient against spin and pace, 11 boundaries in total. The rhythm with which he bats, well, it's a sight to behold. Particularly coming down the track against the seamers. Fluent strokes down the ground and then a little bit of touch too. And the magic moment as he got to three figures. Joining Mohammed Chazad on that sixth century marker in ODI cricket. But for Gerbaz, it's coming just 39 innings. What a strike rate that is. Less than one in every seven innings, he's making 100. And he's now got more hundreds than he has 50s. 600s, 450s, a star of the show, as I wish a very well, good evening now, really, isn't it, to Ahmed Fadai. Ahmed, lovely to be with you. Likewise, Andrew Leonard, thank you very much. Uh, see, the thing is about his conversion rate. He converts his 50s into 100. That was a close one. It could come back onto the stumps. Lucky for Asmat Laumarsa, who's been promoted today to come and bat at number three. Usually strikes at a ball, run a ball. Still finding his rhythm, maybe. He's been brought up the order to hit a few big shots. He can. He had a wonderful World Cup. Scored 97, fell just short of 100 inside the Cricket World Cup 2023, and then scored big 149 against Sri Lanka at Palikale. Just like that, it's high in the air and should be a maximum. He's an absolute superstar, Asmatala Ormitzai. I think his potential ceiling of all of the talent that's being churned out by Afghanistan, it may exceed any of them. Bat ball in the field, he does it all. 149 not out against Sri Lanka was just phenomenal. He's picked the slower ball here. Gets a good piece of it, and cashes in. And I think the reason they, they've promoted him up the order is, is very much to try and capitalize upon that fantastic start. 150 on the board, I think 300 plus very much being eyed up. I see Shapur Zadran out there, Mr. Ayubi, and down at the end, the Afghanistan chief selector, Mr. Sulaiman Khail. Should be a happy man now. Talking about the fielding, remember the match in the Cricket World Cup? Holland, Netherlands were batting so well. And then a throw came down from the deep, impacted the breakthrough, and there from the game changed to Afghanistan's favor, and that was Azmatullah Omarzai. So fielding is really an important factor. And Azmatullah Omarzai looks to be a very good complete package for Afghanistan. The only thing not really working right now is the communication between these two. It's been a little all over the place, the running between the wickets. Okay, in this case, it cannoned into the stumps. But not quite speaking the same language. There's been a couple of half chances. Balberni's been particularly good in the covers, actually. In Ireland, probably unlucky not to find a run out. For me, part of a, a kind of a new wave of Afghan players that they're finding and bringing through the very young very fit very strong just his ball striking is really something to behold and good positivity from jonathan trotz and, and the afghan management saying we've got a great platform here okay the wicket might be a little too paced but let's cash in let's think of 300 plus well, I absolutely like the idea because previously Afghanistan have got such platforms, couldn't really capitalize on it. 256 for the first wicket against Bangladesh and they couldn't score much after that. 227 against Pakistan and they only ended up making 300. So this time around, they want to change it. And it is to send down people who can strike the ball hard and who have the confidence you talk about Asmatullah Omarzai and Rahmanullah Gurbaz not being as fluent as for the running between the wicket between these two is concerned is because they haven't batted together. Asmatullah Omarzai has put a good partnership with Muhammad Nabi, the second for the sixth wicket, highest, 242 against Sri Lanka. So they certainly can. 
spend time out in the middle and the chemistry will come. Again, a mix-up in the running between the wickets. They will turn down the second. End of the 36, 185 for one. And the big thing for me, you think about the sort of pantheon of, of great Afghan batters, obviously the real stars of the show have been their bowlers. Firstly, those fast bowlers, the Hamid Hassans, the Shapur Zadrans you just saw on your screen there a moment ago, Dalwat Zadran. And then the spinners, the Rashids, all of these names roll off the tongue. But in terms of their batters, those with multiple hundreds in, in ODI cricket for Afghanistan, Kareem Sadiq, Nairoz Mangal, Mohammad Nabi Ramacha, Mohammad Shazad. All done it at a significantly lesser yeah, conversion rate than Ramanul Agurbais. Just 39 innings, 600s. You'll want to make this into a daddy hundred. Oh. Nicely bowled, beats the outside edge. There has been turn on offer that may concern Ireland for the second innings. But this is a new breed, isn't it, of Afghan batter? Ibrahim Zadran, I think, across all formats. Gurbaz, we saw, made his, make his test debut last week. Such exciting times at the top of the order for Afghanistan. We haven't even seen Ramit Shah yet, who's maybe the class act of all of them. Yeah, absolutely spot on. You talk about the batters up the order for Afghanistan. We just witnessed another 100 run partnership, 150 opening partnership for Afghanistan. They have put together such partnership five times together. So it's really good to see Afghanistan doing strong on the batting. Because that is certainly one area that has hurt them in the previous matches, particularly in the test match that recently concluded against Ireland. Go back in the test match against Sri Lanka. It's just that they, it didn't click for them. So it's really important that the batters are in confidence and they score run and they give the platform to the bowlers that they can cash on. I think what it does as well is it changes the game for Afghanistan going forward. Historically, you think of, of their amazing ascent through the levels of the game. A lot of it's come through exceptional bowling performances. But all of a sudden, two of those four names, Raman al and Ibrahim Zidran, the two openers, look at the number of innings they've done that in. Rama Chah is a classy player. They've got a fantastic record in this format. Taken 100 games. Brilliant batting. Just toying with the field as Gurbaz. He's played that off the back foot. Gets it well wide of the man in the circle at mid on and to the left of the man out at deep mid wicket. Four more. Well, Workham has been bowling pretty nicely out here among the Irish bowlers. He's been getting a bit of a turn. This time around, just a touch short. He goes back onto the back foot and smashes this for a boundary, so takes the pressure off because he previously had only considered one run. Comes down the track, and this is good fielding, really good fielding. End of the over, six runs off it. Afghanistan, 191 for one. Plenty of batting to come for Afghanistan, and I think very much they're going to be thinking of 300 plus. Paul Sterling, questions to answer. Yeah, great to see our, our VIPs, our dignitaries in the house. I'm really elated to be bringing you these pictures live from charges. Paul Sterling answers the question by turning to his seventh bowler. Just the two overs of camphor we saw earlier on. And George Dockrell, who has gone completely out with his bowling in terms of 
24, 36 months ago, barely bowling at all and reinvented himself as a middle order power hitter. His bowling has shown some real signs in recent times it's coming back. And for me, with his natural height, his slightly longer levers than Van Werkham, could be a good option on the surface, but this is not a, a task that any bowler will enjoy. You're being brought on for your first bowl in the 38th over. Paul Sterling might be saying, can you just get me two in here? Can you bowl me 38 and 40? And maybe the seniors, seniors can finish out. But I would not envy this task at all, Ahmed. Sterling's seemed a bit reluctant to use part-timers in recent times. It's part, I think, of a broader strategy that Heinrich Milan is using to, to say, no, my five best bowlers are my five best bowlers. If that means that Mark Adair has to bat at number seven, which will be the case today, say la vie, but he's kind of turned his back on that because of the position Afghanistan have got themselves into. And that's the answer from Raman Gerbaz. Almost onto the road, a monster! Six for the moment at left the bat. Anybody out there in the, on the road can just take the ball for free because this has gone out of the park. Some work for the umpire to come down, bring the new ball. Rahmanullah Gurbas doesn't treat Dockrell nicely. Paul Sterling should have brought him earlier, but at this stage of the game, you haven't bowled for so long. You've been one of the really good bowlers for Ireland, but now it's not going to work with the kind of a momentum. Rahmanullah Gurbas isn't watch this. It's out of the park. Well, there is a landmark. If you get onto Google Maps, it's called MS Dhoni's Landing Point. I think Dhoni famously sent one out onto the main road there. Not sure if it got all the way there, but went pretty close to it. It's an invidious position here for George Dockrell. He's been almost tossed a little bit of a hospital pass, hasn't he, by his skipper? Yet to bowl, you can see he's still trying to just get some air, some feeling into the hands. 38th over, bowl to a man who's on 107, not out, and he's going to ponga you out of the ground. See, the other thing is that the Afghanistan batters have the game awareness. Now, bringing in George Docklil into the 38th over kind of gives you the sense. The captain doesn't have a lot of confidence in him, and this is back-to-back -back maximum. Another one off the bat of Rahmanullah Gurbaz. 200 up for Afghanistan, 205 now. Only in the 38th over, two back-to-back -back sixes. And the 50 partnership has come up in a flash of just 41 balls. Probably not quite the right angle. And Gerbaz's quality of picking that length, not out of the middle this time. Back-to-back -back maximums, Afghanistan on the charge. Well, 300 plus minimum from here. I do feel a bit for George Dockrell. Didn't bowl at all down in the ODIs in Harare. And now called upon against maybe two of the biggest ball strikers in this entire Afghanistan side. Gerbaz goes bang, bang. Pressure on Dockrell. Speared in. Could end up just being the one over at George Docker. We're going to see they'll get back for a couple here. Already 16 runs from it. They've done a huge amount wrong here. Just the quality of this man. The first one monstrous. The second one not quite as big, but just as effective. Yeah, absolutely. Afghanistan batters cashing on the opportunity. He's done well in the last two or in the last two deliveries to have pulled things a little bit, followed Rahmanullah Gorbaz, didn't give him room. End of the over, a big one for Afghanistan, 16 off it, 207 for one. Ahmed, Afghan fans watching on, what will they want? 320 more than that? Well, absolutely anything above 300. And I tell you what, Andrew, if Rahmanullah Gurba stays, it can certainly go above 300.
Now, this is really a good partnership. It's 57 of 43 deliveries. It's just what is required at this stage of the game. The platform is set, nine wickets in the bank. You can certainly charge the Irish bowlers. Man at long on, takes the catch. It's another for Van Werkham. Homer sign never quite got settled. Good reward for what has been, well, for me, a much more impressive spell here with the white ball than what he bowled at points in Abu Dhabi. Good reward for Van Werkham, justifies his selection. He's got both wickets to fall. Yeah, absolutely. He's been the pick of the bowlers for Ireland. Yeah, Workham bowling this fuller Asmatullah Omar Zai, who's not been able to find the middle of the bat. Camfer attacks the cage. This will give some relief to Camfer. Maybe a little late, but whatever. Asmatullah Omar Zai departs after making 19 of 20 balls. Afghanistan are 207 for two. Well, the shuffles with Afghanistan's batting order they continue. Mohamed Nabi, the man for all seasons for Afghanistan, promoted up the order, up to number four. And a deep breath as he enters into this series for the first time. He was part of that phenomenal partnership with the man he's replaced, Asmatul Ormatsai. Again, Sri Lanka was really enjoying watching that. Different conditions here, nowhere near as humid or as hot as this is so nearly a third for Van Werkham. Sharp turn and outside edge, maybe a flick of Tucker's glove. The end result will be a boundary to get Nabi off the mark. Well, that's very cruel, and all of a sudden you start thinking why a bowler can only bowl six deliveries and why not more. Look at this genuine edge. You'll think if there was a slip field, uh, Nabi was a goner. That's lucky four runs for Mohammad Nabi. He will take it, he'll open his account. He's a very dangerous batter down the order. Ireland will certainly want him out. And Afghanistan would want him play till the end. It's definitely bowled a, a much nicer tempo and not just a pace through the air, more revs on the ball. This is the wicket. Look at that, plenty of action on the ball. Clothed, dragged by Ormitsai and Camferwell. Just a bit of relief given that he's the one who dropped Ramanullah Gurbaz on seven. Remember how costly has that been? And it's already cost 114. It could end up costing a few more. Yeah, he's not scared to give a little air to the ball. He's not just ball at one trajectory. He's changed his pace, and that is some relief for Camfer. Sure, he'll be asked a lot of questions for one catch drop. Rahmanullah Gurba's on seven. And that was a sitter. It's no, no catch is easy, but again, you will want to take those catches. Oh, he's bowled him! This is another wicket in the over. This has been really, really... An amazing spell that unfortunately comes to an end. He's completed a turnover but takes three wickets. Most importantly, he gets Rahmanullah Gurbaz off the last delivery of his all, of his spell. Well, what a spell it's been from Van Werkham. His 60th and final delivery finds a third breakthrough. He should well and could well have had this man dismissed on seven. Instead, Curtis Camfer put down the catch. Might not be the last laugh, but he does have his revenge. And Gerbaz walks back after a quite marvellous innings. Their career best figures for Van Werkham. He's got three for 55. Gerbaz goes for 1-2-1. One, 2-1-2 two, one. Two, one, two for three.
Two wickets in the over for Thea van Werkham as he finishes his spell. will bring Ramat Shah to the crease at number five. Might not necessarily be his natural game here now with just 11 overs to bat, but I suspect his main role will be to try and get Naby as much of the strike as possible. Plenty of batting to come to. Really good career numbers. He's an elegant driver of the ball, effective puller and hooker as well. It's really good to watch. Fluid to the eye. For Ireland, I think it will just be that one over of George Dockrell that went for 16. Definitely a little bit of a hospital pass. He was tossed by Paul Sterling. Graham Hume will return. He's been economical and, if not penetrative, thus far. For Ireland to, to drag themselves back into this game, that the last 10 will be important, but a special moment for Van Werkham. Getting that revenge, just skidding on a little bit, maybe keeping a fraction low. Three wickets to his name for the first time in an ODI. Well bowled. Well, absolutely. Rahmanullah Gurbaz played the wrong line. It went with the arm. And it skidded through. Now, can this be the comeback that Ireland wanted in this game? Afghanistan still have a very strong, strong platform. Some of the Irish fans enjoying. Previous over was one of four to watch and see. I would just think laughing and smiling, maybe enjoying the game out there. But yeah, Rahmat Shah now comes to play a kind of an unnatural role. So a lot of shuffling has happened. Asmatullah Umar was promoted to come and bat at number three, which is the position that Rahmat Shah always comes and bats at. But he's played the domestic Shpagiza often. So... You can be expecting a few shots from Rahmat Shah. The platform is set. It's really important that they cash it out. There are a few indications, hints, if you will, from the surface that may be going up and down a touch. So, well, for Ireland to have any hope of winning this match, every run is going to count over the course of the, the 10 overs that follow this one. One's driven away, should be a couple to Shah to get off the mark. But you think about what could Ireland chase? I mean, won the toss, chosen to have a bowl first. You really would think that anything over 275, 280 is not going to be easy. So really for Ireland and for Paul Sterling, who may have to do the weight of the run scoring alongside his top order, order colleagues, these last 10 overs after this, critical to have any chance of winning the contest. Well, absolutely, uh, because if you see what the average score on this ground has been, it's been under 250. So anything above 250, 270, 275, 280 would certainly be a very competitive total here. I've been talking to the curation team they felt 250 260 would be a winning total I felt Paul Sterling was very uncertain at the toss as to what to do and, and Ireland's kind of default historical position well we'll just have a ball and then we'll work out can we get in the game by no means it was hugely either way and ended up winning the toss and choosing a ball end of the 40th 215 for three Floodlights into good effect here. This historic venue in the Emirate of Sharjah for the first game of the Seti Salat Cup. And as Paul Rifle indicates, the end of the second power play. We move into the third. That means that Paul Sterling now can have five fielders outside the 30 yard circle. And after a little hesitation, he think he will eventually use all five of them. The fine leg does go back. 
just reminding Craig Young, he can have a fifth fielder. Beautiful evening. Quite cool, I think the Irish players will have enjoyed the temperatures up in Abu Dhabi and similar here for March. I think it to be a little bit warmer, just a bit cooler than usual. Big, big period of the game now, these last 10. Can Afghanistan score up to 300 plus or could Ireland start to fight back, get themselves into this contest? Well, absolutely. Afghanistan only scored 37 in the first 10 overs. Then came the second bar play from over number 11 all the way to over number 40. And Afghanistan scored 178, but they lost three wickets. And it's because uh, the 178 is about the strike rate at the run rate of six runs in over, which, which really is given Afghanistan this platform. Now, Afghanistan has got some power hitters. We've seen Mohammad Nabi. He can hit big. Has he mistimed that? Has he? The field underneath it, and he takes that. Rahmat Shah couldn't middle it off the middle of the bat. Couldn't clear the fielders inside the circle. How often does it disguise you? The bait that you take, you might well be able to clear the circle. Not this time around. And a big smile on Craig Young's face. This is an excellent catch. Mark Adair has made this look so easy. Ramachar trying to play a game that's unnatural to him. He's never batted at number five in an ODI before. So his first day at the crease will be ended by that really well-judged Mark Adair take. Shah's gone for two. It's 2.16 for four. Impressive fight back by Ireland, led initially by Van Werkham, and now Young has brought the captain to the crease at number six, Hashmatullah Shahidi. Certainly have shuffled things around. What a start, a stylish start. Sways out of the way and gets the bat up at the last second to ramp it away for four. Well, that's a good shot. Gets underneath it and guides it all the way to the boundary. So the last 15 deliveries have yielded three wickets, courtesy to that over from Workham, seeing the back of Azmatullah Omar Zai, and then the well-set Rahmanullah Gurbaz, who made a century and got out. And then just inside the last power play, the wicket of Rahma Shah. So Afghanistan will need to utilize the opportunity they have here. The last 10 overs, Six wickets still in hand. They need to post a total above 280. This is how Rahmat Shah got out. No timing on that shot. Didn't read the timing on the ball right and it was really a brilliant catch. Mark Adair made it look easy, as you said, Andrew. That is not an easy catch to take, I tell you. He's probably known as, as Ireland's best catcher in the field. Big hands. And the judgment of that was exceptional. Really, really good. Made it look so easy. And the challenge is now for Afghanistan. Nabi certainly can play this role in the last 10 and, and score quickly. Shahidi not really known to do it. Ali Keel might be held back. They may go with Gilbert and Ney, but suspect in next. Shahidi's career strike rate around 67 has started to add some power to his game and occasionally got himself into the T20i team. But a lot for me now rests on that man's shoulders, Mohamed Nabi. Yeah, Gulbadi Naib is also one that can hit the ball. And I like the move for Hashmatullah Shahidi to bring him himself in instead of sending Gulbadi Naib probably keeping him for the last five overs. 
End of the over, eight from it. Afghanistan, 234, 223 for four. Big final nine overs here. Ireland will be desperate for anything under 275, 280. Afghanistan will want 300 plus. One of the things I love about ODI cricket, the ebb, the flow, the, the journey through the 50 overs of an innings. And certainly for both sides, it feels to me like because we're into 2024 now, still three years away from the next 50 over World Cup, that these are the, the initial steps towards that. You wouldn't suspect there's many players here who aren't thinking about being available for that, even Paul Sterling, Andrew Balberni, Mohamed Nabi maybe. will still be in the mix for that next Premier Tournament. That'll be down in South Africa, Namibia and Zimbabwe in 2027. Just a reminder, if you do want to enjoy the action on your, your smartphone devices, you can also get that up on the, the smart TVs too, of course, youtube.com forward slash Firebird Universe. And a big shout out to our crew. Been working incredibly hard. Firstly, up at the Tolerance Oval, now here at Charger. The superstars behind the scenes. Well, on the back of br uh, brilliant performance at the Cricket World Cup 2023, Afghanistan have qualified for the Champions Trophy that will be played in 2025. So before the World Cup, Afghanistan have got themselves to prepare for the Champions Trophy for the first time they'll go and play there. Yes, they didn't have a very promising 2024 year. They lost the series to Sri Lanka, 3-0. But they've really improved their game. Solid in the chase. We saw that in the Cricket World Cup 2023. Brilliant when they bat first, especially for their opening batters, Rahmanullah Gurbaz, Ibrahim Zadran. Having that tendency of converting 50s into 100s. And then promotion of Azmatullah Omar Zai at number five has really done the magic for Afghanistan. So yeah, you're absolutely right. It's important that you prepare for the bigger tournaments and you start preparing as early as you can. I think certainly yeah, that would be a great first step for Afghanistan, a first Champions Trophy to be held in 2025. Going to run a quick single here, they'll get home comfortably enough. You cannot take for granted though your status at ICC World Cups. We've seen Zimbabwe learn that in the T20 World Cup qualifier last year. Afghanistan will have an expectation to be there, no doubt, particularly with it being an, an enhanced 14 team tournament in, in 2027 four teams added but their route will depend upon whether or not they're in the the top eight of the rankings outside of south africa and zimbabwe are qualifying as hosts so 10 will get through the rankings the moment they're in that spot so every match including this series will contribute towards those rankings cutoff will likely be some point late in 2026 depth to world cricket now you can't really take any games against any sides ranked in the top 25 or 30 for granted so getting there is step one and then establishing a side like they so nearly did last year in india that nearly got all the way to a semi-final is the next step and i think there's enough talent in and around this group that they could surpass those expectations and certainly think of a super six maybe a semi-final in 2027 exciting times for a game for the game here in afghanistan it really is what a crop of players they have. Just be a single to close out. Good tight over from Graham Hume. 2 2 6 for four.
Afghanistan have got some work to do here because they have just fallen off a little bit. You can see the wickets have made a big difference, that Manhattan graph. They started off uh, steady, then they really climbed in from overs number 24 to 30. And then that uh, first wicket, that first satellite dish at over 31. Just slowed them up a little bit, but they've got some work to do now. One stage, they were looking uh, easily at around the uh, 310 mark. If they continue at this rate, they'll get to 270. If they step on it a bit and they go at uh, sevens, they'll get to 280. Let me just explain why it's so important for Afghanistan. They've won their last eight of 11 ODIs in UAE, but they have lost their last five. So they do need to turn things around, and it's a real opportunity here against uh, Ireland in these three one days. They went down in the test match. That would have hurt them. They were favourites for that. And just to finish that, at the 39th over, they were 207 for one and flying. Hello, Niall. Hazy, good evening. Such a good partnership up front. As a fielding unit, you always just feel it's not going to be as easy for the next couple of men coming in. So that's the one grasp of hope all the Ireland fielders and bowlers and wicketkeeper would have had at the back of their mind, as well as the top two played. That's too high. Probably going down leg side with the angle from Curtis Camfer. You always feel, as well as the two players played up front, that they played superbly well. On a surface like this, just rolling his fingers across the ball, you always feel hazy that it's, if you get one or two, get a fresh man at the crease, ideally two, and Ireland did that that you can just drag that right back somewhat. They're still in such a good position though, Afghanistan. They are, but I think Ireland will be delighted if they uh, nail them around about the 270 mark, 260 mark after the way they've started. That's going to help Afghanistan's cause. That's nicely played, streamed away for a boundary. Well, Captain Hashmatullah Shahidi loves pace on the ball and he loves hitting the ball behind square. Curtis Camfer gives him pace on. Previous ball, he bowled a cutter. Outfoxed Shahidi, that was pace on. The ball just skid on there. I just wonder, is there a little bit of dew setting in here in the evening? That ball certainly should get a couple. The ball that went for that boundary, Hazy. It definitely looked like it just skidded off the surface. I can tell you that uh, it has been getting a bit dewy at night. So that's uh, obviously going to uh, be a little bit of a player as we go into these, not just the 50 over games, but the T20s as well. And I would imagine that's going to be an issue later on. You've been just testing the surface in the evenings when you've been out and about sampling the culture. Exactly right. You've got to. Nine off the over, 235 for four. Look at those bowling numbers. Let's just uh, advance that conversation about the Jew. Of course, it's going to be uh, coming onto the bat a little bit more, and that's not the fact that the, the pitch is going to get a little bit greasy. It's the fact the ball gets a little bit damp. The balls, there's two balls used. They get a little bit damp when they go across the surface, and therefore they, the balls skid on off the pitch. They don't grip. So that's going to happen later on if there is enough Jew. And I think most of the time these days, the uh, the players are OK with a little bit of dew. I don't think that worries too many. However, there's one or two players who are going to be bowling later who uh, will not have had too much experience. Because Arthur, of course, the mystery spinner, he won't have had too much experience uh, with a, uh, a ball that's a little bit damp, particularly on debut, obviously, at 16 years of age. But just watching the wicketkeeper, Lorca, took, he just rolled the ball 40 yards 
to the middle field of Graham Hume, all along the ground. So there obviously is no due at the moment. Otherwise, the keeper would try to keep that ball up. So at the moment, it looks like it's still quite dry out there in the middle. It's going to run away for a leg by or two. Should be able to double up. They do. Safely home. A couple of leg buys. Mohamed Nabi. Legend of the game in Afghanistan. Terrific cricketer. This ball just nips back here. He's looking to set himself up for his beloved leg side. Loves hitting the ball over that deep mid wicket. Deep square leg region, Mohamed. Just look how he sets up. Plays a lot of cricket here. Mohamed Nabi lives 10 minutes down the road. So this is effectively a home ground for Mohamed Nabi. So he knows the surface. And when you saw that clip, bending down, getting himself low to try and launch the ball. Because of the lack of bounce here, Sharjah. Slow delivery, picked that uh, easily. Clubbed it on the leg side, just for one, though. There's an easy sign when there's dew around the place. The, the bowlers will have a, um, a cloth with them. A bit of towel. Just keep an eye on Mohamed Nabi here, Hazy. Look how he gets himself quite low in his technique and his stance. He's a tall man, Mohamed Nabi. But just because of the surface of Sharjah, because the ball skids lower, you need to make sure your knees are flexed and bent so you can actually get under the ball. Tall batters here sometimes have a little bit of difficulty. It's nicely worked. Good pace off the bat. Two more. Yeah, good job from the captain, Hashpatola, because he's not a natural six hitter. But he's moved on to 18 from 40 just by manipulating the bowler and fielders. We saw him carve away, back away and carve Curtis Camford the previous over. That time just getting across the stumps to mark it there. So just good use of his, well, just game awareness. Yeah, just one thing about it, though. They've, between them, they've faced, what have we got now? 27 deliveries. There's only been three fours. Yeah, they can run those ones and twos and turn it over, but boundaries is what really hurts at this stage. That's what climbs them towards that uh, 300 mark. That's what gets them that uh, eight and over, which gets them past the to the 290 mark. Yeah, agreed. But the big the big factor in the run chase, Hazy, is the lack of Rashid Khan, and that plays a massive part into Ireland's hands because you haven't got to face the legend that is Rashid Khan, but also. When Rashid Khan's in the team, it makes all his bowling partners that much more effective because you have to go after the Nabi, the Nur Ahmed, Omar Zayt. So just without Rashid Khan, it just gives Ireland a bit more of a boost, even if chasing 300. He's here. He might be here in the T20s. That'd be exciting if that happens. It'd be great to see him back on the park. He's working hard, striving for fitness. He's a very valuable player to the game, full stop. 243 for four. Just a, uh, a further discussion about Rashid Khan against Ireland. 55 wickets at an average of 17 and an economy rate of bang on four to the over. That's not bad, right? How many wickets? 55. 55 ODI wickets. Is that ODI no, cricket? Against Ireland in ODIs, yeah. OK, well, I reckon I'm in there about... Oh, well, that Raj might get... I reckon seven times I'm in there. Let me see what Rajni says, Rajni. No, he says 22 times. Lots of wickets, not many runs. N. O'Brien versus Rashid Khan. He gave me nightmares, did Rush. OK, it's not 22. On that also, Afghanistan's spin attack has been the most economical since 2022, and that's when Rashid Khan's been involved, and uh, Majib as well. They have gone since uh, 2022, they've gone at 4.7 runs and over. That's extraordinary. He used to walk out of bat against Afghanistan, and Mohammad Shazad was generally behind the stumps, and he's 
Well, quite a cheeky chap, Mohamed Shazad. And he would just tell Rashi Khan, here's wicked number X, because Niall's coming out to the bat. Of course, you weren't cheeky. Well, I wasn't in that situation because I knew <laughs> I knew exactly what was coming. Unfortunately, he was going to wrap me right on that l right shin in front of all three. <laughs> to come back for the second again. That should be out Yep, they do. Touch and turn. It's good work. It's a horrible feeling when you walk out to bat and you literally know you've got little or no chance of getting any runs today because Rashid Khan's up against you. And you're just hoping that maybe the openers and number three can see off the majority of his overs and have a bit of respite against Mohammed Nabi or maybe Zadran or Gulbadeen, something like that. But no, there was Rashid smiling from ear to ear, just thinking, happy days. I'm definitely getting one wicket today. Wearing away. Fast arm action, fast wrists. Concentrating on the various grips he had, rotations of the ball, various looks as it came down towards the batsman. I'm looking for, speaking of wrist spin, looking forward to seeing Nur Ahmed over the coming days and weeks. Left arm wrist spin, the, must be the most difficult art. Left arm wrist spin to put revs on the ball, but to also have the control, the discipline, the variation. The thing about him is he's so hard to pick. There's so little difference in his action and his release from his wrong and his standard delivery. That's the thing about him. You'll see, he's just so tough to pick. Yeah, I watched him at the Under-19 World Cup not so long ago, and he was very impressive. I think if you're an Afghanistan cricket fan, there's only one IPL team you're supporting this year, and that's the Gujarat Titans. You've got Rashid Khan, Noor Ahmed, Omar Zai, Three Afghanistanis in the one franchise at the IPL. Incredible. It's just tidy bowling, five so far off the over. If they can finish this, if Young can close this over down, it'll be very good for over number 45. Close to that 250 mark, Afghanistan. They're setting themselves up for a, a nice uh, little thrash in the last five overs. of the crease that time slower de delivery as well it's just the single it's tidy 249 for four goes on for at the bottom there 16 years of age just think what you were doing at 16 years of age now what were you doing at that age what time is it quarter to seven I'm not sure I can say <laughs> we're still a PG hour right now still at what PG what's PG hour when you see a movie is PG parental oh, guidance oh I see Short first up, cracked. Work to be done. It's nicely tracked. Two more. 250 comes up. Full blooded pull shot from Hasbatullah Shahidi. Banged into the surface. Let's keep an eye on Mark Adair's back of the hand slower ball. One of his favourite go to areas. First couple were slow. Last three have been good. Need a flourish here. They just need a really rapid 40 or 50 here at the back end of the innings. Change of angle over the wicket marker there. Better cramping Captain Hashmutullah. Yeah, Des' uh, first four overs were tidy. He set a nice little tone at the top, and that was the uh, the work that uh, the captain did. Everyone pretty much bowled four overs, and they were yanked out of the attack. 
And now the hard yards since then have uh, begun. The seamers have got to get stuck in. There's no swing, Hazy. Mark Adair is such a good power play bowler, but he needs something in the air. Not generally. We saw him seam the ball a little bit in Abu Dhabi in the test match, but generally a swing bowler. Today there was nothing in the air. Oh, that's hit beautifully. Is that gone for six? No. Just inside. What a wonderful shot that is from Nabi. Yeah, a real powerful blow here from Mohammed Nabi. I mentioned he likes going over mid wicket. He's that area there, that is a very difficult shot. A couple of players I've seen in the recent past play that shot really well. Nabi and Sikandaraza flat bats the ball over extra. Seven off half the over. There's a chance in this over to go big. Good look for uh, two more. I'm not sure they're going to get it now. Straight to the field, a nicely uh, charged from the boundary. Uh, oh. Oh, what a shot that is. Look at the base, wide base. Powerful man, Mohammed Navi. Always physically fit and strong. Big biceps. Just muscles that ball over extra. That's a very difficult shot, and he made it look extremely easy. Adair under a bit of pressure. two here coming back to the second this will be interesting if it's a good throw went to the wrong end end up being two off the last ball 11 from the over 260 for four Hasn't got out of hand at the moment, as far as Ireland's concerned. The last 30 balls, just 37 runs have been scored. But uh, the reason the score is good, and it's, a, and it's a perfect scenario, I would imagine, for Afghanistan, although obviously they would have thought at this stage there might be another 25 on from here. But they lost uh, Gabaz and uh, a couple of others just uh, soon after got to the 100 and The uh, 207 mark. But all the good work was done in that first stand. 150 first stand was outstanding stuff. Really good, very impressive. Well, you can just see how much more difficult it is for Hashmatullah Shahidi when he's trying to put pace and power on the ball. When he's tried to go down the ground, he's found it a lot more difficult to try and get the boundary when it's been short. He's been able to really climb into it. Mohammed Nabi, on the other hand, has got power. He's got big boy power, leg side. Ah! Oh, well again, Craig Young, Hazy. You, you were impressed with him, especially that second innings in Abu Dhabi. He's really backed up to only one wicket, mind you, but pace has been good, the aggression, the lines, the lengths. His first four overs were absolutely brilliant today. And it's uh, good to see the all the effort, the extra bounce he gets from time to time. Also, and, and what's going to happen for the next couple of overs is, and this is his last, obviously. But the bowlers are going to be relying heavily, I think, on some cutters to try and take the pace off the ball as best they can. Oh, that was straight back at him. It's the good old-fashioned bowler killer. That one, straight back past his uh, shins for four. And yeah, the boundary brings up. The 50 partnership. I mentioned how he's found a little bit more difficult, Hashmatullah Shahidi, when going down the ground this time. 
gets down the pitch. Have a look at the footwork by the captain. Down the pitch and stays leg side. And almost baseball bats it back past Craig Young. Good, 50 from 37. Nudging their way up the near 300. That's clever. Very clever indeed. Backing away, playing it nice and late. And rewarded. Poor bowling for me, Hazy. You must know, Craig Young, that Hashmatullah Shahidi wants the ball back of a length, or even better, short of a length, because he wants to play cross bat shots. He wants it everything from deep point around to deep mid wicket. So you're giving him the chance. It's a great shot. Execution is spot on. But to me, the plan there is. Well, it's off the mark. Two balls left in this over, and he's gone for 10 already. Pace on again. Well, before that was the attempted slower bouncer, but it was uh, perhaps a little bit more effort than he perhaps anticipated. He got the cutter going rather than the slower bouncer. But it was very nicely played. They should be able to get very close to 300 here. They should be able to. This will be a brilliant recovery after losing those uh, three wickets for the addition of just nine runs. That's well directed. Unusual to see a batsman duck at this stage. 270 for four. Three of his left. Leg side, first up, beautifully picked up. That's a great start of the over. Half a dozen, first up. And 49 runs off the last 30 balls, and Afghanistan with the luxury of having six wickets in hand and two bat two batters set of the crease. It's leg side, it's a freebie, really. It's in one of the shorter little pockets of the stadium. Not a huge ground charger, but that's one of the smaller areas down towards that long leg region. Nicely picked up from Mohammed Nabi. Yeah, no one's hit more sixes uh, for Afghanistan in ODIs than Mohammed Nabi. 104 with that one. Oh, he's found another one. Well done, sir. Oh, no, Paul Rifle's found one as well. No, no, he's happy now. Paul says, I've worked it out. He's saying, did you lose one at some stage? Oh, he's dropped it. Oh, no, he's got one in his little clip behind. Oh, no, he hasn't. He's missing one in the clip. One's off. Well, Mark there trying to cramp, trying to jam in a leg stump. Yorker to Muhammad Nabi. Nabi all over him. Read him like a nursery rhyme there, Mark Adair. Wide Yorker was the ball there because Nabi couldn't have had the levers to get back and reach. Expensive today, Mark Adair, 68 from his 9.1. He'll now be hoping that the ball is eventually got, whichever one it was, is uh, quite soft. But such a better option. It's what Mark Adair should have done, the ball he went for six, because Mohammed Nabi did exactly the same thing. Two balls in a row. He went leg side, hoping Mark Adair would follow. Adair did follow the first time, pumped him for six. Slow ball, dragged it. Six runs. Six runs it is. Wanted to throw it up, but just a little bit too late. Took the catch, was thinking about trying to get rid of it, but just couldn't. Well, that's a big mistake. Whatever about not being able to take the catch effectively, one thing he 
George Docker should have done in this day and age. Slow ball, toe of the bat. Naby thinks he's out. He thinks my night's done. Dockrell should have got rid of that ball. You see it every game, pretty much every white ball game around the world now, you see that opportunity. Excellent bowling off the face of the bat. I think that's out. I think that's out. I think it's come straight off the face of the bat into Lorca Tucker's gloves. Mark Adair, who's been pumped for two sixes, cannot believe it. Are you positive it's a bump ball? He's asked the umpire. Yeah, he's got the view from the umpire. He didn't hit the ball, but I'm with you. The, the bat hit the ground, and the umpires thought that that was the case, but I'm pretty sure there's a bit of a deviation as it uh, goes off the, the blade. Straight off the face of the bat. Slow ball again, that's uh, hit nice and straight, and that's gone for four. That's going to add insult to injury. It's a very good shot. It's the third bounding there over the first two with two sixes. He can't believe his uh, bad luck, Adair, but it was definitely a nick and caught behind. But the bat did hit the ground at the same time. But what about Mohamed Nabi's power, Hazy? Because he's towed two balls in this over. One's gone all the way for six, and he's towed that one. Gone down the ground for four. 16 off the over, last ball of it. He's clipped that away, he's hit it nicely. It's only going to be one, I think. Yep, just the one. Big over, 17 from it. Should have picked up a wicket, didn't. 287 for four. Yeah, that's a big over, that one. 18 runs from that last over. And this partnership is now substantial. 71 of 46. That is really good work from these two. Asmatullah and uh, Anabi, he's done most of the work. 40 off 26. Nabi, outstanding. A strike rate of 154 at this stage. Hume, with the hard yards. Two overs to go. Set that straight up in there. Should be caught and bowled by Hume. Should be taken quite comfortably. It is in the end. He was under it for some time. Well, that reaction says it all. Leave it to the keeper. Big fast bowler and his follow through. It's a low full toss. Graham Hume, I'm telling you what, next time just leave it to Lorcan Tucker. He's got two gloves for a reason. It's a low full toss from Hammond Nabi will be gutted. He's trying to be quite delicate. He's trying to be cute. If he had his time again, Mohammed Nabi, I reckon he's going to pump that one out of the ground. Good catch. Good reward for Graham Hume. Nice from Nabi. Going for 40. Afghanistan 287 for five. That's the end of a uh, brilliant partnership. 71 off 47 deliveries. Yeah. Got it in now. In the middle. Average of 20, strike rate of uh, 75 in one day is experienced. Best of 82 not out, you can certainly bat. It's 
good catch in the end. Graham Hume does well. Just about the hands at the last minute just came apart. The ball did its best just to sneak through, but Graham Hume has been exceptional. 8.2 overs, one for 30. He's not going to get the chance to bowl 10. Outstanding numbers when the ball has generally been flayed to all parts. Can they get the 300? Swing and a miss. Brilliant ball, just in the context of the game, Hazy. One for 30 from his 8.3. When the ball hasn't seemed, it hasn't swung, there's no pace on the pitch for a good bumper. Medium pacer, all due respect, honest, hard-working medium pacer, done a great job. Might be exactly the sort of ball that's needed on this sort of surface. No pace in it whatsoever. Yeah, good with the name, the man just come to the crease, ball similar. Stump to stump, medium pace, couple of change-ups. Hume has been brilliant. That's nicely stopped, and that's a dot ball in the end. So still there's just one run off this over. It's pitching outside legs, so no chance for the LB, but Lorcan Tucker, it's all about the wicketkeeper here, that's brilliant. Does really well there, that could easily just skip past the keeper. Trickle away for four leg buys, so good work by Ireland's Gloveman. Two balls left in, over number 49. What can Hume do to keep this nice and quiet? That's cracked away. And it's going to go for four. Thought about going for the catch, I think that was the issue. It was probably the right call, actually, to try and catch it. Just couldn't quite get there. Andrew Balberni in the deep. It's the cutter into the surface, asking Ashmatullah Shahidi to do all the power. Yeah, I reckon you're right. I think the chance was there to go for it. If he had just made that ground a little bit sooner and made a bit more of a direct beeline for the ball, it would have been a difficult catch for Balberni, but it was certainly catchable. Hard down the ground. There's no one down there. That's uh, also gone. Six runs. So 10 off the last two balls. 298 for five. So 298 for five it is, one over remaining. Afghanistan have lost only three matches defending a target of 290 or more. They've won nine. So this is a very good total. Have a look at the uh, six off the last ball. It's beautifully played. It was in the slot. Poor option, Hazy. Poor option to bowl that ball. Well, Mark Adair is coming back to bowl another over. You're not allowed to bowl 11. No, you're not. Paul Sterling. Still, I can't count. Well, we referenced Graham Hume was only going to get the chance to bowl nine overs, which we were surprised with. Probably that's why. Well, what's he going to do now? Because that's upset uh, Sterling's plans. Happy Curtis Camfer, the brisk seamer. That's a. Well, it's a bit of a blow, that really. Who has just got the shock of his life. He was just coasting out there on the boundary line, thinking about batting. Yeah, thinking about batting number three as well, most likely. Bowled three overs early in the day, wasn't overly effective, nor for 21. Now he's going to bowl the, the final of 50th and 298 for five. And Hashmatullah and Gulbuddin just said, happy days. He's probably put no thought whatsoever as to what he should be bowling at this stage up until about a minute ago then suddenly it's flat out thoughts about what i got to do how can i shut down this over as best i can it's not a bad start actually well that ball just died in the surface you've got protection leg side deep backward square deep mid wicket on a long on so it's going to be plenty of balls into the surface Gulbuddin will fancy himself. He's a strong man, Gulbuddin, a former bodybuilder, of course. 
So he'll take on the sweepers. Good luck yourself. Two men back. Oh, that's superb stuff. Absolutely superb. It's actually trimmed down Gorba the I spoke to him before the game. He's taken five kgs off himself. Just to make himself a little bit leaner. This is a great Yorker. Curtis Camfer. First excellent slow ball. Then it's a pin perfect toe crusher. Is that also a bit like yourself? No, I said to Gulbin, you've you've lost four or five kgs. <laughs> you've you've given it to me. <laughs> Retirement's been good to me. <laughs> Pick that up, it's in the slots. Six runs. Can't miss out on those sort of gifts. Yeah, he doesn't worry about sweepers, Gulbadeen. 300 comes up in beautiful style. And a little back of the hand, slow ball. It was telegraphed, it was in the slot. It just said, hit me. As that ball came down, it said, hit me. And Gulbadeen said, OK, I will. Well, they got a chance to uh, really step on it here for the last three balls. They've done brilliantly in Afghanistan to get past the 300 mark after a little bit of a hiccup. The start was outstanding, 150 opening partnership. Then there was a hiccup, but they've recovered superbly. That partnership of 71 of 47 for the last wicket, I thought, was absolutely brilliant. And now there's seven off uh, four balls of the last over, two to come. Yeah, the be beautiful thing for Afghanistan, Hazy, is they've had a chance to look at the surface. So the captain and the coaches, Jonathan Trott, be speaking to all the batters, right? What worked well when Ireland bowled well to you? What was difficult to hit? And then they'll translate that message to the bowling group. Stay away from this because that's actually quite nice to face, but this is difficult. So they can almost 305 for five with that information shared in the dress room and used effectively. It's almost getting like an extra 20 or 25 runs. Hasmatul is on 46 off 31, so his performance has uh, been a bit of a backseat performance, but it's been superb as well. Stroke rate of 148, five fours and a six, two balls to go. And he picks that up nicely. That's nicely done. Goes for four, 50 up as well, off just 32 balls, nicely played. Fastest half century of the captain's career. 20th 50 in the ODI arena. Thousand runs as captain. Excellent from Hashmatullah Shahidi. This is a really clever shot. Slow ball from Camphor. He knows 45 is inside the ring. Just uses the pace and manipulates. Excellent from the south pole. Last ball. Looking to run, they do. Not gathered cleanly in there. Scamper through for one. Really good stuff. 310 they get, 12 off that last over. They lose only five wickets. Afghanistan have got themselves a really good total in this first ODI. They'll be pleased with that. At one stage, they might have got the 320 mark, but uh, they'll be delighted with 310. Yeah, it's the second highest total for Afghanistan in the ODI versus Ireland. So that's a really, really good job from all the men in blue. For Paul Sterling in Ireland, they won the toss. Wanted the ball first, Paul Sterling said, yeah, we're happy to chase, Afghanistan were chuffed. So they said, yeah, we want a bat. And bat they did, and bat they did well. Set up exceptionally well, you feel, with the two opening batters. Up front, Gerbaz and Ibrahim Zadran, and then there was some nice contributions throughout Ireland. Well, that's a massive chase, 311 off their 50 overs at over 6.22 or no, that's going to be a stiff chase. Yeah, I think that Paul Sterling is going to be so, so important in this. He's got a very good record against uh, Afghanistan, so he will be key and will have to do uh, the same again for the skipper. Really good work from Afghanistan. They've posted 310. That is uh, outstanding off 50 overs, going at 6.2. Runs the over, and they stepped on it nicely with the last... Uh, couple of partnerships which was uh, extremely impressive and Navi getting 40 off 27 also gave them a nice little boost towards the end right let's uh, go downstairs now and join Ahmed Fadai <laughs> 121 runs six sixes and eight fours now you equal the record for the most hundreds for the Afghanistan batter alongside 
Shahzad Muhammadi, but she took only 39 innings. Please walk us through, how was this 100? Uh, Bismillah rahman rahim first of all, thanks from Dial. Uh, I think uh, it was great uh, after a few innings that I got a uh, 100. Uh, I think the pitch is not easy, but yeah, feel excited with the individual score and team score as well. You uncharacteristically started slow. You took 23 deliveries for seven runs only, and after that you accelerated. So what was it like? A bit of a different Rahmanullah Gurbaz? Uh, to be honest, um, coach always gave me the same plan. Just he said, if you end, uh, the other team will be in, under pressure. Uh, I was just keep it in mind this thing. I know, you know, I was not uh, keep that double pressure on my mind. I was just thinking that I have to be in uh, till end. But uh, yeah, I, I can say that now I also didn't finish the game, but still I'm happy from individual score. Yeah, I think it was nice. Are you happy with the total on the board? Do you think this will be enough for the Afghanistan bowlers to come and defend? Uh, yes, I think the score is nice and the wicket because we were expect 160, 260 and 270 was good score in this wicket. But yeah, the way that Nabi and Ashmat finished the game, that was brilliant. I think, uh, yeah, if you look at our bowling side, uh, I think the score is nice. Well, brilliant batting. Thank you very much. Uh, Rahmanullah Gurbaz, a brilliant 100 today. Thank you. Thanks. Certainly was outstanding century. 100 uh, opening stand, the fifth 100 opening stand was brilliant between him and uh, Ibrahim, so outstanding work. 1 2 1 for Gabaz, Ibrahim 60. Nabaz uh, was, uh, Gabaz, sorry, was outstanding with that uh, 100 of 121 of 117 balls. And Nabi was really impressive with his 50 off 27. Ashmatullah 50 off 33. So uh, good stuff all round. Not much to work with if you're a bowler here at Sharjah. Pretty flat pitch. Mark Adair, expensive. 79 from his 10. I thought Graham Hume was exceptional. Just nine overs, one for 40. Pick of the bowlers, though. Theo Van Workham, 10 overs, left arm finger spin, three for 55. Right, let's have a look at some of the highlights from the uh, first uh, innings in Sunshine. These boundaries are coming thick and fast. That was the drop catch when Gabaz is on seven. Should have been absolutely swallowed that, but it wasn't went for four as well. That wasn't uh, very short, but picked up quickly from Gabaz. And he's such a strong player. Likes to deal in sixes in the white ball game. I've seen him play a lot around the world, and he's a very, very fine striker. He's got a guy at the other end as well who can play nice. Abraham was uh, terrific with the work that he did. Gabaz, really nice, 108 balls for his century. It was magnificent work. And they just kept going and going. Ibrahim was bowled by Van Bokum for 60 off 93. So 150 when the first wicket went down. And then Gabaz in particular decided to step on the gas. And there's the big celebration with that 100. Played really nicely. Yeah, marvellous innings. Such a talent. He's got power, he's short in stature, but he's powerful. Good strike of the ball. Omazai was promoted up the order, which was nice to see. And then Theo Van Workham, who bowled superbly well, took some huge wickets, cleaned up. Ramanullah Gurbaz. This was an excellent bit of work in the deep. Mark Adair trotting back over his right hand shoulder, takes a good catch. Captain Hashmatullah Shahidi came in at the back end innings with Mohammed Nabi. Former captain and current captain. Totally out, Fox. This over a couple of times. George Dockwood made a bit of a mess of that. Graham Hume. Low full toss, catching off his own bowling. Out of the way. It's all about me. My ball, my game. Shahidi. Lovely, lovely poise down the ground. And then a little bit of delicacy to bring up his 20th half century in the ODI arena. Seeing that Gabaz said that they were talking about 260 initially, and at one stage it might have been 330, then it went like maybe 280, then it ended up 310, and that is Ireland's target. 311, 50 overs they've got, 6.22 runs per over. You can rejoin us in about 25 minutes' time.
Welcome back. We're at the halfway mark of the first of three one known internationals between Afghanistan and Ireland. Coming to you live from the Shizu Cricket Stadium. We'll go any further. Two shots of Afghanistan. That's pleasing to the eye, and so is this batting card off of Afghanistan because they have played absolutely superbly. Look at that, a 310 for five it was. Gabaz is outstanding. 121 off 117. Opening stand of 150 between here and Ibrahim. We got 60 off 93. Very handy, 40 off 27 from Navi, and also uh, skipper Asmatala, 50 off 33. So really good work. But let's have a look at the work that uh, Gabaz did. He played some wonderful shots. He's someone who uh, scores boundaries. That's what he does in the white ball game. It took him. Uh, he, they played nice and sensibly right at the top, actually. Then suddenly he started to unleash. That was a magnificent shot. Wasn't that short? He picked it up brilliantly. Did it for six, and then he was in full flow. Really played uh, superbly. It was his uh, sixth hundred in one the internationals. Amazing stuff. Of 108 balls that century. And ended up uh, getting a really, really big total of 121 of 117. So really good stuff. Confirmation of that stand of 150 of 189. So that was instrumental to getting past the 300 mark. Magnificent work. His partner, of course, Abraham, who really played nicely as well. It was Gabaz that took uh, center stage with uh, the sixes that he was scoring. But Abraham also is a little bit more sedate. But hit the ball crisply and uh, very valuably as far as Afghanistan were concerned because he had to go as well to make sure they uh, pushed on. Now, this was the fifth time that they got a 100 opening stand and they went bigger than that. They've been so consistent for Afghanistan over the years. He got 50, ended up getting 60 off 93. And his performance was uh, superb. Tino's alongside me. Tino, just take us through the bowling card. Thanks, Hazy. That was tough going for the Irish bowlers. Didn't get wickets all the way through that first half of the innings. And you can see that it was the slower bowler. And we expected there to be a little bit of assistance for the spinners. Van Werkum with three for 55 and his 10. And the rest of them all pretty expensive. So it's a big target they're chasing down. And this is only three one day internationals. Then we go to three T20s, remember. And that's what they need. 311 to win Ireland. It's a big ask. They need to go at 6.22 runs per over. Afghanistan, by the way, have only lost three matches defending a target of 290 or more. They've gone on to win nine as well. So uh, the ball is very much in their court at the moment. After good buzz, it's superb onslaught. It's going to be uh, Balburni, who's going to be starting. 33 years of age, very experienced, past 3,000 runs. Average not far shy of the mid-30s, so he is instrumental, as he was in the Test Series. And this guy has been uh, remarkable throughout his entire career in the white ball game. 153 innings, 5,500 runs, an average of 38, at a strike rate of 88. Magnificent. And he's up against Faruqi, who has the ability, just 23 years of age, has the ability to swing the ball both ways late. Best of 4 for 34. He didn't bowl particularly well against Sri Lanka, but he'll be a different proposition here in Sharjah. Oh, that's not a bad delivery first up. Found the inside quarter of that bat, I think. No. 
Balburni just looked a little bit surprised, I think, when that ball just dipped into him. And you mentioned it. You're quite right, that he gets the ball to shape either way late. Now, Balburni, we know, plays quite upright. We we'll have to make sure with what we've seen in the surface this afternoon, definitely ball keeping a little bit low at times and skidding on. He's got to make sure he's on the ball, getting those feet moving early. Faruqi picked up one wicket for 186 against Sri Lanka in those one days when it's 7.75 runs per over. But I've seen him uh, perform brilliantly when he started at the top of an innings. Right. Bang on target first up and he is swinging the ball in. But Barberni will be waiting for that one that goes the other way. That's two in. When's that one going to hold its line and go across him? He's a man who's full of confidence. He's a lovely half century and led the side to their first ever Test match victory. That was at Tolerance Oval, of course, last week. Played a really nice innings. Wickets were falling all around him, but he was steadfast. All into a slip and also a gully. He's the one that just holds his line. Doesn't swing away. That one just holds his line. Buzzing the field straight away, Afghanistan. They know how important it is to get a good start in this chase. Yeah, they did themselves a huge favour. They got runs on the board and they made sure that they carried on through tough periods in the innings. You won't see that when you look at the scorecard and you see 310 and you see 100 for Gurbaz, half century for Zadran, and then the onslaught at the end, the captain Hashmat as well as Nabi. Clever from Faruqi. That one looked like it probably just held on the surface a bit longer than Balburni expected, but he's very skillful, Faruqi. Accurate and he gets onto you just a bit sooner than you think. Very slippery. It's a fine start to the over. Four dot balls initially, setting a terrific tone, which is so important. Bit of a conversation between Ashmatullah and the on umpire. I wonder what that was about. Whatever it was, they seem to have agreed. The dot ball, good work from Faruqi. When you need to go at uh, nearly six and a half to the over, which is what Ireland need to do. You can't afford too many slow overs right at the start because then uh, you've got to play catch up a little bit. It's okay when you've got some good strikers. If Paul Sterling gets going, he's a wonderful striker of the ball. In particular, it'll be okay. His record against uh, Afghanistan, his record in the one-day game, Sterling, is uh, quite remarkable. Last ball, the first over. And they're away, Ireland. It's a nice punch in front of Square through the covers, and they come back for two. First over's done, two for none. for at three, Tector, who's been uh, very consistent in uh, all formats, actually, for Ireland. At number four, Tomazai. 23 years of age, again, another young player. Fast medium. Let's look at the work that he's done in the 26 uh, matches at this stage. Not a big wicket taker. Starting with a couple of slips. Out 
averages 49, does Paul Sterling against Afghanistan. It's leg side first up, and he's got that uh, pass the keeper. It's going to run away smartly, it is going to be tagged to the result. Yeah, straight and just went on with the arm, that first delivery from Omar Zai. He's got to be careful to stay away from there. He's just got a very straight mid-wicket and pretty straight mid-on as well as protection. Otherwise, all the way around from that straight mid-wicket, who's almost in a catching position, to find leg as acres of space on that leg side. change in the field two slips that were in place have gone out the one who remains goes to a one and a half slip and then a close in catcher on the offside I like that didn't take long for that change no pace in the surface nice position of that seam going to swing the ball away which it did just a fraction have to go far. Also, with the man going that uh, short cover from the slip, Corden keeper and slip have come up a yard too, which is sensible. Oh, it's a lovely punch in front of square. Nicely worked by Sterling. He's going to come back for the second. Yeah, just looking at the way he played it, I wonder if that probably just kept a bit lower than he thought. What he did well was just open the face at the last instance. There. A conscious effort to make sure that he gets it in the gap. I see he's got those youth pads on again, Paul Sterling. Very small pads. Pass the inside edge, nicely ball, good channel. I think he was expecting the ball just to shape away a little bit more. It looked like it was going to, and it just went straight on. And that's why it's gone past that inside edge. It's a very tidy over. Six for none. One thing that Afghanistan need to realize is they haven't got the normal spin wizards in the middle. So they've got to make sure that they're ahead of the game when the spinners get involved. More emphasis on these opening bowlers and that is a magnificent delivery. Change to Faruqi's field as well now to Andy Balburni. Catching fielder on the offside and a slip as well. I'm just wondering, we've seen him bring the ball back a lot into Andy Balburni. We saw the first ball played into the onside, but aerial. I wonder if he should just get that catching fielder onto that onside. Because if he gets that line slightly wrong, then he's got the extra protection of possibly a straight to square leg as well. Holding its line. 
the other thing about him is that uh, his line will be consistently starting outside that off stump so he'll be looking to drive as best he can Balburni on the offside so if he does have that man on the leg side in a catching position and protect him a little bit or extra protection on that leg side and leaves a bit of a gap at extra cover that short man catching and cover it is going to open that gap for him and therefore he might swing it back and castle him yeah so much that the captain and the bowler in the middle have to think about with the assistance of a lot of the time the wicket keeper as well these days because Apart from us, he's probably got the next best view of what's going on out in the middle. The 200th one international for Ireland. They'll want to make this a, a good return. They've got uh, their work cut out, chasing down 311 to win. Means they need to be positive at the start, positive in the power play. Only two allowed outside in the power play. Outside the circle, that is. Around the wicket. And that goes past the outside edge this time. Now, I like the change in approach, and I like it early as well. Just gives the batsman something extra to have to think about. Something extra to deal with, and straight away he's played a false stroke outside that off stump. Just look how that ball's gone through to the keeper. Almost on the bounce, Hazy, and... It's only the third over of this evening innings. Wonder how much more difficult it's going to get for the Irish batsman in terms of the ball coming onto the bat with nice pace and bounce. Again, that time it swung away. That's nicely bowled. Again, keeping low, but swinging away this time. That's the first one I think we've seen swing away, which is probably why Farouk has decided to go around. A couple of the bowlers, Faruqi being one, has got that towel stuck in the back. So they're anticipating some dew, which will make it easier for the batting side, as the ball will just skid on. It won't obviously move through the air. When it gets a little bit down, there's two balls out there, one at each end. It's top bowling. That's a maiden. Brilliantly bowled by Faruqi. Six for none. the two opening batsmen are going to be key particularly Paul Sterling with the record he's got against Afghanistan but number four Tekta since 2022 22 innings certainly gets out of the way for just one 22 innings Tekta with an average of 58 including four hundreds that's good work since 2022 for him Harry Tekta's matured very quickly understands his game and very seldom moves away from how he plays and that's why he's become so successful takes his time when he gets out in the middle gauges how the surface is playing sets himself up the nice foundation and looks to accelerate from there. As Nish has come up with some blinding stats already in this one-day game. Another one for us. Last time Ireland chased down 300 target. Both Baboony and Sterling made hundreds against England and Southampton in 2020. It's a lovely drive. Beautifully punched through extra cover. It's going to be tracked down. Bit of tag teamwork. Yeah, this is a good shot from Bal from Paul Sterling. 
and even with that man at extra cover manages to find the gap between them and the cover on the offside ring but again just the opening of the face the point of contact so it finds that gap Kurbaz is quick make sure they just get two oh it's gone past the outside edge no it's nicked it and up goes that finger sterling's not going anywhere little shake of the head from sterling he doesn't think he necked that he's not happy but afghanistan are well if it's unfortunate if he didn't but what a delivery just angled in and left paul sterling his reaction the shake of the head lets you know that he believes he got nowhere near the ball in afghanistan appeal and afghanistan celebrate oh it's very close it's very close very difficult to tell though if he did get the outside edge no drs of course but he has to go the captain for five it's ten for one Two ball shy, four overs, first wicket down. Big wicket for Afghanistan, Paul Sterling. Curtis Kampfer. It's nicely cracked. First up from Kampfer, no run. Just 24 years of age. 28 innings in his career. Best of 120. half centuries to go with that hundred Curtis Kampfer has been elevated up the order in one day international cricket of late <laughs> 10 for one Tector Tucker as well. He's going to be also key in this chase because it is a big one. Still need just uh, 301 at this stage. Faruqi again on the inside edge. You're going to look to come back for the sec, and there won't be a second there though. They're buzzing. Afghanistan buzzing at the moment. Yeah, and this is the reason why the dismissal of Paul Sterling. It's a beauty of a delivery. Not so sure that he did get the outside edge, but they won't mind Afghanistan. They've got the early breakthrough that they were looking for. This man has a wonderful record against Afghanistan. Yeah, I didn't uh, hear anything in, in my uh, ears at all. I think it's important to be able to bowl left arm over and be able to come left arm round with the new ball later on in the innings like Faruqi can do. I think what's outstanding about when he does it is the control that he still possesses. Sometimes it takes bowlers a bit of time to be able to get into the correct radar, especially with the newer ball when they change over early. Quick single. Oh, he's hit the stumps. Ramat Shah, but I think Curtis Camphor is home. Yeah, I think they're going to have a look, though. 
just to be sure. Better to be safe than sorry. Just to make sure that uh, bat is grounded. He gives a thumbs up to his partner, so Kampfer uh, thinks he's OK. There's not too much enthusiasm from Afghanistan at the moment. Last thing I don't want to do is lose another wicket at this stage. I don't think they will. Safe by some distance. As expected. He's got a real skip in his step at the moment. Faruqi is bowling absolutely brilliantly. That's the single completed. Ramachar got the direct hit, but Curtis Kampfer judged the single well enough. Out of the blocks early. Paul Sterling gone. A lot will rest on this man's shoulder. Andy Baldoni. Looking for the big drive. They're getting just a little bit edgy at the moment, Ireland. They don't have to. Still got plenty of time. He's a bit shocked with that finger going up, Paul Sterling. Again, I didn't hear a noise. Just two off that over, 12 foot one. What a start by Afghanistan with the ball. They've been absolutely brilliant with the first five overs, just conceding 12 runs and picking up the big wicket of Paul Sterling. There's some swing. Yeah, there's definitely been a bit more swing this evening, I think, with the lights on than there was this afternoon. I think what's not there is the carry that was there this afternoon. Here's another delivery, look at that. Going through below knee high to the wicket keeper. Just got to try and get some sort of. Oh, there's a uh, unforced error. Oh, there's another unforced error, but uh, both of them not penalised. Just got to make sure they get uh, just a little bit of a partnership going. These two guys. Ten balls, just two runs, a partnership. Well, Bernie, 17 balls for his four. He's at the non strikers in at the moment. Camphor, half a dozen balls for just one. They don't have to panic about the run rate at the moment. They've just got to make sure they build something. This one goes the other way. Good pace on it as well. Curtis Kempfer naturally scores at a good rate. Natural stroke player. So he'll know that he just needs to gauge how the wicket's playing. Spend a bit of time out in the middle. The runs will come for him. He's checking how many balls are left in the over. Here's one short. There's three. Reminds me of the story of Merrick Pringle bowling in a test match against India at the Wanderers. 
He uh, walked past the body. He was bowling, of course. He walked past uh, umpire Cyril Mitchley. Remember umpire Cyril Mitchley? As he walked past, he said to Cyril, how many? And Cyril said, three. He kept walking. He nodded and he kept walking. He came back and he said, is that three gone or three left? <laughs> The only good thing about that question was at least he knew it was either three gone or three left. <laughs> That's cracked. That's a nice shot. That's right out of the screws. That'll help him. That's his first boundary. Yeah, the shot oozes confidence. He's kept his eye on it. Just a little press forward and he's seen that that length at that pace he can put away and he did so first boundary of the innings for Ireland it's a very very good delivery from Amazai 16 for one All quiet on the Sharjah front at the moment. 16 runs only in the first six overs. Rate required has gone to 6.7 at the moment. Afghanistan very much on top at this stage. Faruqi, three overs, none for four. Starts his fourth. Bowled him. That is a beauty. That has just come back enough and hit that off stump quite hard. It's been a struggle this innings for Andy Balburni, unfortunately. And it's been a struggle mainly because of Fazalak Faruqi. Hasn't been comfortable to him all through this evening. And eventually, he's got one to go past the bat and crash into the stumps. Sixteen for one becomes sixteen for two. Andy Balburni goes for four. Took 207 runs for Ireland to pick up their second wicket. 16 runs for Afghanistan to do their second. It means that Tech is at the crease now. And that's the best result they could have. Sterling back in the hut, or Bernie back in the hut, and Tech there nice and early. Average is outstanding at uh, 49, rounding that up. Strike rate is very healthy at 84. 400s, 1150s. It's a very solid career. He's a fine player, Harry Tector. He has to play well. Let's have a look how much this ball comes back. That's come back a bit, hasn't it? Just very hesitant at the crease. Foot's gone nowhere. Play down the wrong line as well. Faruqi celebrates. That last replay we saw, it almost looked like just swung behind his bat. Unbelievable delivery. Good stuff from Faruqi. One for five he's got. And there's a boundary. It's nicely played by Tacta. He's off the mark with four. Now that fine leg fielder 
Brighton has definitely got to go square up. You've got a left arm bowler swinging the ball back into a right hander. The ball's not going to go that fine. He's got to go squarer, but how nicely has this been played by Harry Tector? Using the pace of the ball. And finding its way to the boundary. Pretty poor fielding that from Paul Rifle. This is what he'll do. Harry Tector early on in his innings. Very happy to leave the ball outside the off stump. Takes his time to get used to the conditions and see how the ball is coming off the surface. Is there a bit of swing? Is there a bit of movement off the track? Pass the outside edge, that's brilliant again, Faruqi. He's been far more effective, interesting enough, since he's uh, gone around the wicket. Now, one of the reasons these left armers are so effective, there's a couple of reasons. One, when they're over the wicket, and they're not swinging the ball, they can just shut down the one side and ball wide to right-handers. So they have to play on the offside. When the ball's swinging around, they are very difficult and often swing the ball nice and late. Perhaps the main reason left armers are so effective is because when you're a young player growing up all through your career, as you get closer and closer and play more first-class cricket, it's almost like muscle memory. You're used to facing right-arm bowlers. So left armers are all just a little bit different, unless you're used to facing a lot of them. Not too many players are. And that's why so many teams these days always want left-arm quicks, particularly in T20 cricket. Big gems to have in your side. Left arm seamers. More so one like this, who's very versatile in how he bowls. Able to bowl over the wicket, able to bowl round the wicket. Swing the ball in, swing the ball away. We haven't seen his variations. He's got those two. Seven gone. 22 for two. Terrific start by Afghanistan. These two bowlers have been absolutely superb. Found a little bit of movement as well in the twilight hour. Omazai continuing. Niall O'Brien's alongside me. Good evening, now. Evening, Brian. Difficult for Ireland. All the twos, 22 for two, but... They've got plenty to chase. Afghanistan have it moving now. Hardly an appeal from the bowler. Paul Rifle said, yeah, Feather and Balberni. Not getting into the ball, not getting into the shot. Not bending that front knee and castled by a beauty. Just keep an eye, Brian, how Harry Tector moves. Moving into the ball. Are moving back in his crease. Now, Paul Sterling was convinced he didn't nick that. Ikram Ali Kiel was certain this is a really good ball. I just felt watching Andrew Balberni, the first couple of overs from Fazal Hak Faruqi over the wicket, Balberni looking to hit through extra cover. Fazal Hak came around the wicket, Balberni was still trying to hit the ball through extra cover angles. Tector, that's brilliant. That is such a good shot. Harry Tector's six foot plus, Andrew Balberni's six foot plus. Just have a look at how Harry Tector gets into the ball. 
It's not a huge stride. It doesn't have to be a huge stride, but it's the commitment to smother. That's beautiful. It's a lovely shot from Tector. We really have seen him grow up before our eyes over the last couple of years. The World Cup Super League did him a power of good, and that really is a terrific stroke off his pads. Yeah, second boundary, and it's a similar shot. Carbon copy, leg side flick, and again, I'll just mention the balance. It's a poor ball, most batters, even yourself, Brian, will put that away most days of the week, but it's with the ease that Harry Tector does because the balance is so good. Just remember those couple of shots we've seen from Tector. Let's have a look, Andrew Balberni. Look how tall Balberni is. He's had a little foot move. You don't have to have a big stride. I'm not saying you have to get a massive stride into the ball but you must commit to the ball you must bend that front leg especially as i mentioned the first thing is brian in charger the ball doesn't bounce a great deal you must bend that leg and get into the shot can't stand tall and hit it's not the whacker it's the end of the over four runs from it island 26 for two Well fielded at backward points. Substitute fielder. Karoti throwing himself full length there. Well, Ibrahim Zadran is off the field. That's great work. To his weaker side, left arm thrower. Dives away to his right, excellent, good commitment. That's what you've got to do. You're not in the 11. You can still make a difference, make an impact. Coach will enjoy that. Ball dying an angle. And just, just to finish off, Brian, on, on Andrew Balberni, for example. When he played, when he's playing against Fazal Hakfaruki from over the wicket, his alignment was to try and hit the ball through extra cover, which is fine. Even though Fazal Hakfaruki is a genuine in-swing bowler. As soon as Fazal Hakfaruki came around the wicket to Balberni, his thought process should have been mid-off, nothing in the covers, unless there's real width. Everything towards mid-off and mid-on, down the ground, even shuffling down the pitch and going over mid-wicket. But as soon as you bring cover into play, square point, you bring that bold and LBW into the game, and Fazal Hak was too good. Yes, by coming round the wicket, he's closed down that angle, hasn't he? The uh, square of the wicket on the offside, and even even round to extra cover. And of course, Faisal Hak Faruqi, you know all about conditions here in the UAE. He was absolutely outstanding earlier this year in the ILT20, the joint leading wicket taker in the competition. 17 wickets, bowled superbly there for MI Emirates. Yeah, Wakar Samankil as well, the left arm wrist spinner was right up there as well, had an excellent tournament, but just always keen on Fazal Hakfaruki, his wrist position, because he was general, genuine in-swing bowler, and now he's just got that wrist in a position where he can swing the ball away from the right-hander. At the moment, just bowling around, angling the ball, dying, as we suspected it would do. 
and felt the pitch was extremely dry, not a blade of grass. You were here and I was here during the ILT20. There was a lot of grass left on the surface and that's just angle and lack of bounce. When you're chasing 300 plus, that makes it extremely difficult. Harry Tector is not afraid sometimes to get down the pitch to Seamers and go over mid on. I wonder will he have the bravery to try and take on the Afghanistan speedster. That's nice. A little bit of width. Carves it away square on the offside for four. Tector dealing in boundaries at the moment. That's three for him. Yeah, he gets served the wide half volley. It's a hit me ball, really. Let's have a look at this. Nearly, yeah, it would have been a wide. Lovely timing, good hands. Piercing that square point region. Outfield hasn't been as quick actually this evening. It seems to have slowed up a little bit in this second innings. A couple of balls of Paul Sterling hit. Looked like they were destined for the boundary and hauled in. So I'm just wondering he's just slowed up a tad in the outfield as well as the pitch. Ten to the over, nine gone. Ireland 31 for two. Looks a long haul, this, for Ireland, doesn't it? They won the toss. They'll be regretting, I think, putting Afghanistan into bat. <laughs> Harry Tector, as I mentioned earlier, we've seen him develop superbly through the Cricket World Cup Super League. Ireland getting a whole host of matches over the course of two years. How's he going to develop further? How's he going to continue this progress now, I wonder? In the past, a player from Ireland would have gone and played county cricket. That's not really an option that's open now because, of course, he'd be an overseas player post-Brexit. He yeah, played a little bit for Gloucestershire last year and certainly good enough to, to uh, grace the county game, but made more difficult now, as you mentioned, Brian, being an overseas player as opposed to a local. I was one of many players that prospered from a long time as part of 15 years of the county game. And there's no coincidence that when Ireland had five or six guys playing county cricket, the national side benefited also. But at the same time, Ireland, as a, as a nation, as a cricketing nation, have to develop through our own system. We have to have a system in place throughout the whole country, the 32 counties that brings on the next generation. Harry Tector generally has been developed in Ireland by Ireland. As you look at someone like an Owen Morgan, for example, Owen Morgan was destined for greatness from a very young age. And I played against Owen when he was 12 or 13 years of age. I think everyone knew back then he was one going to play for Ireland and two was probably going to go on and play for England. Not many would have envisaged the success Owen Morgan had. But he went to England very early, Dulwich College, Summer summer timetable went to went to school in the UK a couple of times. Use of the bottom hand from Curtis Camper should get a couple. So there was there was a case of all the cricketers Ed Joyce, myself, William Porterfield went to university in the UK. Gary Wilson was at the Oval at Surrey for a long time. So as much as Cricket Ireland developed through the underage system and some of the rep teams. The finishing school was almost the county game, so now Ireland has had their own finishing school, and that's I think that's very important that the Ireland and Cricket Ireland aren't relying on the ECB. So Harry Tector is a prime example, a Lorca Tucker, another developed in Ireland by Ireland. Yes, I know there's talk within Cricket Ireland circles of the possibility of bringing first class cricket back to Ireland this coming summer if they can possibly do it. Of course, Covid was an issue the first class matches that were played were killed at that point and they haven't been revived since 
Yeah, I'm, I'm, well, you told me that. And no surprise that you're the man, the fountain of knowledge. But that is great news because if these Ireland players can get some competitive red ball cricket under their belt in the domestic season, that is a massive filler for all the Ireland cricketers, young and old. Ten overs, power play done. It's been difficult. 34 for two. Yeah, it's good, good to hear that potential first-class game will return or resume in Ireland. As we saw last week, the guys want to play red ball cricket. They're, destined, they're desperate to play more red ball cricket. They're desperate to play more test cricket and get more victories in the test arena like we saw in Abu Dhabi last week, which gave everyone a real boost. Also, scheduling is so difficult as well, Brian, trying to fit everything in. Well, Afghanistan with 37 after the first power play, so there's not an awful lot to choose between these sides in that sense, but of course Ireland have lost two prime wickets, two players who've got fantastic records against Afghanistan, Andrew Balburni and Paul Sterling. Sixth over then for Faisal Haq Faruqi. too well bowled and again the angle from round the wicket has done for an island batter it's Curtis Camper this time well, I think trigonometry angles left arm around the wicket you're trying to hit the ball through extra cover it doesn't work Fazal Hack says, yes, please, you, Ripper, through the gate. Curtis Kampfer, the latest to go. Ireland are in real trouble, 34 for three. Lorcan Tucker in at number five. It's his 50th One Day International. 16th player for Ireland to reach that mark. His highest score of 83. He scored that against Afghanistan in Abu Dhabi three years ago. It's more of the same now. Tucker off the mark straight away. Well, I've been harping on about angles for the last 15 minutes. Have a look at the angle where the ball's coming from. Have a look where Curtis Camper's trying to hit the ball. Ball angling in from left arm around the wicket. And Curtis Camper's trying to hit the ball through an extra cover region. You're just giving all the advantage to the bowler there. You're just opening yourself up. It's great bowling. It really is high class. Just going to keep a close eye now on Harry Tector. Plays exactly the same bowler. What his movements are, how he's aligning himself, where he's trying to hit the ball. Straight to Brian. He's trying to hit the ball down the ground. Well, power play has been difficult. Paul Sterling got a good ball. He just nodded there, Paul Sterling, as if say, yeah, good ball, too good for me. He was given out. Paul Rifle said you nicked it. Paul Sterling didn't believe. Hazelhack Faruqi was too good for Balberni, cleaning it up with a ripper. Top of the off stump. Harry Tector comes in and finds the middle of his blade as he so often does. It doesn't take long to get going nowadays, Harry Tector. There was a time when he was a little bit quiet at the start of an innings, not now. He's sitting nice to go 13 from 16. And you'll get four more there. 
did well to reach it actually in the end it probably would have been a wide but he got a thick enough part of the bat on it to send it racing away a bizarre ball really isn't it? similar ball last over the harry tech to hit square through the point region for a bowler that's had the ball under such good control all innings 5.4 overs Fazal Haq Faruqi. He's bowled two balls to Harry Tector that, you're right, would have been wides when he's generally been in and around the top of the off stump time and time again. It's the substitute again. That's nice from Tucker. Good stride into the ball there. Ireland in trouble, though. 40 for three. like we're going to get the first change of this Ireland innings in terms of bowling and it's the debutante 16 years of age the youngest player to represent Afghanistan in international cricket Gazanfar 16 years and 236 days he was the leading wicket taker for Afghanistan in the 2024 ICC Under-19 Cricket World Cup. And here's him receiving his cap. The 59th player for Afghanistan to uh, be capped at one day international level. And a false start. He's a big, he's a big unit for a finger spinner, isn't he? A little bit like Majib. Majib's a tall man as well. Must be a nice moment for Majib to present the 16-year-old with his cap. I'm sure this young man would have looked up to Majib and looked up to Rashid Khan to try and emulate their wonderful feats. Yes, Majib was the previous youngest player for Afghanistan. He's out at the moment with a, a sprained hand. Fingers crossed, if you'll excuse the uh, the pun given his hand injury, that uh, he'll be OK for the T20s. He's got a strange injury, Majib. It's almost the back of the, back of the hand. He's injured through from the back end of the World Cup. Well, born, well, born, well, born. well, my initial thoughts right now is speed. Here we go, here's the youngsters. It's all about the youth. Rashid, Naveen Al-Haq, 17, 16, Mujib and Gazanfar, Nur Ahmed, excellent, Ibrahim Zadran, a lot of recent debutants there. And four of them at Sharjah. Yeah, they've settled in here in Sharjah, haven't they, Brian? Watched and played against Afghanistan in so many different venues. I think in Dehradun have been, they've played in Lucknow. Greater Noida played a lot of cricket in Greater Noida. That was a lovely venue. Just beside the Jai P. Greens resort. Sharjah seems to be a preferred venue now. Well, poor ball. That is a a gift for Harry Tector. It was fast, it was flat, it was short, and Tector said it. Thank you very much. Well, this is what Ireland have got to do with the young man. They've got to try and get on top of him early. He'll be nervous, of course he will. That's a desperate ball, that, a drag down. 
and Tector taking full advantage. Well, how about that? What a great uh, reply. Brian, they'll pace off. First four balls were fast, as you mentioned, maybe a little bit of nerves. That ball took the pace off and got a little bit of drift and a bit of turn away. That's a beauty. That's your ball there, young man. Stay right there. Well, bold. This is only his fifth list day game, you know. And it's uh, his one day international debut. His first over cost seven. Ireland 47 for three. Double change. We've seen Gazanfar come on from the Sharjah club end. And now Gulbadin Naib is going to come on from the pavilion end. A man who has got bags of experience, along with Nabi, played in that World Cricket League Division 5 tournament in 2008. Former captain, led the side at the World Cup in 2019. Yeah, and I was his first ODI wicket, he told me this afternoon. <laughs> he greeted me with a lovely big smile. He said, Niall, lovely to see you. Keep doing all the great work in the comments box. Love seeing you do it. And you remember, you were my first ODI wicket. <laughs> I said, I forgot. But Ireland have to be ultra aggressive here, I think, against Gulbadim because they're so far behind the game now. So they might need to take a bit of a risk against the medium pace. I took her already down the surface. You've got something brewing in that mind of yours. Something is just itching away at that vast brain that you want to just bring to the viewers back home, Brian. I can tell. Just Gulbadin's had so many battles with Ireland down the years, hasn't he? He's had so many battles with so many uh, teams down the years, given his vast experience. He really is a, a terrific, versatile cricketer. He's batted in so many different positions. He's got this role as medium pacer or come on, take the pace off, a clever bowler. And the captaincy pushed upon him a little bit, really, I rather fancy in the World Cup. I thought you had something special for me. I thought you had something so special there about the bodybuilder, Gulbadeen Nave. Look at that big, strong athlete. I mentioned earlier, he's lost about five kgs. He said, getting a little bit older in age, I want to just trim down, be a bit more agile, a bit more mobile, get a bit more speed in the field. Terrific bloke, great guy. And of course, at the back end of the series against India in January, the T20 series in India, played that blazing innings in the third and final game there, which helped Afghanistan win. They lost the series 2-1, but they, they won that third game. And that was the uh, T20 international, you might remember, that went to two super overs. That's nice, Nabby. That's over. 48 for three. That's it. 
Here it is. Gorbadi Nave, look at that. 55 with just 23 balls. Remarkable stuff. No Ramit, 3 for 20. With a score of 212, you're going a 5 and over. Pick up three wickets. It's amazing that India got that many runs actually because they were they were three for not very many at all. And then Rohit Sharma produced uh, a master class. I wonder on that game there. I wonder who Devender would have been supporting that match, huh? Our Indian fellow friend who is so passionate about Afghanistan. I'd say he was under the covers, under the blanket, couldn't watch. Well, look on the other side, he had a, he had a foot in both camps. Oh, that's beautifully bowled again. And that's the second time in two overs. He's got that ball really to, to turn quite sharply away from the right-hander. Well, it's just the mystery, what it does to your brain. That's hardly spun, Brian, a fraction. That's turned a fraction, but as a batter, when you come up against mystery spin, you don't know if it's coming in, going away. Even the ball that turns a little bit feels like it turns a lot. Now it's got to be the sweep shot. Oh, I'll tell you what, I'm sure Lorca Tucker loves the sweep shot. 50 up, three down. All of a sudden, now this youngster just getting into his groove. He's got the right pace on this surface. Fifty-one for three. It's a decent start for Afghanistan. They've already taken three wickets. Ireland, 51 for three, will need to do a lot of build up here. A lot will depend on the two out in the middle. Tekta and Taka. That'll do. That's a great shot. Loose ball. And smashed for a boundary. He's been cashing on the loose balls, not sparing anyone. Yeah, with given. Well, for all of Ireland's battles and troubles to start with, this man has started well. Just continued a theme in, in this format in particular, Ahmed, where he's been outstanding, exceptional, in fact. Harry Tector has taken to ODI cricket like a duck to water. Certainly promising in all three formats, but my God, in this one, he's been sensational. And he may need to produce something close to a career best for Ireland to get into this contest. Right now, they are miles behind. Yeah, absolutely. He looks in good nick. He's been batting brilliantly. Is it six fours? Oh, Harry! 
You probably have heard at home, he's none too pleased with himself for that particular delivery. Oh, Harry, no! What was the shout? Through the earpiece, just the inside edge. He's really setting new levels for, for Irish batters. We see Paul Sterling, the leading run scorer, by a distance across all formats. If you look at the rankings, Harry Tector, six in the world now. No Irishman has ever been in the top ten before. I think Sterling got to a height of 13th. But look at the names he's mixing it with. Probably just as well. Midwicket didn't pick it up cleanly and won't take the second. Barbara Zam, number one in the world. Shubman Gil, Veracoli, Rohit Sharma, Daryl Mitchell, and then Harry Tector. Good company to be in with. Well, absolutely, and uh, his uh, performance out in the middle speaks for how he is down there among such great batters. He's uh, striking ball nicely, he's hit six fours, and he is actually, most importantly, any loose deliveries, he hasn't let it go. Oh, that sloppy fielding. Muhammad Nabi not able to stop this, and that runs down to the boundary. Boundary number seven for Harry Tactor. It's Tucker through the covers. Nicely played. The ping off the bat is similar, isn't it? You won't be the first nor the last to get confused between these two. The reason why, not just the similarity in names, but they played so much cricket together. Come all the way up through the under-19 system. Plenty before that. Tucker, a product of the Pembroke Cricket Club in Dublin 4. Tector, not far away. The YMCA Cricket Club, one of the real hotbeds of the game. There's five or six in Ireland. South County Dublin is one of them in Dublin 4. Four cricket clubs within a square kilometre. Pembroke Railway, where Niall O'Brien is from. Don't mention that to him. YMCA. And then Merrion just up the road. Then you've got Fingal in North County Dublin. Produced the likes of John Mooney, Connor Armstrong. More recently, Fionn Hand. And then up in Belfast, where the likes of Mark Adair and Paul Sterling are from. And then up in Derry, Andrew McBride and Craig Young Territory. They're the real hubs, the hotspots of the game, down in Cork too. Well, the Irish fans will be just not minding the fact that one or another just keep hitting the boundaries. End of the 15th, it's 62 for three. It's been a good over for Ireland. 11 runs came off it. They are chasing a required run rate of above seven, so they'll have to repeat the same as often as they can and not to lose wicket. Personally delighted to see young Ala Mohamed Gazanfer come in to make his ODI debut. He was down in South Africa. It's actually in Group D where Afghanistan were teamed up with New Zealand, Pakistan and Nepal. They lost a thriller, an absolute heartbreaker to Nepal to not get through to the Super Sixes. And having been to a couple of semi-finals in recent editions at the 19s World Cup, that was big disappointment for Afghanistan but this young man he was the one that stood out in a big way and the thing that impressed us so much about him down there in South Africa was that the batting didn't click for Afghanistan it really struggled I don't think they made more than 140 or 150 in the group stages but the brilliance of Gazanfer meant that they still stayed alive in all those games. Three for 29 against New Zealand, three for 30 against USA, and then a wicket apiece against both Nepal and Pakistan. Eight wickets across the four matches in the tournament, but it was the way he got the wickets. And predominantly, almost every one, I believe, he took wasn't with his stock off break or the arm ball. It was with the one he flicks out and then turns like a leg break. And as Niall O'Brien said earlier, it's almost a mind game for the batter. You think they're a finger spinner, you think the ball's going to turn in, but actually the majority of his deliveries tend to be flicked away. And the control he has with it for 16 years of age, phenomenal. And another thing about the debutants against Ireland, 
is that Mujib made his debut against Ireland in 2017. He was at that time the youngest before Allah Muhammad Ghazanfar taking over his idol who presented the cap to him, the 51st for Afghanistan. He's 16 years and uh, 236 days uh, as compared to 252 days, which was Mujib when he debuted against Ireland. Now, the thing is, Mujib came, he took four wickets against Ireland and Afghanistan won that match. Rahmanullah Gurbaz made his debut against Ireland and made a hundred on his debut. Can Allah Muhammad Ghazanfar do such a thing? Because he's got the platform, he's got a lot of runs, which is a luxury. You don't often get it. He didn't have it in the World Cup when he played in the under 19. It's kind of a, a dream scenario to debut in because of that. There isn't a huge amount of pressure on him. Picks up some wickets, fantastic, keeps things tight, even better. That tends to be his stock delivery. It's a little kind of flicked carom ball. It will just straighten rather than go sharply away on a surface like this. But he's a great control bowler for someone so young. I don't think he started badly here at all for the first time in senior international cricket. That single will bring us to the drinks break, the first of this second innings. Ireland have it all to do at 64 for three. Some lovely shots, including a little bit of village cricket there in the Nuristan province, one of the 34 provinces of Afghanistan. And Afghanistan fans back home right now will be delighted with what they've seen in the innings and a third of the action that we've seen so far, because they have been all over Ireland, firstly with the bat and now with the ball. This one was the one that Paul Sterling, I don't think he could believe. It was barely an appeal at first from Ormut Zai, but the finger went up from Paul Rifle. And then two very special pieces, very skillful deliveries from Fazal Haq once beating the outside edge, the second time beating the inside edge. The end result was the same, the off stump was kissed. And Balberni and Kampfer were sent back by the brilliant skills of Fazal Haq Faruqi. All three wickets have gone to the seamers, but there's plenty of spin to come. And I suspect Ireland will have a trial by spin alongside a few overs from Gulbuddin through these middle overs 
try and establish some kind of a foothold in the game. The problem is they still need 247 more, and that required run rate is ever growing. Afghanistan in complete control here. Yeah, beautiful sight from Nuristan that say it's the Switzerland of Afghanistan. So beautiful, natural beauty all around. Greenery and wonderful rivers. Falls in very green area in Afghanistan. We'll have to see when the Afghanistan skipper introduces Muhammad Nabi and Nur Ahmad into the attack. So far, he wants to continue with Gulbadin Naib. And for Ireland, you would suspect Harry Tector, well, he's going to have to get 100. And it might need to be a big 100 as well to get Ireland into this contest. A lot of cricket to be played. And I have to remember, Ireland have five bowlers. And the five bowlers they've gone with today, they're maybe not the more all-round ones. You, you think of Barry McCarthy or Gareth Delaney offering you quite a lot at numbers 8, 9, 10. Today, it'll be Mark Adair at 7, Andrew McBride at 8, and then really Van Workham, Hume and Young won't offer a huge amount, or certainly won't offer as much as Delaney or McCarthy. So if Ireland are to get into this contest, it'll be Tector surely with 100-plus needed. And good contributions from Tucker and Dockrell. And maybe Mark Adair too, who's batting, is continuing to show what it could be in the international game. And we'll have the trial of that man, the left arm wrist spin of Noor Ahmed. Yeah, it's not going to be easy playing against him. It's absolutely a big task ahead of Ireland. Slow ball. Gulbani is going to throw a lot of slow balls. They want this run, quick run. A direct hit could have been interesting, but I believe he'd made, made it comfortably at the end. So, yeah, it's going to be a big task. Rightly said that. Sheedy does well there. Always oh, comfortably home, Tucker. Yeah, for Tector, you really talk about that, that quality he's brought to Ireland in, in this format. Brian Murgatroyd was talking earlier about the importance of the ICC Men's Cricket World Cup Super League upon, well, Harry Tector in particular, but both of these young cricketers' journeys. They've had to learn on the job. They haven't had the, the kind of finishing school of county cricket. But listen to these numbers. Phenomenal to think that since 2022, Nobody apart from Shubman Gill is averaging more than Harry Tector is in the ODI game. He's averaging the best part of 60 now across 23 innings in ODI cricket. That's above David Milan, above Babar Azam, Travis Head, Virat Kohli. Name them all. And that's nicely played. Should be a couple. That's the pedigree and the quality of Harry Tector. And the brilliance of that for Irish cricket is it's giving young Irish men and women back home, a real role model to, to look up to. He's setting a new bar for Irish batting, and it's great to see. Yeah, Niall O'Brien, at the start of the match, was very confident of the middle order of Ireland. So a lot lies on their shoulder. They have a big task ahead of him. Such moments can make the players make history. If you pull this 300 runs, and more and this oh that's brilliant feeling has he stopped that i believe he has that's going to be a big and huge achievement for you that should be the end of the over 70 for three yes 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 quick quick might just have a check on the boundary here look clean at first but you can understand as to why they wanted a bit of a look at that it is the subfielder, Riaz Hassan, who's on. He's going to his weaker side as well, so we'll get us to the end of the over, 70 for three. And the reason Riaz Hassan is on at the moment, Ibrahim Zidran, not back out to field yet. Don't think he's particularly well. So, 12th man in operation for Afghanistan. Slog sweep, risk taken, and reward given to Lorcan Tucker. He's an aggressive player. Oh, 
and want to take the fight to the youngster, put pressure on him, slightly overpitched. Not over the head of mid-wicket by much, but by enough. Yeah, absolutely, that's good shot. Sweep shot, he's a good sweeper of the ball. Second boundary to him. Joins the party. A little bit more fortunate this time. Tries to probably go inside out over extra, doesn't get anything like the connection he would like. I think days gone by, even against someone they would see as a contemporary in Afghanistan. Ireland might have gone into their shell a little bit in this scenario. They might have batted for a bit of time and just tried to survive. The mindset, something that Gary Wilson has brought into the team alongside Heinrich Milan, Gary Wilson, the assistant coach, Heinrich, the head, is one of very much let's go down fighting. They'd almost rather be bowled out for 140 than make 220 for seven. It's an admirable mindset. Maybe just half a chance. Kazanfer. Fingertips, perhaps. Well, he's actually responding to what you just said. Attack. And that's what he's trying to do, what the Irish batters out in the middle are doing. But do you have the option? You're chasing something above seven every over. 300 and plus. It's not easy. So you take risks, and at times you get the reward. Don't think this was a chance, the previous ball. Maybe some spin bowlers will have considered it to be oh, almost through the gap, wasn't it? Between the thumb and forefinger. Half a chance. It sticks sometimes, it does. But the way they are batting, you will want for some luck to favor them. A very interesting run-up, doesn't he? he? Generates a lot of momentum through the crease. See Tector, even though it's not a warm evening, perspiring for the cause. Shades of certainly Mujib to the run-up. A little bit of Harbajan Singh, I heard, as a shape from the back of the box. He'd be looking to make his own name bigger than even those two in, in due course. And at the age of 16, to be given an international debut. Just love the way he's getting all the trajectory going towards the target. That's what you want as a spin bowler. Let's have another look. It was definitely something on it. Not easy. You need to be good off your own bowling as a spinner. Didn't seem to pick it up at first, did he, Ahmed? Not quite. Yeah, I don't think so. End of the over. Eight runs off it. Ireland are 78 for three. Ireland building nicely a partnership of 44 or 48 between Tector and Tucker. They need for this partnership to go until the 40th over at least to see themselves home. Well, the trial by spin we anticipated it's coming and it's now for Ireland. Noor Ahmed, the left arm wrist spinner. Very much in demand in some of the T20 franchise leagues all around the world. You no know Rashid Khan back from injury just yet. The young man, very fragile in years as well, is probably going to take up the mantle with the exception of Mohammed Nabi as the, the lead spinner. And the other option that we'll, we'll see a little bit of, Hashmatullah Shahidi possibly. Some off breaks too, but with not many left-handers in the Irish side, just really Andrew McBride in at number eight. Expect there to be a lot of the mystery spin to the right-handers through the middle here. Spoken quite a lot about Afghanistan's landmark of 300 games that came in the Test match, Ireland's 200th ODI today. They haven't played anyone else in this format more than Afghanistan. It gives you a sense as to just how great this rivalry is. 
31 meetings between the two sides and always keenly contested, usually a bit of edge to the contest as well. Yeah, 13-16 kind of look even Stevens when you look at their win ratio. Ireland winning 13, Afghanistan winning 16. Yeah, it tells. Come on, come on, Nur Ahmad, Shabash, Yeah, production this for the Afghan Cricket Board. And our thanks for all your messages from all around the world. People enjoying it, not just on the live stream, on television channels all around the world. And our miracle team putting out all these pictures. Yeah, certainly great to be seeing these pictures live. I know there's lots of fans watching back in Ireland at 5 p.m. there. Don't think they'll be the happier of the two fans right now. Those watching on in, in Kabul and across Afghanistan will be thinking, well, we've got Ireland by the throat here. We need to finish them off. And Afghanistan desperately looking for a victory because the year 2024 still, they have been looking for a win in the ODIs. They've only played one series against Sri Lanka before this and they were whitewashed. So yeah, a win from here will give Afghanistan a good momentum. We saw how Afghanistan started their innings. It was 37 run on the board in the first 10 overs. They will tell. Didn't have a lot. Oh, this is a shout. Things. He's got his man, but I believe he's going outside the off stump. I think if I can still read the wrist spinners, I was one, so I'm hoping I can. I think this is the googly. So I think this is going to be turning away from the right-hander. Probably just pitched outside leg and ooh, might have been closer than you first think. That's the mystery. That's what it provides. Difficult for the umpires to pick as well. 19 bold, 81 for three. Well, two spinners. Now been introduced so far in the attack. Muhammad Nabi is yet to come in bowl. Have to wait and see. When you look at the warm, it looks even Stevens at this stage, except for the fact that Afghanistan have not lost any wicket. And Ireland has well, lost three. Yeah, the worm is a bit misleading right now. They actually look on her as even. They really aren't. It was a 150 run opening partnership for Afghanistan. And now the grand old statesman of the Afghan game will bring himself in. Mohammed Nabi, 160 ODIs to his name, the same number as Paul Sterling. He's played in 30 of those 31 Ireland versus Afghanistan contests. Paul Sterling has played in all 31. It's a rivalry that cuts deep between the two sides. There's been a brilliant series. You think back to the one in Stormont, I think that was 2016. The one here at this venue that Ireland somehow managed to win away from home, 2018. They tend to be very closely and keenly contested, usually with a bit of niggle in it. As they came up through the associate ranks, they all always wanted to beat each other to be the best associate and ended up, in fact, spurring each other on towards the test status they've now both achieved. And descended to, but this man, Mohammed Nabi, and he's been almost ever present for very nearly 20 years now for Afghan cricket. His son was playing at the under-19 Cricket World Cup down in South Africa. And that's one great thing that Ireland and Afghanistan share, the family connections to the sport. So heartening. It's a family affair. He's a good bowler, Muhammad Nabi. He will keep things tight. He will not give room to the batters and he will force the batters to make the mistake if they want to score runs against him. So quite an experienced of the lot. Muhammad Nabi, as you rightly said, have played a lot of international good cricket for Afghanistan. Energy. Plays all around the world. Plays at the leagues, the T20 format, T10 formats. It's been nice. Well-built partnership, 50 runs 
of partnership built together in a very crucial stage for only 59 deliveries. And that again indicates that kind of new, it's not new, it's 18, 24 months old, but the, the methodology that Ireland's batters now take and are encouraged to take is one of continuing to attack. And that's interesting, Naby just drying his hands. Is there a little bit of Jew kicking in? No, no, no. Could that aid Ireland's chase? Is that why Paul Sterling wanted to bowl first? 20 bowled, 84 for three. That decision at the toss, certainly right now, Paul Sterling will be sitting a little uncomfortably watching on. He'll still believe in his pairing, particularly those two at the crease right now, but I never want to go for more than 300 winning the toss and bowling first. Just something for Ireland to cling on to with this partnership. It's worth 50. It's coming a good clip. 50 off 60 balls. Now with 30 to go, how do they break down the 227 more they need? Can they get 50, 55 off this 10? 60, 65 off the 10 after that. That could leave you 110 to win off the last 10. Is that the way they're plotting it out? It's really important that they do not lose wickets. See, that's the most important part of it. Now, they've built this partnership nicely. It was on 34 when they lost their third wicket. It was the 11th over. And since then, these two have batted really nicely. Good thing about their partnership is the intent in going off to the loose balls, not letting the loose ball go away and unpunished. And that's the reason why in 62 deliveries, they've put together 51 runs. Not the right line. Got away with it, the ball before. This time, swept away for a couple. 95 Afghanistan made off the last 10. So you might hear that breakdown and say 110 off the last 10. That's too many. Not if you've got set men at this venue. You can get runs scoring quickly. Tector, he's looked so good thus far, isn't he? Critically right now, he's either reading it out of the hand or off the pitch reasonably well. He knows which way it's going. Tucker looks like he's sweeping a bit more, might not quite know as much as to which way it's going. It's also to see where the bowler lands the ball. It's usually when you can kind of make your mind and the wrist spinner leg arm, left arm. He usually bowls the wrong one. So it's, you can also decide from where he's actually pitched the ball as you can decide if he's bowling the one that is coming in, if he's bowling it onto the fourth stump, probably bringing the ball back into the batter or bowling it onto the middle stump, probably taking it away from him. Swept and swept nicely in front to square and out here. Well, that is a bit of a shocker from the debutante. Kazanfer, they were always going to get two, but he certainly should have stopped the boundary. Instead, Tucker gets four. Well, first thing, he was not ready. He waited, and then he started running after it, and then he made his grounds, went there, but couldn't collect it cleanly. Gave away four runs, two runs. They will have run two. See again, though, your point you're making about where the ball pitched. You meant the line, didn't you? So he's picking that off the line. He says, OK, I'll go to the sweep here. Reacts yeah, nicely here. It'll just be a single to close out. Good over for Ireland. They're continuing to build this partnership. 93 for three. Oh, 
93 for three at the moment, 21 overs in. This partnership is building nicely, 59 off 67. Afghanistan very much ahead at this stage. Comparative scores, Afghanistan were 140. Correction, were uh, 85 for none. But a bit of experience now, Nabi. Starting his second over, his first went for only three runs, so really good stuff from Nabi. Nur Ahmed's first went for a dozen, or well, it's two overs, sorry, have gone for a dozen. Would have been disappointed in that last one as well, but uh, this stand is good. Tector is uh, key. 47 off 50 at this stage. Just a little bit of turn in this uh, track today. He uh, gives it a little bit of a rip, so he'll get to turn out of most surface if there's any assistance. Good application from the both batsmen, stitching together a partnership, uh, putting the team in a position from where they can think about winning with the prospect of dues setting in. Yeah, I think they've got to think about a, a huge partnership. I think that's their best chance of winning this game. That's what they need to get. Tector and Tucker going to go really big, these two. At the moment, it's uh, 61 off 69. So they're not more than, uh, well, not much more than just a run a ball at this stage. So they need to step on a bit. At the moment, uh, the required rate from here is 7.54. So that's where they've got to go. They're only going at 4.47 up until now. So they've got to uh, bat for a long, long time and make sure they start scoring highly in the boundaries. That's what's going to get them uh, closer. And that's where Mohamed Nabi's role is going to be crucial, given the fact that two inexperienced spinners playing in this contest. His spell will determine where the game will head from this situation. Goes on for a ball really nicely. Four overs, none for 20. I see someone young and someone new. A ball with that sort of control. That was the impressive part about it. Of course, uh, Ireland players have seen Nabi before. He's improved drastically, Nabi, of late as well. Had some fitness issues, but has been working tirelessly on his fitness. Scored a century against uh, Sri Lanka. Has been bowling well. Score some runs, your confidence is high, you bowl generally pretty well, if that's your main trait, which it uh, is. A bit of a slinging action, if you haven't seen him before, but his control is uh, terrific. It's a little bit of drift away, a bit of turn in with those offies. And loads of experience as well, playing in these kind of situations, playing across the leagues, around the globe. So knowing the surface, knowing uh, there's a possibility of due. He's, he's brought the towel on as well at the moment, so it's it's going to be challenging for him. But he's got the experience to exercise control. Oh. It's a little bit uh, short that one. It's been hammered away. No. Just the one though. Got away with that, Nubby. He knows it as well. About halfway down. Five off the over. 98 for three. Noor Ahmed about to start his third over. Now the thing about Noor Ahmed, once he gets his line right, which didn't necessarily get right in that last over, he's uh, wrong and is extremely hard to pick. So it's not a great change in his release points. It does come out of the back of the hand, but it doesn't change dramatically. Jock Dockrell, Adair and McBride, the three to come in next, six, seven and eight. Knocked it onto his foot. In the end, scampered through for one. They got two men on the sweep when they finally got the boundary, square on the boundary as well. Do you think that the pace of the wicket has improved? 
I think that's because of the bad line he was bowling, actually. Not on, yeah, it's uh, the foot doing the, the work, the foot of the batsman, that is. Yeah, I think that's a, a field placing for perhaps some ordinary bowling. I uh, think the captain, what he should do is ensure that No Ahmed is very experienced. And he should be bowling a bit of line on uh, bowling leg stump or just outside. Tector on 49. It's pitched outside the line of leg stump. He has always been known for his ability to hit the length right. Lines have been problem, at times erratic. Excellent delivery again from Noor. It's important to have him firing in those areas, pitching outside the leg stump. Got out early, a lot of expectation, played a significant innings in Test match. Paul Sterling leading the side, the ODI side, one day cricket. And he wasn't happy when he was uh, given out. It's a little bit tight with the line. Much better from Noor in this over. Losing three early wickets. All the wickets going to the fast bowlers. Normally, you expect the spinners to do bulk of damage. Well ball, That's well uh, the better line. That's where he should be bowling. Because then the batsman uh, ideally thinks he's going to be turning back in towards him. And that's why he can then bowl his wrong and so effectively when he bowls that sort of line around about off stump. Generally, if he's going to be uh, hovering around outside leg stump like that, the wrong and is not going to be effective at all. End of the over, though. Just one from it. 99 for three. Three ten was a bit of a fluid number at one stage. It looked like three thirty, then it dropped down. I thought to around about the two eighty mark. Then it looked like they might be around about the two ninety. Then they played really well and got to that three ten. So it was good work from Afghanistan. Nabi again, again just uh, pitching that on a leg stump and turning down the leg side. A little bit of bat on that, I think. We get confirmation from uh, the umpire and they come back for three. Good stuff. Good running. Leg buys. 100 up as well. Ireland, this has been good partnership. Nabi normally very accurate. Looking for the traditional off spin. Sliding down the leg side. Skits off the surface at this point of time. A little bit of dew setting in. Needs to exercise better control on 49 Tector. This has been brilliant inning so far from him. You can see when the ball just runs along the ground that uh, Nabi is uh, using his rag to dry the ball and of course just uh, one of those along the ground it's going to get damp again 50 up for Tector that's his 12th one international 50 his first first against Afghanistan he also has kicked on and got four hundreds and Ireland need that today he's played beautifully so far he's enjoying good run with the bat he's been in good form and making significant contribution already but has to score big in order to overall this target of 310 he's been so superb just going on the back foot, reading the, the delivery of the pitch. He's been playing it from the center of the blade. He brings out the sweep. There's the man on the boundary. Goes on for another step from... His niche was not even born when now he made his first class debut. That makes you feel a little bit uh, old, Devender. That's a bad line. That ball's maybe a little slippery, but it shouldn't be affecting him too much because he's so experienced, Nubby. He's had a bowl with that ball to a little bit damp quite easily. 
playing at the MCG in 2005 against Andrew Flintoff, my getting. He has seen everything from, from the resurgence of the fast bowlers. Then the spinners came along and then the fast bowlers again making impression. So Mohamed Nabi is uh, 39 years old and 66 days. The combined age of Noor Ahmed and <laughs> Gazanfa is 35 years and 300 days. Nabi, my apologies. That's why it's important that he exercises control. He guides the two youngest to Salam. Man on debut and Noor he has uh, been bowling well. He has, has found his, his rhythm, he has found his areas to operate with. Partnership is just dropping now. Oh, that's uh, nicely bowled. Thought he was in the game at that stage, just skidding on a fraction, that delivery. End of the over, eight from it, 107 for three. Docker was due to come in next, an average of uh, 22 in his one day in the international career. No, I'm at now. Good connection, nicely played. A couple of bounces, and that goes for four. That's a good start to the over. Well, picking the length early. Nice over the previous one, looking to exercise pressure on the bowler straight away. Nicely connected. Yeah, I wonder if getting that 50 has uh, now spurred him on. Has Tech the decided he's now got to go on the charge here because they need nearly eight and over at this stage. I think he has decided that's the case. He's a good player, he can do it. One bounce and that's gone for four. Two boundaries in a row. Tossing up, smashed down the ground. A confident stroke from Tector after getting to his half century. He's trying to express himself. Yeah, no, Ahmed has not bowled particularly well today. He's now getting a bit of a treatment as well. It's going at uh, nearly six and a half the over at this stage. They're going to look to get after him as uh, much as they possibly can, I think. Just pulling his length back. That's why two inexperienced spinners and the Navi. Pass bowlers will, will come back. Is there time to bring a pass bowler in here? Not yet. Keep those spinners going for a bit, I think. All they need to do is break this partnership. And that'll put a lot of pressure on Ireland. Spinners have still got to bowl a lot of overs today, and they uh, will be able to get through these overs fairly quickly. And that run rate per over will just keep climbing. 82, the partnership of 89 balls, though. And both batsmen looking comfortable against spin. Not a good sign for Afghanistan moving forward. Oh, he's picked that out nicely. That's beautifully played, and that's gone for four. So that's the third four in the over. That's well played against Noor Ahmed. Noor is leaking runs. Most expensive over so far in the second innings. Picking it from well outside the stump, getting it fine. Just rolling it wrist over. Tempted to keep uh, Noor Ahmed on. They don't have to panic about the runs over at this stage, Afghanistan. He's a wicket taker, Noor Ahmed. They're looking to play the shots against him as well. That over, though, goes for 14, 121 for three.
Tector, 61 off 65. Here's a look at the uh, 50 package from Harry Tector. Played very nicely. Very strong batsman. He's uh, someone who's uh, blossomed beautifully. He's got a very good uh, career over the last couple of years. Really has played uh, exceptionally well again today. They haven't been able to stop him from scoring boundaries. That's been a bit of a problem for Afghanistan. But because they scored so many runs, they shouldn't be too concerned because he's still got a long way to go. Partnership 87 between he and Tucker at the moment, who's 34 at the other end. So Tech to 61, Tucker 34. And there's 12 fours between the two of them, eight and four. Eight to Tector. Tucker on strike now. Nicely tucked away on the onside. Most of the runs from the blade of Tector score the wicket on the offside, on the leg side as well. Just spraying the ball around on Lexton with given as well. Just worried about that sweep that Tector plays. They're protecting that uh, backward square sweep. Hence the line that Marby's bowling at the moment to Tector. Just trying to tuck him up as much as he can. Afghanistan need to, need to find a way to get a wicket here in some fashion. Beautiful ball. Nice flight. Nice speed through the air. A little bit of curve away from Tector as well. Of late, he has been bowling the outswingers, but this time just holding its line. Length, just pulling the length back. And again, you can't do too much with that. It's good work. Bowling superbly to his field at the moment. Nubby. Good support from Tucker as well, 35 of 40. Two batsmen looking so comfortable at the crease. Three men on the fence on the leg side. Just a sweeper, back with a square on the offside. At the moment for Tucker on strike. He's been able to hit the gaps. He's been able to take the single as well. The strike rotation has been very good throughout the innings. And particularly, there is a conscious effort to take minimum risk against Nabi. Look back at the context of this game. I mean, Nabi's doing a wonderful job. He's going at a fraction over four to the over. They need to go at nearly eight. That's how well Nabi's uh, controlling things. Working hard on trying to keep that seam as dry as possible. So he gets the best possible grip. That's okay. It's only going to be a single. That's all. They don't mind giving away singles, provided he holds the boundaries dry. Four off the over, 125 for three. Just a couple of uh, overs of note, 12 and 15. Overs 15 and overs 25. The other two big ones, that's not enough for Ireland at the moment. Still need to go at 7.75 uh, to the over from here. And this partnership, even though it's good, 91 it is off 97 balls, it's not making any catch up on the total. No, Ahmed continues. Captain persisting with him. Interesting story. He was picked uh, for his performance in Shwagiza in 2019. Shot the ball is end. Oh, would have been tight. Think a desperate dive might have got him home. Maybe hasn't uh, burnt some bark off his elbows. 
no other option than putting in the diving effort there. The wicket keeper was dressing along. Off the pad, wanted run, good communication between the two batters. Oh, direct hit. It would have been out, a direct hit. It's a desperate dive. So just a little bit of a, a tidy up now for Tekta. After that uh, dive. Shows the commitment to the cause. And now he's showing us more than that. He's uh, burnt some bark off on his hip. Gave him an opportunity also to uh, change his shirt. He was uh, dripping wet. Things are uh, pretty tight at the moment. We need 185 off 142 balls. But they do need to go at uh, over 7.8 to the over. Here's a look at the wickets that have gone down. That was Sterling first up. A nod of appreciation of the delivery from Faruqi. He was surprised when he was given out. That was a beauty from Faruqi. Curving around that bat basically and hitting that off stump really hard. He wasn't finished yet, Faruqi. Got another one. That one coming back superbly as well. And that was the third. So really good stuff from Faruqi. Amazai, sorry, picked up the uh, last one. Faruqi, two for 21. Amazai, one for 17. The first three, Sterling, Alberni, and also Kampfa. So three key batsmen that are on the way back. Right, I think we need to uh, get this game moving a little bit. Uh, umpires, I think Paul Rifle just came out and probably said exactly the same thing. It doesn't take that long just to patch up a bit of a graze on a hip. Tector's on 63, Tucker's on 36. No, he just wants to have a drink. Does Tector? 185 required, they've got some work to do. Partnership is on 92 at the moment. There's been quite a pause here. I don't understand why the umpires haven't moved this on quicker. One day game is uh, at times slow enough as it is without uh, a lengthy delay. I don't know how many minutes this has been, but surely it's been at least five minutes. That's uh, not ideal. Might un interrupt the tempo of the batsman, actually. On the spot, no Ahmed. Respect uh, on his performance in the Shpagiza Cricket League at the age of 14. Halfway through the 27th over now. It's full toss. Premeditated uh, shot. It's one of those shots you play where uh, you think if you hadn't premeditated, you could have slapped that through the covers for four. Sometimes after the break, the rhythm that you enjoy before the break in thick of the action, then you need to make a conscious decision at time to restart. Good morning, good morning, Noor. Yeah, it's been a good over so far from Noor Ahmed. Just three from it. It's nicely bowled, dot ball. Tucker wanted to give it a room to himself to smash through the extra. Then making the late adjustment, he's playing with a straight bat. Hashmatullah Shahidi scoring a half century. Good hour, good hour. Good stuff again. Yep, momentum I think has been interrupted with the batsman taking so much time. 128 for three.
It's getting tougher for them now. Ireland, 183 from 138 deliveries. This partnership, 94. Need to go at eight and over at this stage. It's gone up a little bit. Afghanistan, they need a wicket. Omar Jai back into the attack, bowled well in the first spell. Or about swingers are taking distance as well. It's going to be different experience altogether. Slightly wet ball. Yeah, he's not only a uh, great pace, but he's very accurate. During the World Cup, after his performance against, against England, he received appreciation from great Sachin Tendulkar for his wrist position and his ability to swing the ball by coming close to the stumps and then swinging away to the right hand batsman. So Nabi has a uh, bit of a breather after his uh, four overs, none for 17. He was tidy. Nabi, that's for sure. They're keen, they're desperate to take a wicket here. Omar Jai normally prefers to bowl with this new ball. He started thinking about becoming a cricketer, representing Afghanistan after watching Bangladesh and Afghanistan in action in the Asia Cup in 2014. Then some good performances in domestic cricket, particularly in Ushpagiza. Good solid shot, no run there. Also getting the opportunity to play in Bangladesh Premier League where he shone brightly with the ball in hand. He used to bat a lot, did not bowl even a single over in APL 2018. From that position to not bowl a single over to where he is currently operating at around 140, the kind of control and swing that he possesses. Yeah, good on him. Gets a little bit of extra bounce from time to time, which is a bit surprising because he's not the, uh, the tallest guy around. Kiddy customer balls quick uh, more often than not full the length deliveries it's a very tight half and over at the moment and he's come back over Amazai Tucker on strike now oh, hesitation there Safety through, you've got to trust your partner. If he calls, you've got to go. Looked like uh, Tucker initially was a little bit undecided, then uh, eventually they both went. Quite comfortable in the end, no dramas. Things have been slightly different after the break. That halt because of uh, bruise to, to the batsman. Afghanistan have got uh, quite vocal in the field now. A sensing a bit of an opportunity with the Mazai back into the attack. Omar Zai was brilliant in the World Cup. Took a bit of time to get used to the international cricket early on. With the ball was expensive in the T20 World Cup. Persisted by the selectors and has paid dividend. That persistence with him has been generating good results for Afghanistan with bat and bowl. That's a top over. Coming back and just going for three. 131 for three. Terrific partnership this for Ireland, 97 it's worth now. They came together this pair when Ireland were in all sorts of strife at 34 for three. Noor Ahmed 
to continue from the pavilion end. It's got a long on and a deep backward square leg on the onside. It's nicely bowled. Little nod of the head there from Tector. Just listening to Mike Hazeman a moment ago, talking about maybe the momentum's just been sucked out of this pair by that stoppage. It's a nice shot from Tector into the gap. They'll come back for two. Tina Mawoyo alongside me. A terrific stand this has been, Tina. It's been outstanding, I think especially under the circumstances. Coming together at 34 for three. And taking the score to 133 now. But with good cricketing strokes. And that's the 100 partnership. Really good effort from this pair. What it also confirms is that the future of Irish cricket batting is very bright. We know enough about Harry Tector. That's their contribution, 68. He's on. 55 and 63 he's contributed. 39 and 47 for Tucker. But Lorcan Tucker started to mature himself and play these kind of innings. We saw him in a test match as well. Curtis Camper, who wasn't in the runs today. But there's certainly two or three batters that are starting to really put their hands up here. And will be in the Cyrus side for an extended period of time. People watching Tucker in the T20 World Cup a couple of years ago. Ireland were in Zimbabwe's group in Hobart, you might remember. And he just felt he was a little bit skittish there. He was batting up the order on that occasion. He was batting at number three. There's more of a maturity to his game now that I've seen. He's a lot more selective. Seems to know his game a little better. This, of course, is 50th One Day International today. One thirty six for three. and Tucker bringing Ireland back into this game it's still a tall order on 75 of 21 overs but they've given their side a chance oh my God. that's kept low you probably heard Harry Tector then saying uh, he wasn't too impressed with the uh, the way that ball bounced but this has been a really good stand. Tector playing some lovely shots, square of the wicket. Tucker, so strong on the sweep. And Tector demonstrating that he can play that shot as well. stood out for me in that little partnership package was how many balls were hit along the ground finding the gaps even if sweepers on the boundary we saw only two in the end two slog sweeps which naturally you're looking to go over a mid-wicket fielder eliminates the risk oh that's made a lovely sound off the bat 
Gurbas out at deep square leg. Uh, timed the ball beautifully this evening we were just talking off air and I've got to agree with you I think he's got a lot more structure to the way he plays and he puts his innings together and that comes with playing a lot more games being in these kind of situations often once you play through those situations two three four times then you start to know what's expected of you And it's another illustration from my perspective of the value of the Cricket World Cup Super League because he's been another player who's benefited from playing better sides on a more regular basis. And if you play better, play against better players, you become better. And a lot more diverse conditions as well. You look at today's surface and I think despite 300 being made in the evening now it's become a lot more difficult to bat on another one that's kept very low <laughs> yeah, I thought he did the right thing he tried to come down the wicket and he looked to play straight but the balls literally crawled along the surface Making it very difficult for him to get a connection. These surfaces were relayed last year. I'm not sure Sharjah will be all that happy. So there doesn't seem to be an awful lot of carry in them. Anyway, 30 overs gone. Ireland 139 for three. You can probably see on the scoreboard there, there's a countdown clock. And the batters and the fielding side must be ready to bowl again. There you are, there's the stop clock rule which has been brought in for white ball cricket. 60 seconds between completing an over and starting the next one. It's interesting listening to Mike Hazeman in the last stint of commentary talking about how the game basically came to a stop for five minutes while Harry Tector got some treatment and changed his shirt. It's all about entertainment. That's cute from Tucker. And it's gone for four. Very clever shot, that. Yeah, this one's worked out better for him because of the line of the ball. And the length as well. He tried it in the previous over. It was a low full toss outside the off stump. So couldn't get it fine enough for a boundary. But this time he's done it well. Just given the ball a little bit of an extra lift as he gets bat onto ball. And that's got it to speed away down to the boundary. I'm liking the look of this young man now with bat in hand, Lorcan Tucker. Brave shot that one as well because he showed the bowler his stumps. You can see... Nur Ahmed using a rag to dry the ball. There's a fielder now gone over to 45 on the leg side, trying to plug the gap. Short, fine leg. Oh, that's six. Goodness me, that's made a lovely sound off the bat, and it's 50 to Tucker. Fourth 50 in one day international cricket. Second against Afghanistan, his previous one three years ago in Abu Dhabi in a losing cause. He'll hope this one's in a winning one. Well, the change rooms enjoyed that. 
How well has he hit this? He's just timed it. Barely extended past the shoulders. Wonderful way to go to your fourth 50. And just the appreciation of the change room. It also brings up the 150 for Ireland. Halfway through the 31st over. Well, in the old days, Tino, it used to be whatever you get in 30 overs, double it. And that's uh, generally what you'd expect to get in uh, one-day international cricket. Well, if Ireland can do that, they'll come mighty close to winning this game. Well, there's, uh, there's the man who just found a ball in the street. Oh, he's in the middle of the road. <laughs> I, I hope he knows where it's come from and that it needs to come back. Otherwise, we're going to have more delays here. Oh, what a lovely shot. Just the timing. Kept his eye on the ball. He really did examine that ball, didn't he? Do you know, Tino, I've driven along that road a long time many times thankfully i've never been in the car when um, the balls bounced over the uh, the stands that would be the shock of your life if you were driving along wouldn't it i'm pretty sure you would know what time is a good time to drive through here when there's cricket on anyway Murgis. That's well bowled. Lovely line as well. The line was such that Tector wasn't sure. Was it going to turn across him or turn back into him? Here's the six. One fifty two for three. Six bowlers used so far, including the debutante, Gazan Far. Change of bowling now at the Sharjah club end, the far end of this Sharjah cricket stadium. Gulbadeen Naib coming on. Previous spell was from the pavilion end. Well, leading edge there from Tector. And in the end, that's well run. Oh, and there's going to be uh, overthrows. Is there no good backing up on the deep square leg boundary? We've got a couple that have gone over into the road. One in the Afghanistan batting innings. This was in the previous over. That ball's gone sailing into the road behind us, and this guy's just found it. He's wondering, what is this? And what do I do with it? Again, good running. The amazing thing was that he was he was literally in the middle of the road there. I guess what's good for him is it didn't land on his head. That's good. Just taking the pace off there, Gulbadi Naib. He's the ideal bowler, I think, for this surface. Because we've seen the lack of pace, we've seen the responsiveness to the variations that the slow medium bowlers have. There's an example. So I think this is a good move. And it was good to see him in the attack a little bit earlier as well from Hashmatullah Shahidi. That's the response you'd expect from Tech to there, looking to get down the pitch. Take that 
removal of pace by Gulbadin out of the equation or attempt to do so anyway. It's a warm evening here. You can see the sweat coming out of Tector's helmet. And again, no pace on that at all. I think it's always important to be able to assess conditions and then adapt to them. Realise what needs to be done on a certain surface because of the way it's playing. And I think Afghanistan, the way they've set their fields, yes, with runs on the board makes it a little bit easier. And how he's used his bowlers has been very good. Two is the call. And they'll come back for two. It's the end of the over, and that's going to be time for everyone to have a drink. 32 overs have gone then, and Ireland chasing 311 for victory. They're halfway there at uh, 156 for three. Ireland chasing 311 for victory in this first of three one-day internationals. And Lorcan Tucker in his 50th one-day international has scored 50 and he'll be hoping for a few more. Powerful on the sweep. Cupid 
a shot there, fine on the leg side off Noor Ahmed, and how about that? That's into the road. Terrific stuff by Tucker and Tector as well. They've added 122 so far for the fourth wicket in the face of bowling from those six men, including Gazanfa on the one-day international debut at the age of 16. And he's back into the attack now. Change of ends for him. His first spell of four overs was from the Sharjah club end. Now he's going to be operating from the pavilion end. All sorts of chat out there as to where the fielder should be. Long on is coming into the circle at mid-on. It's going to be a, a 45 on the leg side, short fine leg to try and cut off Tucker's pet shot. A little lap sweep. And Gulbadin misfields. That was half a chance there. It was because it was just to his left. And Harry Tector had to get there very quickly if he was going to make it. A quick pick up and release and accurate throw could have made it very interesting. Afghanistan's youngest ever representative in ODI colours. Gazanfa. Edge. There's no slip in position. Good work from Omar Zai. There he is. Youngest ever player to have played for Afghanistan. 16 years, 236 days. The record was previously held by Mujibur Rahman. 16 days, 16 years, 252 days. And both of them made their debuts here at Sharjah against Ireland. Interestingly. How do you think Gazanfa has uh, bowled this evening? Has he acquitted himself, Tina? I've been quite impressed, to be honest. He's been very accurate, I thought. He hasn't looked like he's had any nerves about him. Of course, he's represented Afghanistan before with the Under-19 Youth World Cup. This is a totally different kettle of fish, but I think he showed a lot of confidence. I think there's a lot more to come for. Here's a couple of deliveries from his first spell that he got to really go nicely. I think that ball now, a little bit greasy with being hit into the outfield. That seam won't be as proud, slightly softer. You won't get that much purchase now. As a batter, Tino, how would you have played him? Would you have played him as an orthodox off spinner? Would you have played him as a leg spinner? How would you have played him? Can I answer that in the next over? Which gives you an idea of my answer, I think. Ramat Shah, misfield from him on the edge of the circle. End of the over, 33 gone, 161 for three. Just shut your eyes for a moment and imagine this is a 2020 international. And if you offered Ireland 150 to get in 17 overs, would they take it? They might well. But of course, they have lost those three vital wickets. What's the scenario anyway? A 
And again, Gulbadin pace off. It's a wide, but it's still a clever piece of bowling. They've got to somehow try and collar Gulbadin here because he's just bowling back of a length, taking the pace off. It's very difficult to get after him, isn't it? Yeah, it is indeed. Those are the different challenges you get at this level of the game. Quick single, well run. Just to come back to your question in the previous over, I would probably play Gazanfa as your orthodox offie. And I say that because the last thing you want as a batsman is to play for a carom ball or the one that goes away from you and you get bowled through the gate or an LBW. Dropped. Well, Tector was done by a lack of pace there, and I rather suspect in the end Gulbadin was as well because the ball came back at him a little bit more slowly than I reckon he anticipated. I think it bounced a little bit more on Harry Tector. It certainly hit high up on the bat. And with pace off the ball, he expected the ball to come a lot sooner. You're right. He had the hands ready and in place before the ball got there. When it eventually did, he wasn't in the best position to take the catch. Opportunity for Tekta. It's a lovely piece of timing from Tucker. in real time and you can see that he expected the ball sooner and that's understandable with the swing of the bat that you'd seen and the momentum from Tekta I'm just going back to the point I was making prior to that drop chance I'd much rather get bowled by a carom ball looking to play for an off-spinner, which is what the bowler is. As opposed to be getting bowled through the gate, or maybe getting LBW, to what really should be a stock delivery, playing for another one. If it pitches on leg stump and hits the top of middle, I'm absolutely fine with that. It's a great delivery. I get an outside edge and I'm caught at slip, same goes. Working the ball into the gap, they want to, it's not there. Oh, Mazai down at long on. He's done a handy little job in the context of the game and the time that he's bowled Gulbadin. We know that he's normally a wicket taker when he comes into the attack. Got a ball to go in his fifth over, north for 27. Crunched over mid-wicket for six. Much-needed boundary for Ireland, and it ends the 34th over. 172 for three. Eleven off that last over, thanks to uh, the six of the last delivery. Oh, loafal toss. Could have done more with that. Harry Tector. 
This is the last ball of the previous over. How good a shot is that? So still at the point of contact. And there's nobody anywhere near the leg side boundary. So look at his reaction. Cannot believe it. Gouldin Naib. He forgets that he does the same to other bowlers himself. How often do you hear it said by coaches, by players, you've got to start an over well and you've got to finish an over well. Get in the over and get out of the over. That is the key to putting pressure on batters. Now that over had gone for just five in the first five balls, it ended up being 11 with the six off the final ball. So, so crucial. As you say, to start off and close off overs. Tektor had run too far past the stumps there after that direct hit from Ramat Shah. No chance of the extra run as a result. Yeah, you had to be very quick, so... It's the momentum of trying to get his bat in. Thinking it would just be the single Harry Tector that took him well past. But good that Lorcan Tucker had touched his bat in his crease and looking to come back for another. Down towards long off. And it's gone for four. It's a bold shot. Substitute Riaz Hassan was down there, full-length dive. He thought for a moment he was in the game. He thought he could possibly take the catch. Yeah, good shot. He's gone downtown. Best place in the field to hit the ball. There's no fielders there. The sparing dive. When you look up at their partnership, they're now five short of 150. At the beginning of Aston. They hadn't got to 100 yet, so it's been a very profitable little period. Highest fourth wicket partnership for Afghanistan and ODIs versus Afghanistan, I beg your pardon. Tremendous blow down the ground. A little bit of width. She took advantage of that and the length as well. Full in length. Crunching shot. Tucker now scoring it better than a runner ball. It's been real acceleration from him. Strike rate of 106. Yeah, as we saw in the Afghanistan innings, Ramanullah Gurbaz accelerating after his. 50 runs, you'll feel that one of these two needs to do the same, and you would have to feel that it's Lorcan Tucker. And Harry Tector doesn't score so quickly. In general, bats through the innings. End of the over. Tector will keep the strike. 35 overs gone, 181 for three. Well, what a marvellous partnership we're witnessing between the two T's, Tucker and Tector. Matched each other with their innovation and quality. Certainly the more aggressive one in the partnership has been Lorcan Tucker. And he's going to need to maybe think about three figures plus as will Harry Tector, 16 away from another ODI century. Ireland are very much in this contest. It's 132 and off 90, the required run rate. About 8.6 per over, that's achievable. So Afghanistan pick up 95. Off their last 10. 
if Ireland could get it to a position of needing 95 off the last 10, it could very much be game on, as I wish a very good evening to Devender. Getting a little bit to squeaky bum time, isn't it, for both sides? I don't think either side will feel overly comfortable right now. Well, the match is intriguingly poised at the moment, delicately poised. Just one wicket away, Afghanistan, to find a way back into the contest. From Ireland's perspective, it's about continuing with the same flow. The conditions will become better. As it puts in diving effort, there will be a single. The conditions will become better for betting because the dew will start forming more. It will be very difficult to control the line and length, pulling the right line and length at uh, in the death overs. Also, the record uh, in the death overs hasn't been very impressive when it comes to fast bowling or spinners bowling the last 10 overs for Afghanistan. But just one wicket away. One wicket will change the feeling in the dressing room. the occasional moment a half chance here a half chance there but the way in which they've done it has been so impressive and strike rate to the batters to come Dockrell ignore that career 81 that's significantly in excess of that since he's played as a specialist batter and look at Mark Adair's career strike rate over 110 that's very rare in the ODI game so two big power packed hitters to come to maybe come in and apply the finishing touches They can get it to 90, 95 off the last 10. They'll need a good four or five overs to do that. Maybe Ireland could even start dreaming of crowning this 200th ODI with a famous victory. Very much game on here in charge. It's been a really good contest thus far, isn't it? Nabi, though, is keeping things tight. 184 for three as the 150 partnership comes up. Well, what a partnership, 150 they've put on these two and they've done it with real quality and conviction and they've brought Ireland into the contest. Maybe Afghanistan still slight favourites, but Ireland hanging around in it, certainly. I'm delighted to have a guest come and join me in the commentary box, Dr. Ahmed Khalil Hatam, who is uh, ACB board member. I saw you the other day at the post-match presentation for the test match. Firstly, very welcome along. Great to have you with me in the commentary box. Thank you very much and thank you for having me. Yeah, great to have you with me. I want to just talk a little bit about cricket in Afghanistan, the story of it, the progress that it's making, and the development, not just in Kabul, but right across the country. Uh, yes, um, I believe we've worked on the domestic cricket um, because we believe that on international level, we've reached uh, a position that we are proud of, and we are providing the entertainment to the nation that they deserve. Um, on domestic level, uh, we've worked on zonal cricket, on Spagiza, um, on incentives uh, for the players. Um, we are working on APL. Uh, there is development and progress um, in having the second edition of the Premier League. So we will have good news uh, of APL and others um, pretty soon. Can you give, give viewers and and listeners people listening in just a sense of, of the importance of cricket to afghanistan the nation its cultural identity how popular it is there uh, cricket has become the street sport of afghanistan uh, currently um, we have it across the country in 34 provinces of the country um, it's played in schools universities um, uh, end zones uh, we've been able to uh, for the first time to have afghanistan a the abdalian um, as a team, um, they've had uh, good cricket uh, across uh, different platforms. So um, cricket is now becoming a sensation uh, because we have role models 
who are playing at the national level and, and that uh, triggers the interest uh, among the young generation and that's why we have so many young people coming in um, and ACB currently is working on uh, promoting talent and talent hunt um, wherever um, we can um, in order to have um, alternatives and replacements for the senior players that we've had. Um, we've had a retirement today um, and that's why uh, we believe that we need to have a new and fresh pool uh, of players that will um, shine uh, in cricket and, and will um, give us more opportunities of being proud of our team. And the return here of Fazal Hak one of those stars that you're unearthing. We saw some of them in the graphic there. They branded things up beautifully. You see Rashid Khan, you see Mohammed Nabi. We just had a look at the, the importance of that sport, the growth of it. It's been supported by facilities now across the country too. Um, exactly. Um, we now have um, um, stadiums uh, in different parts of the country. We are working on an international stadium in a complex, in fact. Um, uh, and that will allow us to host inter international cricket in Afghanistan. Um, and um, the more cricket we play, um, uh, the ACB will have more ability in terms of uh, financial resources and potential to, to have more infrastructure for cricket. And that will um, help us host international cricket very soon. That's our hope and that's our goal. Yeah, and that's certainly something I think everything, everyone listening in, watching in, will, will empathise with. You're always hosting your home series away from home. Exactly, that, that, that is an issue. Um, and that kind of um, bars our people from enjoying cricket in the stadium. Um, so we, we hope that we host international cricket um, in Afghanistan. Really good diving stop from Hashmatullah Shahidi, the skipper. Every run is going to count here. It's a single to close out the return of Faruqi. It's 190 for three. It's the state of the game, 121 required off 78 for Ireland. The game very much hangs in the balance. And Andrew Leonard here with you. Delighted to have a guest commentator alongside me, the Afghanistan Cricket Board member, Dr. Ahmed Khalid Hatam. Ahmed, really appreciate you joining me. What about this game? Where is it going? It's such a great rivalry between Ireland and Afghanistan. Uh, yeah, I was looking at the stats and um, in the 30 matches that have been played between the two nations, 16 have been won by Afghanistan, 13 by... Ireland, so we hope that the matches are interesting. Um, they are close, and it's kind of getting difficult for Afghanistan um, right now. It's great to have you up here with us. One of your great statesmen, Mohammed Nabi, a big role to play with his last five overs. Do you think the two countries share a lot from a cricketing perspective, given how they really spurred each other on through the, the associate days to achieve the goal together of test status? Uh, yes, um, in some time, some, some years uh, back, uh, I think they've both played um, a very positive role uh, in helping each other get mature <laughs> in cricket. Um, and now they are, they are. I think there's no doubt there is a huge benefit for Irish cricket and, and also for Afghan cricket coming up together. One from Europe, one from Asia, spurring each other on. They dominated the associate game for the best part of a decade and then got that ascension to test status. And exactly. now it's Afghanistan have kind of pulled away a little bit from Ireland, if anything. Is that fair? Well, yeah, um, because, uh, and, and I, as you mentioned, a um, major role is played by um, the, the heroes that, that we have, the seniors, Mohammed Nabi, Rashid Khan, uh, Mujib, Fazal Haq Faruqi, um, and others. Um, so... I believe they, they have a very uh, positive role and uh, the exposure that they've got from um, leagues um, is contributing to Afghanistan's uh, cricket a lot. 
And certainly, I think if you look at the the ICC and, and in Afghanistan's case, the ACC events that you, you get to play, the Asian Cricket Council events, you become regulars now at the top table. Brilliant 50 over World Cup last year, probably just one win away from a semi-final. Short this time and pulled away with real power for six. Tector moves into the 90s and Ireland very much in this contest. It's 197 for three. Ireland's best partnership against Afghanistan and ODI cricket it belongs to these two young men. A little bit shorter, I think it was the attempted arm ball potentially from Nabi. The shout was catch it, but Tector got a good piece of it to get it all the way for six. <laughs> Doctor, I just want to ask you a little bit as well about about what's next for Afghan cricket, where the journey is is taking you. You obviously want to continue with success at, at senior level and, and youth level too? Um, from the performance of our team um, in the World Cup, I believe that um, Afghanistan needs to play more cricket with um, teams that we normally and we usually don't play against them. Uh, Australia, New Zealand, England, um, South Africa and other countries. Um, I believe now Afghanistan, uh, keeping in view the performance that they've had in the World Cup, deserve to play against those teams. Going to see an overthrow here. Just getting a little sloppy out there. The lack of wickets for Afghanistan telling on them. You spoke about those role models, what the players are. The incentives for them, they're very much in demand in T20 leagues around the world, but it's Afghanistan first for, for all of those players and then that great sort of shop window of those T20 leagues to go with it. Um, yeah, um, we worked on, on the incentives and um, a couple of months back we um, approved uh, increase um, and enhancement in the incentives that we provide uh, to them and this is in addition to the facilities that we've provided to the players. For instance, we've um, established high performance center um, in Afghanistan uh, with international staff um, and experts from different countries of the world. Uh, with experience that they have. Um, so monetary um, incentives, yes. Um, also in terms of support that they needed. Uh, previously, whenever there would be an injury to a player, um, perhaps uh, they will have to take care of it either by themselves or they won't get enough support. Um, now, um, the ACB is doing um, a lot in terms of the support that they require in the high performance center um, in Kabul. So, um, players... This is picked up into the leg side, sorry. Doctor, one bounce, it's going to be four. Lorcan Tucker now moves into the 80s. Where is this game going? That's my next question to you. Are you sitting a little nervously, maybe, for the first time today? Um, yes, yeah, my first time in the commentary box. We've, we've always watched uh, it either um, on TV or uh, from the... Uh, box presentation box but uh, not from the commentary box um it, it appears that you you live with every ball <laughs> that is the life and up that's, here that's a, that's a <laughs> difficult Definitely thing to is. do second hundred has come quicker than the first for ireland and this partnership is growing from strength to strength it's four more back-to-back -back boundaries and even faruqi now going for a few these two sides they never serve up bad games it's always nip and tuck it's always keenly contested and closely fought great rivals exactly doctor final quick question t20 world cup to look forward to both sides you'd expect good performances from them in june um, yes um, um, we at the board as well as the the afghan people they are expecting them to perform um, really good because the exposure and the experience that they've had in the leagues we believe that they and we expect them to bring it uh, to the Afghan side big appeal and given Tucker has a look down at his bats and 
He can't quite believe he's been given out, but the finger's gone up and the partnership has been broken. It was worth 173. And Doctor, I was just about to thank you and say goodbye. You've brought a final bit of fortune to Afghanistan. The fourth wicket falls. Well, um, yeah, I believe uh, it, it's a good good sign for the Afghan team. I don't want to, to um, say it, but um, the Afghans need to, to work more on the the ability to control games. Um, and this was a big wicket, you can see there, just a feather of an outside edge. The keeper immediately knew, as did Fazalak Faruqi. And then the finger went up, it meant that Lorcan Tucker has to depart. He's gone for 85, Ireland 207 for four. George Dockerl, it's going to be at number six. 104 more required for Ireland. They'll need to get that from 11 overs. Continues to improve his strike rate and his quality in his second incarnation as an Irish player. Now as a batter who bowls very occasionally. So, Doctor, I just want to quickly say a huge thanks to you. And really interesting to hear all the developments made in Afghanistan. Wish you all the best for the future. Thank you very much, and thank you for having me here. Thank you. I think you're a natural for what it's worth. Might have you up here again. Thank you so much. That's Dr. Ahmed Khalid Hatam of the ACB, a board member. I'm sure he may see you in the post-match presentation as well. Thank you so much. So now, Harry Tector. He'll be slightly thinking of the landmark of the three figures, and then he'll be thinking about can he get Ireland home alongside George Zockel. This was the dismissal. You could see there the telltale sign. Lorcan Tucker immediately looked behind. He knew just a feather of an edge. And it's ended the most marvellous partnership for Ireland. Lorcan Tucker's highest score in ODIs, 85. Never had, has made an ODI century yet. I welcome back to Vendor. Devender, thanks for allowing the doctor in. Fascinating to hear. I know you know Afghan cricket maybe as well as anyone. Some really significant developments, particularly the facilities back in Afghanistan. A lot of work has been done of late in the last couple of years when it comes to spreading the atmosphere. At the same time, providing more opportunities to the, to the players to come compete in different types of competitions. Well done, well done, well done. Three white ball T20 competitions. National T20, Shpagiza, that is scheduled to be played in the month of April. Then the APL in the month of October. Just love that name, the Spagiza as well. You hear it ring out, don't you, on the coverage. That's a Spagiza. Ireland needs some Spagizas here. In the last 10, that fourth wicket's got Afghanistan just back ahead of the game, marginally. Well, the desperation was setting in, and at that particular time, the needed wicket that has brought the game back into the grasp of the Afghans, they feel that now they, they are in better control of the proceedings. And it's a roll. George Dockrell will now have to play in terms of providing Good support detector. They do have the, the power of Adair to follow too. Spoke about getting it to that 95 off 10. It might be a few more than that, but Ireland very much in the contest and hoping that Dockrell's power, watch the way he'll hit straight down the ground, mid off up in the circle. That'll be a zone he'll target. Keeps it flatter and keeps a bit low, so it's a dot to close out. The second power play, 210 for four.
10 overs left, plenty of options for Afghanistan because of the six bowlers being used. Yeah, plenty of options and uh, still they got over of uh, Nabi. Three more overs for Mohammad Nabi as well, the experience. They got the fast bowlers who bowled impressively in their first spell. And they will love th this situation. And also it affects the wicket fall, affects the, the tempo of the innings as well. The betting rhythm that uh, Tucker and uh, Tector were enjoying, it's going to alter the way because new batsmen have decreased to develop that comfort factor about running between the wicket as well. There is the signal for the end of the second power play. We move into the third. So for Hashmatullah Shahidi, he can have five fielders outside the 30-yard circle. You suspect he'll use all five. Indeed, he will. So three in the deep on the leg, two on the off. Deep mid-wicket and deep backwards square and long on on the leg side, long off and, and deep cover on the off. Tector on 96. One to second, but I don't think he'll get it. It's, it's the left-handed fielder in the deep. Ireland have probably, particularly given their start at 1.34 for three, they've already done more in this contest than they might have expected, given they've been up against it for the vast majority of it. And especially the way they've been able to play the spin bowling. It's been remarkable from the two batters, that marathon partnership. All the wickets going to the fast bowlers. I think that's a great shout. To keep Kazan for the debutante, the mystery spinner, Nora Ahmed's quality and mystery himself and the class and elegance of Mohammed Nabi wicketless across 20.2 overs thus far. No mean feat. The challenge now for George Dockrell. We saw Lorcan Tucker probably not pick Nor Ahmed as well as Harry Tector has. The challenge now for George Dockrell is where does he score off someone he might not be picking? The previous delivery was the googly. So just going to get on and go away from the bat. He hasn't picked it, it's beaten the outside edge. So where does he score? This is the challenge. And coming back to the question of having spinners in last overs, in death overs, they thrive in competition. When they are put into intense competition, that's where they succeed more, the Afghan spinners. Because of their experience of playing T20 cricket four overs, more often than not, they are tested in critical situations, and that's where they've been able to take wickets time and again. Yeah, and that's why they'll be comfortable bowling at this stage. This is a more familiar scenario for them. The reason why, five fielders outside the circle. Same as a T20i outside the power play. I suspect Hector may go 1-1-1, one, 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 get to that landmark. And then you really need to keep an eye on that required run rate. It's starting to grow, not out of control yet, but certainly above where they would like it to be. But the Afghans will feel the comfort. Batsman on 98. Tector, Dockrell on two. With given. We'll take a single. Still 97 more runs required. 214 for four. challenge for Ireland that required run rate is now touching not quite near to 11 10.78 from here done brilliantly well to get themselves into a position to mount a challenge to win this game it's a long way to go in this final power play they'll need to play very very well and someone's gonna have to play a good cameo alongside Harry Tector Here's the challenge, 97 off 54. For Ireland, six wickets in hand. Power hitters to come, particularly Mark Adair, maybe less so Andy McBride at, at number eight. You'd imagine Tector may need to get 140 not out here. And find someone to bat with him. Who's going to play that cameo? And 
Another shout again for the Firebird Universe team doing a brilliant job here. That live feed available on YouTube and we're getting messages all over the world. People tuning in, enjoying the action. Here's Harry Tector on 98. He calls for two. He's going to come back. This is the moment for Harry Tector. It's a fifth one-day international century for the man who is setting new levels with the bat for Ireland. He can add Afghanistan to a list of New Zealand, Bangladesh and Zimbabwe. It's been as good as any of them. Look at those numbers, a career average over 50. As good as maybe we've ever seen in the green of Ireland. Tremendous innings under pressure, losing three wickets early. They needed a partnership involved in a marathon partnership, and that's how he reached the milestone on the leg stump, just clipped through the onside. There was a sense of determination about coming back for the second. Appreciation from everyone, a determined century. A century that might well give a sniff for a come-from-behind victory. Oh, what a spectacular innings. Close to flawless. Sweated a lot given the temperature. It's not that, that warm out there. It's a very pleasant evening. Probably wouldn't be more than 19 or 20 degrees, but he certainly is putting his body on the line for his nation. He's got to the landmark. Now he's thinking, can he guide Ireland home? And one of the big things he's added, you'll have seen this defender from the young man who made his debut, and strode out there with Kevin O'Brien at the Rose Bowl in Southampton, was out there as Ireland sealed a famous victory. He's added real power. And he finds ways to score now at an accelerating rate when the team needs it more so than ever. While Tector's still there, Ireland might think they have a real chance of hunting down this 300-plus total. Different phases into the innings. 19 of uh, he took 19 deliveries for the first 21. Gradual acceleration. And for a young man, he's really had to learn on the job, thrown in at the deep end against England, against South Africa, against the West Indies, against New Zealand. All of that Super League exposure is paying off in spades. What a start to his international career. And if he's still there at the end, Ireland might be tasting victory here in Sharjah. 42 have been bowled, it's 220 for four. Oh, it's edgier seats kind of stuff here in Sharjah. Don't look away. Tector's at the crease. A hundred. What's a hundred? What a sensational player Harry Tector is. Yeah. Incredible cricketer. Another hundred. This extremely talented, well-balanced young man who just looks so unfazed. Whatever the venue, whatever the format, he just takes the batting like a duck to water. Missed down the test match, and then all of a sudden he comes to charge and finds the middle of the play well played. Harry Tector. Now, the hard work really starts. 91 from 48. Get the liquids in. Ahmed Fadai alongside me. What an innings. How do you see this last 48 balls going? Absolutely, it's going to be a cracker of a game. Kudos to Ireland of making a match out of this. They were three down for 34, and they put together the highest partnership against Afghanistan for any wicket of 173 runs. 
I think that was the changing moment. Fazalak Faruqi impacting that breakthrough. I thought maybe Skipper brought Fazalak Faruqi a little late. But listen, this is still a game on. Tekta still out in the middle. He's middling it nicely. He's played a super winning. Yeah, there were chances, half chances on 38. There was a tough chance went out. He was on 79. Dropped by Gulwadeen, but he's cashed him out. Now Nur Ahmed, left arm wrist spin. It's now or never for Ireland. 91 more, 48 balls. You've got to take the wrist spinner on. You've got to take this talented left arm wrist spinner and try and tonk him out of the ground. Slog sweep, one of his favorite areas, Harry Texter against spin. Goes to that area, pumps it, there is protection. What a good game of cricket we've had. Credit to ground staff, produced a really good surface. We felt this morning, this afternoon, it might be a little bit dry and a bit slow, but both batting sides have got accustomed to conditions really quickly, so that bodes well for the rest of this ODI and T20 series. Now George Docker, four from eight. Half chance, little wicket off the edge of the ring. Well, Skipper certainly led from the front. Ashmatullah Shahidi he came down later. The order scored a wonderful 50. That's the reason why you see the score being above 300. And now he's been really, really solid out in the middle. This is that cries of anguish through the stump mic. It was there to hit. It was flat, short. Tector misses out. Need one big over. Requires 11.7. One over of 20. Asking a lot. Not out of the question with these two at the crease. George Dockle has to get a move on here. Five from nine. Yeah, deep man. That's a hell of a catch, I tell you what. That is a beauty. You won't see a better catch all series. Charging in, full pace, diving. Fingers underneath the ball, and Dockrell has to go. That's a spectacular moment here in Sharjah. Well, that's a brilliant catch, I tell you. Nangyal Kharotai, who's yet to make the debut for Afghanistan, he's been out in the middle as a substitute fielder and takes a blinder. The ball was dropping on him. He put the hands behind it and made sure that stays inside his hands. The two players that have played the Under-19 World Cup together, Nangyal Kharotai and Noor Amar taking the wicket. George Dockley departs off to making five. Ireland are 223 for five. Mark Adair, who got pumped with the ball this afternoon, needs to do something special with the bat. Fully capable. Very clean striker of the ball, but he is up against it, up against the wrist spin of Nur Ahmed and his bag of tricks. Straight away, the googly at the back of the hand, pitching outside leg, and Adair gets up the other end, but what a bit of fielding we have just seen. Talk us through this bit of fielding, sub-fielder. I mean, talk us through, enjoy watching it. It's just so beautiful to the eyes. Look at the effort. Nangyar Kharoda has just been amazing out in the field. He's a sharp fielder, a wonderful cricketer. Looking forward to making his debut, hopefully. Excellent from Nur Ahmed. Just four off the over and the big wicket of George Dockrell. 2.24 for five. Well, the match is brilliantly poised here. Ireland needing 87 runs of 42 deliveries. 
can they pull it off? They've done it in the past. Can they do it again? Well, Harry Tector with another ODI son. Just gets better and better. Lorcan Tucker played beautifully for his 85, the Ireland wicketkeeper, who's had a wonderful couple of years, but now Ireland need to do something out of the ordinary. One more side back into the attack ball. Well, the new ball swung the ball, got a little bit of movement with that new rock. Now he's got a chance to close out and pick up a couple at the back end. Good captaincy from Ashmatullah Shahidi, keeping Nur Ahmed as gun spinner with a couple up a sleeve for the back end. Leg side for Mark Adair, that's where he likes to go. He's going to have to run them, I think. When Mark Adair hit that, he reckoned that was a boundary. Again, good from Ashmatullah getting the field in the right position, but it's all to do with Harry Tector now. You can just hear the stump, I'm not sure if you're picking up the stump, Mike. I reckon when Mark Adair, Mark Adair hit that, he felt like it was going for four. And Harry Tector just said to him, you just stood there and admired the shot instead of running. A little bit of interaction between Tector and Mark Adair. A bit of pressure on the captain. Ashwatullah Shahidi. He knows this wicket, Tector's wicket, game is done. I like the intent. I like when you have the full 100% out in the middle. And I like the fact that he went after him as well. Like when he missed on a loose ball, it was the stump mic that we heard over, oh, Harry. And he was like telling himself why I missed that. So he would suddenly go and tell the non-striker and the batter playing with him that he might just have to run harder. I mean, speaking about the fact, Ireland has in the past chased 300 plus runs. You see 329 against England. 329 against England again in 2020, 307 against Netherlands in 2011, and then 307 against West Indies. So can they do it? It's very difficult, but it's always gettable. You don't need to tell me. I was there for most of them. I know Ireland are very capable of chasing down 300. There at the end in one of those games in Nelson against the West Indies, watching my good mate John Mooney Shoulder the ball over the keeper's head for four leg buys to get Ireland a historic win. Watch Kevin obviously and the Ireland team knock off England and Bangalore. Well, that's great bowling. That is top class bowling. Spears the Yorker in. That's why many feel that this young bowler, this young all rounder. Have a look at this bowl. Have a look at this delivery. Brilliant New Yorker, Omar Zai, IPL auction. After that auction, all these players signed for millions of dollars and huge sums. Pat Cummins, Mitch Stark, two and a half million USD. A lot of people said this pick, this man on your screen is the pick of the auction. Omar Zai, Gujarat Titans, I'm sure Rashid Khan had a word and said, listen, we've got to get this young lad while we can because he's going to be an absolute superstar. That's going to be a no ball. That will be a no ball. Accidental, well, that will result in a free hit. And Harry Tector was very quick to get down to the striking end. <laughs> Wanting the opportunity, free hit. That's because of the dew that we're talking about. Not talking about Ireland having chased down. Yeah, that was really awkward. Look at that. That's a very awkward height, absolutely a no-ball. So talking about 300-plus runs been chased, are you at the wrong place? Do you not have to be out in the field <laughs> helping chase down this big total? Well, I can't get any runs when I'm retired in the commentary box, so... Free hit, long handle, leg side, six. Well, he's hurt himself here, Harry Tector, or else he's got a bit of cramp, I think. Been out there for a long time. He was cramping after coming back for the second to get us. Don't worry about running, Harry. Fours and sixes will do. I tell you what, the Afghanistan fans won't be liking the cramps because all of a sudden they might remember Glenn Maxwell. 
in a lot of cramps, yet he chased down that target after having lost so many wickets early on. Yeah, he looks in pain. He's, he's a little bit uncomfortable here, Harry Tector. He's got a bit of cramp and a bit of a sore groin. He's absolutely knackered. He's got a sore hip from when he dived in for a single. I hope. I hope he hasn't hurt his groin. 44 done, 237 for five. Another six overs of a game left. 74 runs required. The Centurion Tector still out in the middle, 114 and still batting. With his previous best being 140, can he bring Ireland home? Great stats, Harry Tector, the one unfortunate stat, no century has resulted in a winning cause. So, Arlo fans, you'll be hoping that changes today, but another top class innings from the young dub. Last over for Nur Ahmed. The bad, good keeping, excellent gloves. Ikram Ali Kiel, that's superb keeping, a lot going on. In front of the keeper there, there was turn, there was bounce, there was a bat flailing in front of your eyes. And just have a look at the glove work. Rises with the bounce. Beautiful. And again, top class bowling here, Nur Ahmed. And that's what he brings into the party. He was bowled for consecutive seven overs by the captain when he was brought into the 19th over. And he was not able to make an impact. And I tell you, it was Tucker who had actually taken him on. Harry Tactor goes down and sweeps this beautifully for a maximum. Just that we were talking about how he'll be picked up. He shuffles across and smashes this for a maximum. Yeah, flat. Goes across the stumps. Previous two balls stayed leg side. Harry Tactor this side. This time gets across the stumps and a flat bat. Six over that favourite square leg. No side has ever successfully chased down a 300-plus score here in an ODI. Googly pitching outside leg. 285, I'm led to believe, is the highest successful run chase at this venue. It's been done twice. 285 for four, West Indies versus Pakistan in 93. And 285 for two, Australia versus Pakistan back in 2019. So 300 plus, never been done. Well, no better time. Good from Noor Ahmed. He knows Mark Adair is only going to look leg side. So he's making him fetch it from a long way outside the line of all stump. Mark Adair really should be thinking over extra cover here as an option. Can't just think one side marker there. He's a better batter than that. Got to think offside as well. Can't just think leg side. Noor Ahmed has done one for 61. 45 ball, two, four, four for five. Well, Noor Ahmed has completed his quota. Afghanistan have got another five overs to bowl. Farooqi has got two up his belt. Omar Zai has got two. Ghazanfar has got four. Gulbadeen and Navi two can bowl. So it'll be interesting to see. Who the skipper brings in. Ireland will be needing 67 of the remaining five overs. Five overs remaining. Ahmad Fadai alongside me. Who are your options here? Who are you going to as captain to close out the innings? Well, absolutely, Fazalak Farooqi to finish his quarter alongside Asmatullah Omar Zai. So the thing that remains is for the one over. Gulbadin is bowled nicely. He's really deceived with the slower balls. But I'll want to go for Ghazanfar because he's really attacking. He's not scared and he could possibly get the wicket and that too of uh, the dangerous looking Tector. So you'd, you'd entrust a 16-year-old debutante 
with one of the last five overs before Mohamed Nabi. All the experience Mohamed Nabi has, for example, you would go with a 16-year-old debutante over someone who's played 160 ODIs if you're going with a spinner. You asked me my opinion, and I, that, that's what I think. Why? I just thought that he looked a little dangerous today. He created opportunities, and he's not scared to attack. And also, if Afghanistan can get in that position to close this game out, the youngster potentially to get his first wicket. Fazal Haq who's been exceptional today. Generally bowled around the wicket. First over and a half, maybe two overs, he bowled over the wicket, looking for a bit of swing, and then went around the wicket with the angle that got rid of Andrew Balberni and Curtis Camphor. This game just drifting away from Ireland, not for the lack of effort or lack of skill, just through the sheer magnitude of chasing over 300 in charge and never been done before. I felt it was going to be a steep chase. Well, I think Ireland should chin up. The game is still not gone. 65 runs, 28 deliveries. You might just think for the T20, T10 kind of cricket played all over the world. Still might be chaseable. The Centurion out there, he can hit the ball in cleanly and nicely. But whatever it is, the result, the effort, 100%, they have to be proud of it. Really made a game out of this. Mid-off inside the ring for Tector. Keep an eye on the hand and the wrist of Faruqi. Top class bowling, that is excellent. Two Yorkers in this over, he's bowled to Harry Tector with the man back at deep backward point. You're asking your bowler to deliver and then match the field. Look at that, that is brilliant. Tector feels he missed out, but actually, field matches the ball. That's a brilliant point that you in the last overs, bowl according to your field. So you're getting a fielder at the deep point and then bowling according to your field is a luxury for a captain. It's been really nice. Death over spell from Fazilak Farooq. He's improved. Again, high class, high class, showing all his experience here. Fazilak Farooq. He's got enough pace, he's brisk without being express. Yeah, just trying to guide a past third that's inside the ring, but Noor Ahmed is back patrolling the boundary as well, so just three or four balls. I feel like two balls have to go either over the ropes or at least for a boundary. Watch out for a slow one. Why would you bother bowling a slow one? You're just peeling off Yorkers for fun here. This is exceptional. Well, absolutely, this is one over to watch again and again because he's really bowled into perfect areas. Well, you think on this surface, slower balls into the surface was probably the way to go because the ball's not coming out of the pitch with any velocity, but actually Fazal Hak is just thinking totally differently. He's taking the pitch out of the equation and just backing his Yorker bowling ability. This is, well, it's stuff of dreams, really, as a captain. You trust your bowler to run up and stick it in the block hole. Brilliant! What a ball! What an over! Fazal Hak has bowled five brilliant Yorkers in that over, and Mark Adair has been done, neck and crop. Well, that's brilliant bowling. He bowled Yorkers off to Yorkers. It's just that it missed the stumps. And finally turned the over. He bowled one perfect into the channel. Mark Adair has no answer to this. Fazalak Farooqi looks pumped up. He's bowled brilliantly today. 
He's got four wickets to his name. What a night he's had. Marker Day departs after making four Ireland or 247 for six. Final moments of this first ODI and Andrew McBride comes in. Ireland's number eight, Southpaw. Clean striker, good cricketer. Just four overs remaining. Best of 79 versus Sri Lanka and Malahide. Many, many years ago now. At that stage, a lot of people thought McBride might just turn himself into a genuine all-rounder. This is unbelievable bowling but the over the whole over how Fazal Hak Faruqi constructed this over exemplary bowling fast in the block hole use your angle and Mark Adair had no answers Harry Tector has watched as Lorcan Tucker George Dockrell and Mark Adair have all come and gone I have a question. Was it was it the right thing to do to give Mark Adair the strike? How about Harry Tector staying on the strike and trying to hit a few big shots? What do you reckon? No, you need plenty. You need 15, 16 over. And Mark Adair is a very, very capable batter with just top class bowling. That's all it was. Fazal Hak Faruqi, that was unbelievable. Faruqi coming back. <laughs> Fazal Haq Faruqi coming off what was a very, very disappointing tour to Sri Lanka. Fazal Haq Faruqi bowled 24 overs in Sri Lanka in three matches, one for 186. So confidence would have been hurt. He's come back today absolutely marvellous. Four for 40 from his nine. Top class, young bowler, skillful. Got enough pace. Started his career. Started his career as a swing bowler, but now he's got some exceptional skills with his death bowling and his away swing as well. Really working hard on his wrist position. Afghanistan most likely unless something extraordinary happens gets over the line here I'm at what about an area a potential area that they can look to work on because you're always trying to improve game on game any area that maybe they won't be quite so happy with I think a bit sloppy they were in the field just a bit dropped a few chances it's always important that you import your ground field you improve your ground fielding And it is that all your fielders should be ready for it. Is that another wicket? Yes, Matt Bryan departs. Asmatullah Omar Zai doing the damage alongside Fazalat Faruqi. What a sight this is for Afghanistan. One area that Afghanistan had to have improved. Bowling in the death overs. And they have found the answer to it. Brilliant bowling. Gulbadeen in the deep. It's a very safe pair of hands. Pace on, seam up, McBride flipping it, nowhere near the middle. Looked like he's trying to place it as opposed to hit it for six, and McBride, it was brief, gone for a duck. 2.49 for seven.
Graham Hume, the new man. Not renowned for his batting. But well, this afternoon, Graham Hume picked up one for 40. Well, it's coming to an end fairly quickly here. Dawkin Tucker and Harry Tector had Ireland dreaming, believing. Farooqi's got four wickets. He hasn't got a five. He's got one more over to bowl after this. McBride departing in this over of Asmatullah Omarzai. So he's got one over left. Be interesting to see if he can complete his five. Among the pacers for Afghanistan, he alongside Gulbadin Naib are the two bowlers who've got the most four wicket hauls, four times for Farooqi and four times for Gulbadin. So we'll have to wait and see in the coming over. This is the end of another successful over for Afghanistan. Only four runs, one wicket. Ireland are 251 for seven. Rookie reverse from Harry Tector. What a lovely shot that is. Why not have a bit of fun? You've played out of your skin. It's all on your shoulders now, Harry Tector. And clever as well, because he knows Faruqi's going to go for that Yorker, so he just brings out the reverse ramp. It's, it's, it's stylish, I tell you. It's so beautiful. One forty is CB for Harry Tector. That's leg side. There is protection. He'll want to. Whether he can get back or not with that injury or that sore hamstring, he's going through the pain barrier for his country. I tell you that this is high class stuff. One forty is best versus Bangladesh and Chelsea. That was a great knock. He's got a chance for one hundred and fifty here. Albeit it will be most likely a losing cause, but the chance to get 150 in an ODI. He's played brilliantly. It's at times when players come out, played brilliantly. But look at Fazalak Faruqi. He bowled Yorkers into perfect channel. He was just missing the stump and last ball, bang, on to the wickets. She has to catch it. You're coming, Harry. Should get back for a couple. Yeah, that was a great little montage of Faruqi's skill. For well, five Yorkers in that over. Previous Faruqi on, over. On, he bowled five Yorkers that were nearly, I'm not going to say they're all absolutely nailed on. There was a couple low full tosses, but that's perfectly acceptable. I'd rather bowl a low full toss than get it wrong the other side and bowl one in the slot because if you bowl in the slot it goes for six down the ground so the slightly lower full toss is more than acceptable four for 40 you mentioned that five for can he three balls gotta be gotta go for the stumps gotta get greedy yeah that's when uh, bowlers start league and runs but i like the tactic from hashmatullah shahidi Trying to close the game with the front line bowlers, and then that one over left, he wants to make sure that he's completely negated the chances for Ireland to chase this down. So, continuing with Fazalak Farooqi, bringing in Asmatullah Omar Zai to keep that last over or to penultimate over is really a good tactic for me. And you still want the teenager to bowl the last, do you? You want to give that youngster that last over, don't you? Honestly, I want him to take a wicket. I mean, taking nothing away from Ireland, they have played brilliantly, they deserve to win. 
particularly Harry Tactor. He's been brilliant and so pleasing to see. But that youngster has really shown courage and skill. He missed on chances. There was one, if there was a slip fielder, Harry Tactor could have been gone. One went into his hand but couldn't stick into his hand. So a wicket will really give him a lot of confidence. Interesting conundrum really for Afghanistan cricketer how they get all these mystery and wrist spinners into their sides Nur Ahmed, Rashid Khan, Kais Ahmed, Waka Samakil was brilliant in the ILT20 Zahir Khan playing franchise cricket around the world Israel Hook Naveed, Israel Hook Naveed, leg spinner, talented, former on the 19 international, played big bash cricket. How on earth do you get all these players game time? Ireland are crying out for a mystery wrist spinner. 48 done. Ireland 262 for seven. Ireland putting together a very good performance. Just looks a little late to chase down 311 as a target set by Afghanistan never been chased in this ground the highest chased has been 285 Afghanistan looks set to secure the first win can they do it 49 required in the two overs twelve balls first to three ODIs don't forget Omar Zayed to bowl the penultimate, 49th. And Harry Tector on strike, 135 red. This is that full toss, it was a little, little outside edge. Tector, I think, just fatigue. First of three ODIs, of course. Second will be on the 9th of March, followed by the third ODI on the 12th of March in charge. Then we've got T20 fun. 15th, 17th, and 18th of March here in Sharjah. So if you're in the area, get down and watch. If not, make sure you tune in on the TV. We'll be here to bring you all the live scenes and action. Should be a quality series. I'll tell you what, the Afghanistan bowling coach. Hamid Hassan. Well... He should be getting a bonus. Where's Hamid? Where are you, my friend? My old buddy, Hamid Hassan, ex tearaway quick bowler. He has got his bowlers bowling superbly here. His bowlers have been superb tonight. Their death bowling skills, which is something Hamid Hassan was known for. 90 mile an hour bowler, Yorkers, reverse swing. He's in having his dinner. Well done, Hamid. Nice to see Hamid involved and learning from the likes of Jonathan Trott as well. Well, absolutely. They've been working with youngsters, bringing him along into the camps, working really hard with them. Every time you go and ask him why the boys are not performing, he'll tell you we've been constantly telling him, practicing with him, and you see the dividends. There's been some superb death overs bowling for me. I've seen this in a very long time, I tell you, it's been so pleasing to eyes. Azmatullah Omar Zai, Fazal Faruqi, really doing the job for Afghanistan. Again, wide Yorker. Well, I watched Hamid Hassan bowl in a tournament not that long ago, three months ago, I reckon, in India. He was playing in a league there for retired players, and he was still bowling pace, still getting the Yorkers in, still competitive as ever. He's travelling to Sri Lanka. <laughs> He's going to be playing, so you might just see him again in action. Well, he'll be bowling against my brother then. My brother's batting. My brother probably tonk him all around Sri Lanka like he used to do in the ODI format. You guys mark this. We'll have to see who... Gets the batter off another. Well, what you will not know is that my brother Kevin and Muhammad Nabi were on the MCC Young Cricketers together. Nabi, Hamid Hassan, Kevin O'Brien, William Porterfield, Gary Wilson, all part of the MCC Young Cricketers 
back in the early 2000s. So, Hamid Hassan and Kevin are very good friends. Very, very good friends. And they go back a long time. 46 off seven, but more importantly, one ball left at the 49. Then will the secret will be revealed. Who will bowl the last over? Well, thick outside edge. Third is inside the ring. Graham Hume won't care, Jock. Boundary to finish the 49th. Umar's eyes done. Good spell. Two for 47. 269 for seven. Last over. 42 runs required. Harry Tector won in innings that has been, unfortunately, just didn't get the partners stay alongside him. Tucker, you would think, could do the job, but just couldn't finish. Last over of the first ODI here, Sharjah. Been an excellent game of cricket. Plenty of runs. This is Graham Hume. Thick outside edge. Omar's eyes went for that Yorker, missed it. Ball well though. Omar's like, well, you're disappointed. You're not happy. I am. We just saw a brilliant game of cricket. What a game this has been. But your spinner, your 16-year-old didn't get the last up. You're going to have to have a word with the skipper after the game. I think we should go together and talk to him. I never confront a captain. Always gave the umpire and the captains my full respect. Opposition players, I'm not so sure. Hamid Hassan, bowling coach. Well done, sir. Your bowlers have not let you down tonight. High skill, excellent plans, and execution. Most importantly, was right on point. Slow ball from Gulbadin. You're not going to get pace from Gulbadin. He's going to bowl so many, as many slower balls to you. He's really bowled nicely, I believe, on this track. He's the only bowler in the Afghanistan side that has actually bowled slower deliveries more often. And I think as you earlier said, Niall, that this wicket has really played nicely for the slower bowlers, for the slower balls to say. No timing, that's a shot of fatigue and that will be the end of Harry Tector. Gulbadi Nabe. In for the final over, takes pace off the ball. Harry Tector has played outstandingly well, but in the end, fatigue has set in. Naby takes a simple catch. And any hope Ireland had of getting anywhere closer is now gone. Well, his previous career best has been 140. He could not breach that. That's the only milestone. Other than that, he's done a really nice job. Problem was, there was no one else that stayed alongside him to give him company Gulwadeen Naib taking the wicket Muhammad Nabi safe hands 138 brilliant innings Iron Ender 271 for 8 Ireland eight down. Theo Van Wuckum, the new man, who bowled really well today. It was good to see the Ireland left arm. But they should get an overthrow. They should get a freebie. No, they won't. And left arm spinner Theo Van Wuckum, who bowled really well. Three for 55 from his 10 this afternoon. Coming in with a thankless job, really, but. Opportunity to maybe put a couple over the ropes. Well, this is the end of Harry Tector. Pure fatigue. He was there to hit, truth be told, but he's been out there for so long. Put in such a great shift. 
Safely caught by Naby in the deep. You are not going to get any pace, Gulbadi Naib. This has been brilliant from Afghanistan. Afghanistan needed this win, especially after the loss in the Test match. They haven't been able to win any games in the 2024. As for the one-day international format is concerned, after five consecutive losses, this is the first for Afghanistan, and they'll take it. They lost two games in the Cricket World Cup, and after that against Sri Lanka. You know, toe of the bat off the final ball, and it's a slow ball. What else from Gulbadeen? Afghanistan have triumphed here in the first ODI charger by a fairly comfortable 35-run margin in the end. Didn't have it all the wrong way. Ireland fought for large parts of the game, but the first win for Afghanistan after five consecutive defeats. A confidence booster for Jonathan Trott and his coaching staff. After a disappointing loss in Abu Dhabi in the Test match and a drubbing in Sri Lanka, Hashmatullah Shahidi's men have a W in the column. Smiles are plenty. Their skill with the ball was exemplary when push came to shove and the pressure was on. As Harry Tector and Lorca Tucker added 173, the game was really in the balance. In the end, Afghanistan had too many on the board. 310 for five, we always felt, was a very, very large score here in Sharjah. 285 is the highest successful run chase at this venue in an ODI. So a win for Afghanistan, a win for the men in blue. And a very happy Jonathan Trott and co. Well, the rivalry between Ireland and Afghanistan, the equation has now come down to... 13-17, Afghanistan have won 17 of the ODIs played between them and 13 to Ireland. What a proud moment. There's Afghanistan securing the win. It's always nice to start with the win. As for the series are concerned, they'll be looking to seal the series. Brilliant performance. Started with the bat. Rahmanullah Gurbaz getting 100 and then complemented by the bowlers. Brilliant bowling. Fazalak Farooqi being front line with four wickets for only 51 runs well, disappointing result for Ireland they won the toss wanted the ball first Hashim Tola Shahidi he was delighted he wanted a bat first so both captains got to do what they wished to do I thought Afghanistan played superbly well their template with the bat set the tone and allowed them to have a real assault at the back end of the batting display that just took the game out of Ireland's reach. For Ireland, there'll be work to be done. They ball well in stages, never really threatened. That will be the key frustration for Heinrich Milan and the bowling coach, Ryan Eagleson, and all the coaches that they never really threatened to take wickets con continuously, not like Afghanistan that had good skill, the wrist spin and mystery spin of the teenage debutant Kazanfer. A few more tricks up their sleeve. But for Ireland, a disappointing loss, but games will come thick and fast, so all is not lost just yet. But an excellent win all the same for Afghanistan after losing five on the spin. Ireland chasing 311 to win, got off to a really poor start. Andrew Balberni looked all at sea, cleaned up by Fazal Hak Faruqi. Paul Sterling, a judged caught behind. We felt like the wave was a bit of bat between ball and Harry Tector, 138, and Lorca Tucker, 85, to two standout performances. OK, let's head downstairs to Brian Murgatroyd, who's got a superstar alongside him. Nabi, thanks very much for being with us. A comfortable win in the end. Were you ever nervous there with Harry Tector and Lorca and Tucker in their partnership? Uh, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Yeah, it's a big partnership in the middle, yeah. It's, and also the wicket is uh, straight, is nothing uh, for spinner as well. Also a lot of dew with ball. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, we try our best and uh, decide to ball on, uh, on the right line and length. It will be tough to uh, score big shots, yeah. Talk to us about Rahman Allah Gurbas, his sixth one-day international 100. Outstanding. Yeah, it's a, he's a brilliant uh, player and also he, he utilised a, a great uh, today after a uh, few bad innings uh, in ODIs and uh, he shows he, that uh, he's a great player. Yeah. 
And what about Faisal Haq Farooqi's bowling this yeah. evening? Yorkers to order. What an outstanding yeah, it's, style. Yeah, uh, a tough to bowl uh, on a wet ball, Yorkers. And uh, he delivered uh, quite really good here yeah, today. And you're, you're still hitting him OK? Pardon? You're still hitting them OK? Yes, uh, so far going well, yeah. I'm trying my best and on the fitness as well. Yes, still going. Nabi, thanks very much for being with us and congratulations for the win this evening. Thank you. Good to hear from Mohammed Nabi, legend of the game in Afghanistan. Part of the victorious Afghanistan side today. Six bowlers used, right up top, left arm skill. Fazl Hakfrugi with the new ball, exceptional, but really impressive at the back end. Omar Zai, two for 47. You're going to see a lot of him as an all-rounder moving forward. The big talky boy, Kazanfer, on debut, 16 years of age. Great for him, great achievement for him and his family, Gulbadeen. Picking up one, Nuram, a little bit expensive, but picked up one for 61. Ireland, 275 for eight. Well, highlights of the second innings. Paul Sterling got a good one. Yeah, Basmatullah Omar Zai providing that breakthrough, and after that, it was Fazal Farooqi in his fourth over he got Wilburney out and then in his sixth over he came back and got another wicket but it was really good batting from Harry Tector. Kampfer didn't have a very good day today, dropped the catch, came to bat and really didn't make him big with this partnership 173 runs for the four wicket this is the highest for any wicket against Afghanistan for Ireland they really played brilliantly played according to the situation punished the loose balls Hit shots all around the ground. Yes, Norka Tucker and Harry Tector, two players that know each other very well. They enjoy batting with each other. They complement each other really well. Norka Tucker has been an exceptional cricketer for Ireland for the last 18 months. Harry Tector had two, maybe three lives, had a little bit of luck, but you need that. If you're going to get a biggie in an ODI, you need a bit of luck along the way. And it was at this stage, Ireland were right in the contest. Harry Tector and Lorca Tucker were taking the game to Afghanistan and then Fazl Haq back into the attack, a little edge, and Lorca Tucker had to depart. This is the moment Harry Tector brought up yet another ODI ton, charging back for a second. A wonderful innings. Catch of the match of this. Subfielder on, charging in, diving, plucking, an inch off the turf. Yeah, that was brilliant from Nangyal Harote. Really a blind uh, Noor Ahmed got his first wicket. And after that, it looked really difficult. Tector tried, hit a few big shots, but some brilliant bowling towards the depths made sure that Afghanistan win this comprehensively. Fazalak Farooqi and Asmatullah Omar Zai cleaning up the tail and doing the job for Afghanistan at the end. This is how the centurion Tector fell after making 138 runs. Brilliant innings. Yeah, brilliant innings, but in a losing cause once again. So the first ODI here in Sharjah, Afghanistan, really good. 310 for five, built around Ralamalu Gurbaz, 121. Ibrahim played well for his 60. Ireland in reply, 275 for eight. Tector, exceptional, 138. Lorca took and play well. Afghanistan winning by 35 runs, and they lead the series 1-0. OK, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll hear from the captains and the player of the match.
Um, Yes, hello and welcome to the post-match presentation for the first ODI of the Eddie Salat Cup, Ireland versus Afghanistan 2024. Well, we've seen another classic encounter between these two great rivals. The best part of 600 runs scored here at the historic Sharjah ground and ultimately Afghanistan ran out worthy 35 run victors. Firstly, please allow me to introduce you to my presentation party. I'll introduce you to the gentleman starting to my left. Firstly, Mr. Kazi Hediatullah Ghazi. He's the Afghan Council of Abu Dhabi. We also have Mr. Mohammed Sabir, the senior manager of Ding. And next to Mr. Mohammed Sabir is Dr. Ahmed Khalid Hatam, a board member of the ACB and the chairman of the board of the Supervisors Bank of Emili Afghan. You're very welcome, gentlemen. Nice to see you all. Secondly, a huge thanks to all of our sponsors for this tour and indeed this series. Eddie Salat Afghanistan, the title sponsor, also Super Cola, Bank Mili Afghan and Hedge Sachs for their valuable contribution towards the sport of cricket. Now, we have two awards to give out and we'll hear from both captains. So let's start with the first award. The first award will be presented by Dr. Ahmed Khalid Hatam. And this is going to be for the stylish player of the match, and it will be a check for 25,000 Afghani. We saw two marvellous centuries this evening that lit up the start of the white ball leg of the tour. And the stylish player of the match, it goes to Ireland's Harry Tector for his outstanding innings and losing cause of 138 off 147 balls. A fifth career ODI century for Harry Tector, who continues to go from strength to strength. Now, our second award is the major award for the player of the match this evening. They're going to receive a cheque for 50,000 Afghani that will be presented by Mr. Mohammed Sabir, the senior manager for Ding. That's going to be the first part of the award. That then be the player of the match trophy presented by Mr. Ghazi Hediatullah Ghazi, who is the Afghan counsel for Abu Dhabi. It is the second of those marvellous centuries that we saw a sparkling innings from Ramana Lagurbaz. 121 of 117 balls, 8 4 6 6 is the player of the match. So he's going to receive his cheque for 50,000 Afghani. Presented by Mr. Mohammed Sabir and Ramanullah. The awards keep coming. If you could now come up towards Mr. 
Kazi Hediatullah Ghazi and receive the player of the match trophy, the official trophy, and pose for another photo. And we've got a little, a little star who wants to come in and get involved in the photo. <laughs> Ramanul, I'd ask you to come and have a chat to me now as well. Many congratulations. Thank you, gentlemen. Oh, I love this. We've got, we've got a special guest as well. Ramanul, firstly, you must be so happy with a victory for the team. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Yeah, actually, you know, it was a really good day for us, I think. Uh, but Ireland played really well. Um, they come back really uh, good. Uh, but yeah, happy. What did you want out there when you were batting with Ibrahim Zidran? Another fantastic partnership. You put on 150 with him. Were you always thinking of 300 plus? Uh, yes, always uh, feel excited to batting with Ibrahim Zidran. You know, the combination, the communication is so good with him. Uh, yeah, just uh, wicket was not easy in the start, but uh, I, we just thought we understand each other. So we should spend time in the wicket and then we can catch up later. And we did the same. I think that was the result was in our hand. What about the chase for Ireland? Harry Tector and Lorcan Tucker really put it up to you. With, with 10 overs to go, there wasn't much between the sides. Were you worried about maybe going down to defeat? Yes, honestly, they played really well. Um, the, the way that we start the bowling, it was uh, brilliant. But uh, the way that they come back to the game, that was, uh, that was also fantastic. But I can, I can give the credit out to our bowlers. The due was uh, too much and the ground. But uh, yeah, they were, they were so consistent to the land, uh, line, to the plan. Um, yeah, I think uh, overall the game was really nice and enjoy. Okay, finally, I don't know how much you look at the records. That's your sixth ODI century. You're already the, the holder of the most centuries in ODI cricket for Afghanistan. Do you have your eyes set on 20, 30 throughout your career? You, you've had a flying start. Um, exactly. I uh, feel excited with the 100, but uh, I never focus on the record that what I have. But yeah, I just always try to play positive for my country and uh, do something better for my country. I think, uh, yeah, that's the most important things for me. Um, yeah, but Ricard will come when you play well. <laughs> Ramanola, player of the match. Many congratulations. Thank you so much. Okay, a delighted Ramanola Gurbaz and co. We'll wave goodbye. Okay, time to speak to both captains. We'll start with the captain of Ireland. That's Paul Sterling. Lovely moment for Ramanola Gurbaz, the player of the match. Sterling, well, what a fantastic contest between two great rivals. Do you feel that they deserve that win tonight? I think so. I think they played better in patches of the game that we didn't necessarily go well in. So I think they deserved it in the end, but we've certainly got a few positives to take. What about the toss? I have to ask you about it. Do, do you look back and maybe would you have liked to have had first use of that track? Would you like to have batted first? No, I don't think so. I think you've got your reasoning before the game and with hindsight, that doesn't change. OK, what about the makeup of this team? You seem to be quite set on, on going with five out and out bowlers, but as a consequence, it means Mark Adairis to bat up at seven, Andy McBride at eight, and you have a little bit of a tail. Is that something you'll stick with or you maybe look at some of your all-round options throughout the series? It's just something we'll discuss as a side. It's, you know, the ODI spectrum for the next three or four years is actually... Uh, we've got a few a few years to tour to take that in. You know, it's not something that we'll think about too drastically over the next couple of weeks, but it's something we talk about and discuss, and we'll we'll take that forward. Plaudits will obviously go to Harry Tector again, but that partnership taking Ireland from 34 to three to 207 for four between him and Lorcan Tucker that was world class batting out there. That was outstanding. Yeah, I think that's what we ask as a batting group is if you get in and you go big, those two lads bat out of their skin today, and it's something they've been doing for a long time now. OK, finally, you think you can narrow that gap in, in the remainder of the series, confident to maybe turn it around when you 2-1? Hopefully, yeah, that's the plan, certainly. Um, I th again, we, we went well in patches today and we just need to be a little bit better next time. Sterling, hard luck today. See you in a couple of days. Thanks a lot. Cheers. OK, uh, Paul Sterling, understandably a bit disappointed, but plenty of options for him on that road to the 2027 ODI World Cup where Ireland is trying to qualify for in due course. OK, time to speak to Afghanistan's captain, Hashmatullah Shahidi. Well, Ashmatullah, firstly, many congratulations. Great to see you with a smile on your face. Do you feel you were comfortable in the end or were you feeling a bit threatened as that Tector and Tucker partnership was really getting going in the second innings? Uh, Bismillah rahman rahim Yeah, first of all, I'm happy about uh, my team's performance. Uh, honestly, if I say to you that the moment when they both were playing, they played really well. So I was a little bit uh, like, uh, I was feeling that uh, uh, they are doing good, so we have to do something special for that moment. 
And as a consequence, all the talk about the batting, Tector, Tucker, the brilliance of Ramon El Gerbaz, yourself with a, with a marvellous 50, we probably haven't spoken about the bowlers, but Fazal Akfaruki, sensational, particularly at the death, and also with a new ball, in fact. Yeah, yeah, uh, we know about the uh, due factor that uh, it might be due because in the practice sessions what, uh, that we did uh, last time, there was due and uh, I told the boys at the beginning that maybe due factor will come, but uh, first 10 overs are very important that we bowl well. So our bowlers, uh, uh, first 10 hours was very good, especially the way Fazal Haq bowled. And uh, I'm very impressed uh, with the blockers that they bowled in the death overs. <laughs> He was nailing those Yorkers. Finally, that opening partnership for you, it's, it's really transformative for the future of your ODI cricket and your, your T20I cricket. You have two real stars there, not just Raman al but Ibrahim Zidran too. Yeah, uh, they both are playing very good uh, since they are partners in the opening. So they're always uh, playing positive and uh, the, the, the positive thing for the team uh, when they both are in in the match, so uh, I'm hopeful that they carry on the same momentum for the team in the future and also uh, win games for us. Ashmatullah, one nil up in the series. Many congratulations. Thanks for talking to us. Thank you very much. Thank you. So that's Ashmatullah Sh Shahidi, and that will wrap up the post-match presentation. Well, just too many runs, really. Afghanistan batting first. 310 for five. They got at one stage. It looked like around the 280 mark. Then it climbed a little bit. Then it dropped a little bit. And then they played really well at the end. 310 ended up with the buzz was sensational. 121 
of 117 deliveries, around 60, and uh, Hasmatola was really good with 50 off 33 right at the end, and Van Wilkham picked up three for 55, so his work was good. And Ireland, in reply, they won the toss, by the way, I remember that, and elected to bowl first. 275 for eight it was. Tector was brilliant. That was a fine knock, 138 off 147 deliveries. But they couldn't get that run rate down. That was the problem. Tucker played well as well. And Faruqi was outstanding with the ball. Four for 51 for Faruqi. Amazai picked up a couple as well. And Afghanistan won the first one by 35 runs. And they lead the series 1-0. 585 runs were scored, 13 wickets taken, lots of runs. Who wants to be a bowler in this sort of situation? There was uh, been pongoed all over the place, some of these bowlers. But the batsmen uh, certainly had a lot of fun, that's for sure. I've got a couple of guys alongside me, Niall and also Tino. Gentlemen, welcome. Niall, what did you think about the game? I thought it was a good game, Hazy. I think it took a fairly um, a path that we expected. With slightly slow surface, not easy initially. A little bit old school, how you go about your innings. I thought Afghanistan got used to conditions up front. Gurbaz was watchful at the start. We're not used to saying that about Ramanullah Gurbaz. Ibrahim Zadran was more fluent. And in Sharjah, and sometimes in this part of the world, Hazen, you've been here a lot, and Tino, you as well, sometimes you've got to set the game up for the last 20 overs. You don't play like you go to Australia, you go to England, where you can just trash the ball all around the ground from ball one. So I thought Afghanistan assessed conditions better than Ireland, and I thought with the ball in hand, they had a little bit more threat, a little bit more, a bit more spike with the ball. I thought Ireland with the ball, they didn't really threaten. And the middle overs, in one day cricket now, Hazy, you've got to take wickets in the middle, because you just can't contain. With the field changes and the regulation that have changed down is so you need wicket takers so you need somebody who can bowl fast or maybe with an angle or else a wrist spin in Ireland their attack looked a little a little bit samey um, for, for using a fairly bland word a little bit all oh, bowling mid, mid 80s early 80s and finger spins so I thought Afghanistan played really well deserved the win Ireland showed some character they showed some great skill as well Right, Atuna, we're going to go through uh, some of the highlights. Look at Gabaz for starters. I mean, he played brilliantly. 121 of 117 deliveries. He played superbly. He did play superbly. And I'll just touch on something that Nile brought up, that it's not usual to see Ramanullah Gurbaz taking as much time as he did to get going. But um, as Nile said again, I think he really did... Um, assessed the conditions well and he played all around the ground in the end which is something that he does well that shot came after a couple of strokes that were um, almost slogs and he realized i think at that stage that listen the wicket is good enough for me to play the strokes that i can play um, and there was a time where he really did just kick on uh, after the the half centuries mark and, and and i think it was a time that he needed to do that because uh, they were a little bit behind the scoring rate they would have wanted to be but it was an outstanding knock um, from him remember when he went past 50 it was only his second slowest 50. When he went past 100, it was second fastest. So that's a great acceleration from him in the middle part of the innings. Yeah, and great work getting his uh, 600. So that's uh, quite special in itself. Mm. But what about when he was on seven? Oh Niall, he was on seven. I thought you were going to leave. I thought you were gonna, <laughs> weren't going to bring that up because of what a great innings. And then this moment, because he was going nowhere, straight up in the air. It was backtracked. I think Curtis Camphor had, I think it was Andy McBride, just out of the corner of his eye. I think he just had him, you know, when you're backtracking. No, Niall, come I'm, on. I'm, I'm, I'm giving, no, I'm giving him a bit on, of an make, That was a sitter, an yeah, absolute no, no, sitter. No, it was a sitter. It was a, it was a dolly, and it was 99 times out of 100, you catch it. But I'm just thinking you're backtracking, and all of a sudden you see Mike Hazeman no. staring. At no. you out of the corner, not buying it. maybe not buying that's it. all I'm giving not up. Not buying it, not buying You're it. You're not buying, not buying I'm it. I'm selling. No, it was a shocker. <laughs> it was a shocker, let's face it. On seven, didn't cost much. Yeah, well, that was the game, really. Yeah, it was. It was. Okay, so he played nicely, and uh, Hasmatala also played well right at the end. Now, his impetus uh, was really important to get to that 310. 50 not out of 33 balls. Yeah, and I thought he went about his innings very, very well. I think he got a boundary first ball up, but the one thing that stood out for me today is you can see the work that Hasmatala Shahidi's done. One with his power hitting, because he's not one who's done that very well throughout his career so far, and he plays the short ball a lot better now. He used to be bullied by the faster bowlers in terms of the short ball, but you can see today he's got something that he does. He's got the ramp shot out, sometimes gets inside the line of the ball, just tucks it down the leg side. So now that's something that he's added to his game and he's making it very difficult for the faster bowlers to be effective against them. So kudos for him, he's done some good work on his game as well. But the only thing I say to you, the plans, the Ireland bowling plans against him, because you know he wants to put, he has to put the pace on the ball. So the Ireland bowl is short into the surface. You saw him cut plenty. You know, then all of a sudden, Graham Hume got it wrong, pumped down the ground. I just, that's my point about the Ireland bowling attack. It was just a little bit, a little bit light today. No real venom in the attack. Now, I just want to go back to that catch, just briefly, uh, Cam, for putting that catch yes. down, because I want to show you what a proper catch is about. Oh, no. Dockrell. 
being dismissed. That oh, catch yeah. by Karoti. How good yeah. was that catch? Subfielder. Yeah, well, I was Brilliant. on commentary and I just thought exceptional because it was such a great view from the commentary box and he charged in. That's what I liked most about it. It was his commitment because this could go wrong. If he gets this wrong and he bits the ball in the face, you can lose you can lose half a dozen teeth. On as a subfielder, making a mark, and he just charged in. That's what you want. Commitment. You see the ball and it's flat and it's hit hard and they are the hardest to judge. He just tore in and got the hands on it. It was an exceptional catch. Right, I move to Ireland. Uh, Harry Tector, brilliant 100. It's not often you get 138 and you don't win a game. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, he keeps getting hundreds and maybe he shouldn't because then my Ireland might win some of those games, but outstanding knock from him. And let's remember that he walked out at a time where they had lost a couple of early wickets. They lost another while he was there and it wasn't just the way he played, it was the partnership as well with Lorcan Tucker, but he was outstanding. And I mentioned earlier before he came out to bat that he's matured so much over the years, learns, has learned how to start off his innings and he's done an outstanding job again today. And I think with wickets falling at the other end with a run rate that they needed to keep up at a high level all the way through would have made that innings a lot more complicated but I thought he showed great maturity today and I mean you can just see that the island middle order in years down the line is well taken care of a lot of the, the centuries that Ireland have lost those games hazy going back 24 months actually they were in positions to really win those games and should have won a game against New Zealand should have won the game should have got over the line in some of those hundreds and that's not Harry Texas fault because he those hundreds were exceptional he didn't get the support today they were always a little bit you know, behind the eight balls. So today's knock was absolutely sensational and he got some good support, but they lost too many wickets early on. They were really under the pump. You mentioned Tucker. He played nicely. 85 played really nicely. No, he did. And, and he's another one who uh, you've just seen his game go up a level over the last 18 or so months. Very controlled in how he goes about his work. Sometimes you feel when he needs to go at an extended rate, sometimes he just plays the wrong shot at the wrong time, gets himself going and then gets himself out with an unnecessary stroke. But I thought today his shot selection, the way he moved around the crease, manoeuvred the field around with some delicate strokes and then played some really good power strokes as well, uh, was a great hallmark of, of where he's going with his game. So Tector and Tucker were positives. Uh, Van Wilkham was also a positive. He bowled very nicely, very different from the test match. Yeah, he got the ball to turn. That was the, that was the big thing. We were looking today, will he turn the ball on a surface that's going to give him a little bit? And he did. I thought he had good control. It looked like he was a bit more relaxed actually today after getting that test match um, scalp up in Abu Dhabi. And he bowled nicely. That was a good one actually. Pushed it through to get Gurbaz. I thought he had a good flight, good guile, and he got a bit of grip out of the surface. And the big thing for both of these sides, Hazy, now, they've had a look at the surface and they're going to play five more games here. Two more ODIs, obviously, and three T20s. So now they're thinking, how do you adapt conditions? Now, let's look forward to that, uh, the second one day. We've got uh, in, in two days' time on Saturday. What are your thoughts going into that, and how important is it that Afghanistan won the first? Well, very important, I think, to pick themselves up. After a test match, they would have come into thinking they're going to win. I thought they showed outstanding character. I think the decision to bat first today as well, um, if they had got to win the toss, because he said he would have done that, was also a really bold decision to make, seeing what's happened over the last few days. Um, and then I thought the way they went about their innings really showed that they thought about it. Must remember that they've played a lot of their one-day cricket here, and their results have been good here over the last uh, two or three years. So that's something that they've got in their feather. I think the way the wicket played this evening got a little bit more tired. The ball didn't go through as much as we saw the other day. If the pitch is similar then, then I think it's a very good option to bat first on you, even with the due factor in the evening. I think it will be pretty much uh, a similar track tomorrow. Your thoughts for the second one? Oh, sorry, in two days' time? Well, it's just what, what have Ireland got up their sleeve? What can they possibly bring in to make... I'm, I'm talking about the bowling, the batting. They haven't got the batting options really in the dugout. Will Barry McCarthy, with that energy, with that enthusiasm, with that little bit more aggression, be a bit more useful on the surface? Saying that, Graham Hume, I thought, bowled superbly. Well, only bowled ball nine overs today, one for 40, so you can't leave him out. Um, and Mark Adair obviously got a bit of tonk today, but he is the premier bowler. So I, I don't see Ireland really making too many wholesale changes. Heinrich Milan, as a coach, doesn't do that. I like that. He knows what he wants. He gives players the chance to maybe right or wrong. So I can't see Ireland making wholesale changes. And there's no doubt Afghanistan will be pumped up after winning this first one and, uh, and scoring over 300 was a, was a very good performance. Right, boys, Niall, thank you, Tino. Thanks very much for your thoughts. Thanks a lot, we'll Hazy. catch you and in you a couple of days' time. No, no, that game is actually tomorrow. Oh, sorry, in, in one day's time. <laughs> yes, it is, it is. Right, so just uh, to give you some information about uh, the second one day coming up. There it is. It's going to be starting at uh, 10 past three. We're going to be on air. The first ball at half past three. And, of course, it's going to be live again. All these white ball games from the Shanghai Cricket Stadium. And we're looking forward to the second. And then there's going to be one more after that on the 12th.
so that's going to be uh, the one after that. Righto, so there you go. It's going to be, uh, look forward to that action and look forward to Ireland hopefully firing up and making it one all, so it's going to be all important for the third and final one. That's it. Thanks for being with us. Hope you enjoyed the action. We'll catch you next time. Good night. Buzz, comment, goodbye. Chats? Yeah. Goodbuzz? Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> Back.